she'll be back about two and I'll make us a proper dinner for tea time. You being paid any extra for today? Yeah, I suppose so. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I haven't asked him. <sighs> do you want me to go and ask him for you? No, I'll ask him. You go back to bed. You can have another hour's sleep. Oh, yeah. It's about the only thing you can have, isn't it? <sighs> I hope Baldwin appreciates what sacrifices I'm making for this business. I'll make sure he does. Oh. See ya. Yeah, see ya. No, I just wondered if you fancied an hour or two on the allotment. Today? No, no. Thank All right, you. forget I even mentioned it. Well, I only said today. Did you mean today? Of course I meant today. You don't think I'm making a date for early spring, do you? Don't worry, you're obviously not keen. I'll go on my own. I'll be perfectly happy. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, I'll have one ten change. Thank Bye. you. Doesn't Derek know it's middle of winter? Oh, that wouldn't deter him. He's quite hardy. Oh, I suppose it's mostly veggie grow, is it? Yes, we're aiming to become self-sufficient. Oh, well, I wouldn't know what to do with it. You see, we're self-sufficient with a tin of beans. You won't touch veg, will you? No. Oh, you should. It's the healthiest form of food there is. Oh, more healthy than a pork pie? Of course. <laughs> oh, come on, then prove it. I'll arm wrestle you. Fresh veg versus pork pie. <laughs> Best out of three. Don't be daft. Come on, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me again, that one, lovely. <laughs> no, I won't. That's not what you were saying last night. <laughs> morning, Good morning, Rita. I was just wondering, are you likely to be over the road for a drink later? I suppose it's possible. And if I do, will you be there? I should think that's highly likely. Then let's make it a definite. I'll see you over there when I finish here. All right, I'll see you. See you. ta yeah. See, I can still pull. By gum, there's some gorgeous women about. Gary. What? I think you've got the wrong idea about something. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Not, uh, what? We'll have to keep on trying. Oh, well, why were your mum making out? Oh, wrong end at stick as usual. Oh. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Might be mine, might not be doing it right. <laughs> no, it. Well, it might be my fault, let's face it. Be about three quarters of an hour. You can survive till then? Oh, I should think so. Oh, right, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. By the way, uh, got Sue Jeffers calling later, but uh, after lunch. I mean, don't worry about it. It's just some paper that she's doing. For some reason, she wants my advice on it. Ken, are you still expecting me to move in here? I think you might have given me advance warning of that uh, one. No, sorry. It's just Bill mentioned it while he was doing your plumbing. Bill Webster? Yeah, he wasn't being nosy or anything. It's just that we're in the same boat with having to get out of Crimea Flats. And, uh, well, he'd taken it for granted that I'd be coming here. Right. So it just occurred to me, perhaps you were taking it for granted as well. So I'm finishing up one and then Judy's taking over. Well, that's a funny arrangement. How did that come about? Mm, don't know. I suppose she wants to make up her hours. I wish somebody were taking over from me that could take over permanent. <coughs> oh, you two again. We're always together. Mm, trying to work up a double act. Just can't decide who's the straight man. Neither of you. You're both bookies, aren't you? Oh, very good. Yeah, very good. <coughs> yeah, give us two pints. I still can't believe it. <laughs> oh, me. I thought he meant he was borrowing from the bank. I know, by the sound of it, but the bank's that are borrowing off him. You know, when they get a bit short. <laughs> so, will you be glad if it's him that buys it off you? Yeah, I can work with Roy. Mm. Mind you, the mood that Alma's in. What? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if she turns down Roy's offer just to spite me. There you go. Cheers. You know, Samantha, he's never stopped saying how much he enjoyed your little walk the other day. I did. So you'd like to do it again? Only this time, twice as far. I would. Not only twice as far, but carrying a £20 weight on his back. Yes, all right. No need to overdo it. Well, we'll have to see what we can arrange. 280, please. Ta. You working all day? No, I finish at one, actually. Oh, well, how about a spot of lunch somewhere? Only we did say... Well, I don't know why. No, don't think of any excuses. Just say yes. Yes, then. Hey. Yeah, I mean, never mind that you've dragged me out for a drink. You're just going to leave me study here by myself. Of course I am. <laughs> ah, Roy. Um, yeah, sit down. Oh, Jack. All right, I'll bring this over. I called at your house. I spoke to that girl that comes in the cafe. All right. Oh, Becky, yes, yeah, she's babysitting. She said you'd be in here. Yeah, regular couple of barflies, we are. Listen, can I get you a drink? 
Oh, I could have a tomato juice. I, I want to keep a clear head. Mm, wise man, wise man. Another? Yeah, go on. Okay. So, um, have you talked to Alma yet? No, no. I, I, I was going to wait till Monday. Well, yeah. But, but, but then I thought, oh, well, these other people, they might not be waiting till Monday. No. So I thought, well, get in there, strike while the iron's hot. Which is when I realised I, I don't know her address. You mustn't think I'm pleased at Baldwin selling the flats. I mean, I'm not saying rubbing my hands, saying, good old mate, best thing you ever did. So, what are you thinking? Well, I just think it's a pity that things couldn't just take their natural course. You know, I mean, you having to move, well, it's rather forced our hand, isn't it? Yeah, but I could move anywhere. It doesn't have to be in here. True. I could find another flat. There are plenty of them. Still by yourself? Yeah. I think I know why you're saying this. This house, isn't it? In spite of having mentioned it before, I mean, I understand it'd be a problem. You lived here with Samir, it's got memories. Well, yes, And I has. also lived here with Denise. In fact, I'm surprised we can move, there's so many ghosts. So, OK, we'll sell up, move somewhere else. New start for both of us. It's not just the house. No. I don't want to move in with you. I see. I want to stop on my own. I don't want to move in with anyone. So all that's been happening between us, us getting on, you staying over, that's all for nothing? No, it's been lovely. And, and I want it to go on. But there doesn't have to be a next step. It doesn't have to lead to me moving in here. Well, I don't have to, no. But you'd like it to. Not no more. Oh, look, I, I think I'd better go. This isn't doing either of us. No, well, look, just, I mean, just give me a reason. One honest reason why we can't try again. A reason? Yes. Well, because... Because I don't want to run that risk that it might, you know, all go wrong again. You don't want to risk it? No. Well, on that basis, you never get anything done. You never even get out of bed in the morning. All right. I don't want to move back in with you. I don't know why I have to give you reasons. I just don't want to. Fine. Oh. No, I asked you to be honest. You've been honest. No, I haven't. That makes it sound as if I hate being with you, and I don't. I... Look, let's just leave it. I'll go away. Oh, no, 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 you mustn't do that. No, no, the, the food will be ready. Look, I'll, I'll serve lunch and, and we'll talk about something else. Do you think we can? Of course we can. We have done till now. Right, I'll leave you to get on with your Sunday. Uh, it's a long way, you know, so weather for your keys for yes, me. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'll give you a lift. No, 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 I'd rather walk. Uh, thank you. Bye. Right. Yeah, see ya. Bye-bye, Roy. Hey. I bet Baldwin snatches his hand off. Well, well but... I know what you said, but it's his decision, not Alma's. All he's bothered about is who can get that money from fastest. Here I am. Oh, Rita, hello. Uh, what would you like? Uh, vodka and tonic. Please. Oh, vodka and tonic, and another one of them in there for me. Uh, uh, Samantha. Samantha. <laughs> Excuse me. I was here first. It's okay. I'm not ordering. What are you doing, then? I just want a quick word. You know that leg of lamb I put in the oven? Yeah, you mentioned it. Well, I didn't realise. I, I mean, it's massive. It's far too much for just me. Now, I know that we agreed we should cook our own food and eat separately, but... No, we didn't agree. That was the condition of you staying. There's so many conditions, I can't remember them all. Uh, look, is this going to take all day? Look, do you want to share it, the lamb? What I'm saying is, shall I cook lunch for both of us? Quick answer, yes or no? Well, it's not that simple. I didn't think it would be. You see, I've already been invited out for lunch. Oh, I've had enough of this. Come on, Betty. Yes, love. Hello. Will there be enough for sure? OK, no. Yeah, yeah, of course, I suppose so. Right, hang on, then. Uh, instead of you taking me out, how do you fancy coming back to my place for lunch? Yeah, that'd be great. Lamb all right with you? Lamb. Very nice, eh? How about that? Back to her place for lunch. Mm, just you and her. And Curly. Curly? What are you on about? Well, he has moved back in. I've just seen him talking to her. Sam? Uh, will Curly be there? Yeah, he's cooking. Still, it'll be a nice lunch. It's all you wanted, wasn't it? Yeah. Three oh. pound ten pence. Oh, thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. Look, one for yourself. Oh, thanks ever so. Well, cheers, Anne. Cheers, Rita. No, I must admit, it hangs heavy, does Sunday, when you're stuck in on your own, you know? Well, it's Sunday papers, isn't it? I mean, they give the impression that there's wild orgies going on everywhere if only you knew right to dress. I wouldn't want an orgy. Oh, no. A day of rest, isn't it? Hey, I'll tell you what, let's have a look at this menu, see if there's out with fancy. Right. <sighs> you're disappointed, aren't you? Yes, I am. It's my fault. I, no, no, I no, no, I'm not disappointed. No, I'm not. What I am is furious. And you want to know why? 
Oh, I can see you're going to tell me. Because all I've been, I can see it now, all I've been is a sort of convenient staging post, as far as you're concerned, a sort of therapy. Therapy for me? Yes, for you. I mean, now that you've got over all this business with Samir and you're ready to move on into a sort of better social... You, I've got over what? You mean got over him being killed? Yes. You think I've got over that, do Well, you? compared to what you were, yes, you're back at work, you're ready for a social life, and as the first step into that big, wide world, you choose me. You really think I've got over my husband Because being going out with me isn't much of a and... challenge, is it? I'm not listening to this. It's all familiar territory, nice and easy. Much easier than starting out with somebody new. Much easier than having to go to bed with somebody new. This is the new. worst thing you've ever said to me. Yeah, but it's true, isn't it? If only you'd admit it. You never wanted me. You're just scared of going with anybody else. <sighs> I'm sorry if I'm disturbing you. No, 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 you're not. Um, uh, sit down. <laughs> nice flats these, aren't they? Uh, I can see why Mr Baldwin didn't want to live with us in Crimea Street. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we've been here for a while. Uh, can I get you tea, coffee? No, no, no. Is, uh, is Mr Baldwin not about? Uh, no, he's gone, uh, he's gone out, but he shouldn't be long. Is it about the cafe? It, it is, yes. Do you wish that you could still buy it? Oh, 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 that's right. Which, which is why I think it's best if I talk to you and Mr Baldwin together. You know, Roy, the cafe's going to cost you an awful lot of money. Well, the way I look at it, if it didn't cost a lot of money, there must be something wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't deny that, but... Um, is it because you want to keep your job there and that you'd like us to put a, a word in with the new owners? Because I can let Mr Baldwin know that and, and you don't need to see him. You did say that if I could raise the money, you'd as soon sell to me as anybody. Did I? Um, yes, but, but yeah. Mm. I, I, well, I think it's best if I see Mr Baldwin. Uh, not because you're a woman. It's just I don't want to agree something with you and then find you he's already been talking to other interested parties. <sighs> well, all right, Roy, but he was up very early this morning, so you'll have to forgive him if he's a bit grumpy. What would you like? Oh, just a mineral water, please, love. Mr Sugden. Mrs Bishop, I thought you were at church. Well, yes, I was. Then I was on the way home and bumped into Deirdre. And a mineral water and a small sherry, Judy, please. Right. You mustn't think I'm neglecting my duties. I'm sure you're not. Uh, the, you, the dinner's in the oven. As a matter of fact, I'll be serving it up in another five minutes' time. <coughs> well, I hope you won't, because Deirdre and I want some time to ourselves oh, first. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. I'm quite sure that dinner can be delayed, can't it, Mr Sugden? Well, I'll do the best I can. But don't blame me if it's burnt to a crisp. Yeah. Yes. Everything all right, was it? Oh, very, very nice. Oh, good. In fact, we might be back next week. Well, I hope I won't be doing. My husband will have packed his bags and gone. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, what we could do, if you fancied, is have a drive out somewhere further afield. Next Sunday? Yeah, trough a bowl and say. Unless, of course, you prefer to be on your own. I mean, I sometimes do have that effect on people. No, it sounds very nice. Only if it's going to be a regular do, then we go Dutch. None of that, this man pays for everything. You know, I am relieved to hear you say that, Rita. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much, Judy. Look, I'm not saying just you. Perhaps we should both go for tests. No, it's too soon. Some folk try for years. Yes, some folk try for years and it never happens. Look, it's like... It's like one of those fruit machines in the arcade. The programme so you'll get three oranges every 2,000 plays. Three oranges? Yeah, it's the highest jackpot, only you don't know when in those 2,000 goals it'll come up. Could be the first goal, could be the last. Yeah, we don't want three oranges. We want a baby. You're going to think I'm really pathetic. I think there's something that's really upset you. I could see that straight away. I've just had a major row with Ken. The sort of row that leaves you thinking, well, that's it. We can never even speak to each other again. Oh, dear. And there was I thinking, well, you can probably guess what I was thinking. That I was going to move back in there. Yeah. So was Ken. Oh, Emily, I love the man. He's part of my life. But I don't want to go back living with him again. Pretty good, this girlie. Thanks very much. Yeah, better than I could do. I'm a terrible cook, mate. Yeah, but you've worked in pubs all your life, haven't you? 
You've never had to do it. And, of course, you've never been married. <clears throat> no. Always worked in pubs, have you? More or less, yeah. And why not, if that's what you want to do? And is it? Is that all you've ever wanted to do? Yeah. Hmm. Well, don't let us put you off marriage, though. Why should we do that? Well, look at us both. Both on our own. You're divorced. I'm likely to end up that way. But you keep telling yourself it doesn't have to end like that. Not everybody gets divorced. Are you telling yourself that? Yeah. Good. Hey! <laughs> hey, have you been all right, have you? <laughs> of course we have. Right, you sit yourself down. I'm making a brew. Hey, I'm coming with you. I've been away from you for long enough. Uh, yeah. So, how was it? <sighs> Non-stop. Huh? We did eight different markets. Half of them, I didn't even know where we were. Mike, you know, he's amazing. People he's never even met before. Within five minutes, he's got him telling him his life story. And he just sells them loads of gear. I mean, when we set off this morning... Was it on this morning? Yep. It was a week ago. Anyway, that van was chock-a-block with stuff. And I says to him, we're never gonna shift all this stuff. Uh, but you have. We haven't even got a pair of socks left. Mm. You know what I think, don't you? What? All this stuff about you not wanting to leave us this morning. I didn't. Yeah. You've had the time of your life. Look here, you're full of it. I hope you don't mind me coming to your home like this. You like Feel free. Uh, coffee? A uh, drink? A uh, drink, yeah. Uh, come on, then. What's all this about? Well, I I I'd like to make an offer for the cafe. Oh, would you? Any messages? Uh, no. Well, go on, then. What you offering? Well, I, I believe 35000 is the asking price. I I'm, I'm ready to offer that. Uh, which I think should be taken seriously. Oh, yeah, of course I will. Well, then, uh, do you want to see the books, or have you got an accountant that would like to see them? I don't think Roy has I, I'm willing to accept the business is worth what you say it is. Do you want to buy a factory as well? Mike. Uh, OK, well, uh, I hear what you're saying. Thanks for the offer. Let you know. Well, but, uh, uh, I wonder if you might uh, let me know today. Roy, Roy, Roy! Have you ever bought or sold a business in your lifetime, ever? No. Well, I have, and let me tell you something. It doesn't happen in ten minutes on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, yes. Right. I, I'm, I'm sorry for taking up so much of your time. No, 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 that's all right, Roy. But, but you will let me know. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, Yes, yes, of course you will. You got any more surprises for me? No, no, only Roy. I told you he's upset. Thinks he's going to lose his job. And so he should. You should sack him now. He's stark staring bonkers. Oh, well, thank you. I've got a bit of a head start, I'm afraid. Oh. I just had a rather acrimonious session with my ex-wife. Oh, dear, I'm not here at a bad time, am I? No, no, you're here at an extremely good time. Couldn't oh. be better. We've just accepted the fact that, uh, well, we don't have any future together. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's... Uh, I'm liberated. I'm a free man again. Well, uh, that can be a mixed blessing. Yeah. Yeah, but at least it means I won't go, uh, go around wasting my time on somebody who... Um, well, who basically has been taking me for a ride. You, you won't be in the mood to talk about this paper now. You know, I suspect, I suspect that it's always a mistake to go back to an old relationship. Always. I'll be advised by you. You should always be looking to the new one. Have you, uh, have you heard from your husband recently? Oh, no, 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 no. That is definitely in the past. Mm. Yeah, I just, I was thinking about Southport, you know, that fiasco. I'm going to go around telling everybody that nothing had happened. Did you, um... Did any part of you ever wish that something had? Yes. Curly, I'm just going to close this door, all right? Fine. So, um... Curly doesn't know about it. He doesn't know about anything. Right. Thank you for not telling him. It was true, though, was it, what you told me about university? Yeah. Then leaving and being married for two days? Yeah, it was all true. Wish I never told you now. Two days, though, I mean. <laughs> what went wrong, eh? Well, I mean, you didn't have to marry him. 
Must be easier ways of getting out of university. Yeah, well, I suppose I thought I was in love with him. And then we just didn't get on. Didn't get on physically. Ah. Now, hold on a minute. What? Well, now you're thinking it's his fault. He was some kind of brute who forced himself on me. Well, no. No, he wasn't, actually. He was very kind, very patient. He even suggested we needn't worry about that side of it, considering I hated it so much. You just weren't compatible? I just didn't want to know. And what's more, I knew I never would. Never will. Right. So, now you know. And if you want to give up on me, then I'll understand. I've given up on myself quite some time ago. 170, please. Thank you. Ah, you're back from your allotment, then. Hello, Rita. Uh, Alec. Hi. Yes, well, you don't want to spend all day there, do you? Not in this weather. And, and besides, a couple of hours of strenuous digging can achieve quite a lot. A rupture, if you're not careful. <laughs> well, I'm impressed. You deserve a drink. See you. Bye. Bye. Mavis, you know I didn't go to the allotment. I thought it'd be too cold. Well, Rita doesn't have to know everything. I don't want her sneering at you the way she does. Eight thirds change, love. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yes, Bill. Oh, have a pint, please, love, and whatever this lad's having. Oh, cheers, Bill. I'll have a pint. What are you up to? Uh, I'm just going to look at some new lodgings. Whereabouts? Uh, flat over at Corner Shop. I didn't know there were one. You go and get your dinner, Emily, before Percy chucks it in the bin. Oh, he won't do that. Oh, I can't leave it like this. I'm going to have to go back. He's my best friend. He probably feels as badly as you about it. I'm going to go and, and say to him that I want to carry on as we have been. Surely he'll be able to accept that. I'm sure he will. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. Time to perfection. What do you want to drink? Oh, uh, oh red wine. A glass please. of red? Yeah. Listen. You mustn't expect too much, you know, because the flat hasn't been lived in for years and, well, everything will be in a right old state. Well, that's all right. As long as it's reflected in the rent. Oh, am I going to have to negotiate that with you? Ken. Ken. Sorry. Didn't mean to disturb you. I should go. Look, um... Oh, school tomorrow and, uh, and all that and well, things I have to do tonight in preparation. Look, so I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting... She had a key. Now, that was Deirdre, I take it, Ken, who came in and went straight out again. Yeah. We'll see each other tomorrow, no doubt. Oh, yes, we will. Thank you. <laughs> there are several responses to that that spring to mind, Ken. None of them appropriate or remotely ladylike. I'll see you in school. You've got a good relationship with Mr. Baldwin. What? Uh, uh, Mr. Baldwin. I, I, I never quite get the impression he's taking me seriously. This afternoon, for instance, I went round to Not his home. Not now, Roy. Oh, right, well, uh, I, I'll get your advice later then. So that's it then, we've decided. We're selling tobacco, eh? Yeah, 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 I suppose we are. Do you want to phone him? Me? Mm. No. 
now? No. No, you're right. Make him sweat till the morning, eh? Oh, talking of sweating. Duty calls. Oh, you're not going out again, are you? Yep. I want to look in at the factory. But you've got people working there tonight. Yeah, I just want to show my face, make sure everyone's happy. But don't worry, I won't be long. Well, shall I come with you? No, you don't want all that hassle, do you? You're selling a cafe in the morning. Just make sure that when I get back here, you haven't got Roy Cropper or some other deranged bloke making you an offer. It's sad, that. Him thinking he could come to Gail's rescue. Yeah. Here, listen. Perhaps you ought to tell Buckley that. Say we've got somebody else interested. May uh, up the price a bit? Oh, no, hang on. On second thoughts, uh, he's met Cropper, isn't he? Forget it. See you later. There you go. Thanks, Sam. Oh, well, listen, uh, you reckon this is a good job for a girl to meet, um, well, to meet fellas, you know? Dunno. Usually depends on the size of his tip. Obviously not. I'll stay clear. If I were you, Jim. I don't want to know. Yes, unfortunately, that makes her all the more interesting, buddy. Does it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Martin, yes. Uh, yeah, same again for me and Gail, and uh, a bit of lemon for right. Okay, look. So, I hope he's not wasting his money on me. I'm not sure I've clinched the deal as yet. Why? What did Mike and Alma say? Well, Mr. Baldwin pointed out that he knows more about the buying and selling of businesses than I do, and, and granted, he does. But I, I've assured him the money is there. He said he'll consider my offer along with the others. Buckley's pizza heaven chain. Oh, I presume so. But, I mean, what did Alma say? She knows that if they sell to them, I'm out on my ear. Oh, I, I could run to a slightly better offer than theirs. Right, here we go. Well? The Baldwins are considering my offer. Oh, great. They didn't take him seriously. Huh? I'm sorry, Roy, but they didn't. They don't think he's got that sort of money. No, 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 no. It, it's because it was a Sunday. I, I wouldn't have thought of him as having religious leanings, but, but he did say he wasn't prepared to do business on a Sunday, which I can respect. Oh, this is just plain vindictive. I can't drink that. I'm going to go. Oh, come on, you're not storming round No, there. I'm going round to Don's to pick up the kids that have been pushed from pillar to post while this has gone on. Thanks for trying, Roy. On your own? Unless I've been followed. <laughs> Sherry, please. Uh, oh. I might have been given a free hand to do what I like in the flat, then. What did you have in mind? Well, you know all them uh, fixtures and shelves that are stacked up in the corner? Where? In the bedroom. Oh, I don't remember. Why don't we pop up and you can show me? <laughs> I showed you this afternoon. Well, I reckon I could put them to really good use. Uh, make some decent storage space, you know. Oh. Don't ever accuse me of not being practical. <laughs> I never would. Shove a quick one on the Rovers, then. Uh, a bit public, don't you think? For a drink, I mean. I know you do. <laughs> Thanks, Zoe. No, no. Thanks, night. Hello. Hey, Wally. Morning. Hi. You're not alone, are you? Hello. Don't you two want to be alone? Not at all. <laughs> Mrs Bishop, can I ask you something? How long has it been since there's been a Mr Bishop? You can't ask. A long, long time now. And you miss not being married? Very much. Why? Oh, that's an odd question. If you've loved somebody and spent a large part of your life with them, there's so much you miss. A level of intimacy you just don't share with anyone else. It's that feeling of being a better person for the simple fact that they've chosen to be with you. Yeah, but what about if you make a mistake or you just find that you're not that comfortable? You know, all the time. Oh. Or if something happens and you, you just can't stay together. You get by. You have your interests and your friends. How are you and Norman getting along? I'm not trying to match, mate. He's been through a rough time of late. And he used to lodge with me, did he tell you? I found him very good company. Yeah, he is. I just don't think I've been that nice to him so far. Do try. I will. Another drink? Yes, that would be very nice. Yeah. Mrs Bishop, I didn't expect to see you in here again. Then why Luke? Oh, you were here at lunchtime. 
So I was. Thank you, Samantha. Another drink would be very nice. Was there something pressing, Mr. Sugden? No, I just wondered where you got to, that's all. Now you know. I'll see you at home, then. You will. Norman was a find. I was never that lucky again. Right, usual, please, Benny. OK, love. Ah. We've got a visitor this afternoon. Yeah, too true. Mm. I wonder how he got our address. I think Gail gave it him. Oh, thanks a bunch. Tell her very funny. Mm, she didn't think so. Especially when she heard how you treated him and his offer to buy the calf. Oh, the man's a nutcase. Keep yeah. the change. Well, let me tell you something now, shall you? <clears throat> He's more canny than us lot put together because oh. we're all struggling to make ends meet. Well, he sat on 35 grand cash in the bank. No. Yep. Well, how? Oh, you know, inheritance, savings. Just had nowhere to spend it before now. Is that right? Hmm. You guess not stopping overnight, then? No, no, of course not. Look, it shouldn't have happened. I was upset about you. We'd had some wine. Spare me the details. Then again, that's probably what you've been doing all along. What? No, you're wrong. I promise you, we've never... Well, you have now. Unless you were upstairs this afternoon showing you your collection of cardigans. It was a mistake. Don't insult the woman. You used her. You have been all along. All she had to do was knock on your door at the right moment. I predicted this. God, how long after I'd gone did it take? Well, you said we had no future. So five minutes later, you find one with someone else. What I said was, go, what does it matter what I said or think or feel? No, 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 shut the door, please. Oh, don't fret, Ken. I'm sure hers will be open. <sighs> This kind of setback can trigger a deep depression in someone like Roy. He's not the only one. <sighs> Do you think he is a bit odd? Well, I don't know enough about it yet. But, um, but he might have a minor personality disorder. I couldn't be sure. It's just the things he comes out with sometimes. I think uh, he's the special one. And we're all just a bit average. Yeah, well, maybe we shouldn't pin all our hopes on him, eh? Try and think again. What if I someone else with 30 odd thousand who thinks of this place as a dream investment? Mm. Ah! Sorry, Gail. Bus broke down. You don't get the bus. Oh, I stopped to help the driver. Huh? Uh, Roy, uh, Martin says uh, he left you talking to Mike in the Rovers yeah. last night. Yes, yes, he did. Uh, well? Oh, it's, it's all going ahead. Uh, he, like I said, he, he was uh, considering my offer, along with a couple of others, and he's decided to sell to me. What? On a Sunday? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! Oh, oh. Congratulations! Oh, thank you very much. Uh, well, I think he calls for a cup of tea. Oh, oh, oh not for me, thank you. I'll best get on. Uh, make up the time lost. All right. <sighs> We're OK. Mm, seems so. Hey, come in. Well, uh, I'll best be off then. <laughs> See you in a bit. See ya. It's not right. Look, if he's good enough for your friend Gail, who are we to refuse his money? Well, let's just think it through again. There's nothing to think about as far as I'm concerned. The man assures me he's got the money. Oh, Gail must have thought she'd won the lottery when her kitchen hand flashed his bank statements. Mm -hmm. Well, what's your problem? Gail gets to stay. I thought that's why you were humming and hurrying about Buckley. Oh, it was, yeah. Well, she's sorted and so are we. And we've got no right to advise her on her partners. That'd be interfering. Look, just phone the estate agent, tell them we've got a buyer. All right? See ya. Morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Jeffers. Trust we all had an interesting weekend? Oh, 
That one looks lonely. Must be meant for me. Who is it? It's Deirdre. Are you coming into work today or not? Ah, I was just on my way. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, Deirdre, did you go and see Ken again yesterday? Oh, yes, I saw him. Not going so well. It's very complicated, Emily. Neither of us is very sure what we want, or who. You'll sort it out. What's all the panic? It's gone ten o'clock. Where have you been all morning? Look, I'll uh, leave you to it. Well, I've been doing paperwork and making phone calls from here. And what about passing trade? Remember customers? Who's supposed to deal with them when I'm not there? Dorothy? I shouldn't have to come round here chasing after you. All right, calm down, Deirdre. I need some time off, Alec. I've got some problems, and I? I just want to get away for a bit. OK, OK. Starting today. That's a bit short notice. Well, I think I've covered for you often enough uh, in the past. All right, fair enough. We'll, we'll manage. Is there anything I can do to... No, no, just the time off. Oh, right, well, take a couple of days. Well, I need at least the rest of the week. Well, just let me know when you're ready to come back. Thanks, Alec. Ah, Deirdre! Just the girl. Listen, uh, me and Andrew are thinking of going across the water to Belfast, you know, catch up with the family and all that. Talk to the boss. Right. Cheerio. Sandy. Hi, your horses there. Uh, listen, can I have a wee word with you about Belfast? There we are, love, thank you. By the way, Mavis, mm. how did Derek get on at the allotment yesterday? What do you mean, how did he get on? Mavis, I didn't mean anything. Why have you something to share with us? Now, come on, we're all girls together here. <laughs> no, it, it, it got on fine. It, it just thinks it needs more attention than we've been giving it. Does he? Well, don't let the cold weather put you off. I'm sure that old shed of yours is sturdy enough to see you through the winter months. Oh, Bill, what can we get you? A glimpse of my daughter-in-law for a start. How are you, stranger? Yeah, I'm OK, fine. <laughs> just buying some sweets for the kids. It's sort of an apology for not being around much at the weekend. He's working at all hours. Wasn't Mike having some trouble with the factory? Yes, I heard he was going under. Oh, it said just a reduced contract, that's all, but he's pulling out all the stops. You know what he's like. Yeah. Hey, uh, have you heard about your new neighbour? Pretty dishy by all accounts. New neighbour? Who? A man? Yeah. Me. <laughs> oh. I'm taking the flat above the corner shop. <laughs> above Maureen, you mean? Oh, yeah. I hadn't realised that. And uh, me thinking that the only advantage was being next door to my grandchildren. <laughs> Funny. Didn't give us a second glance, those pupils. When nothing was happening, we were the talk of the school. And now something has. What are you doing at lunch? I, um, I need to pop out, actually. Tonight? I don't know. Uh, look, Sue, so, I mean... No, 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 no. It's all right. No, it's not. I know it's not. I just don't know what to do about it yet, that's all. Do you want to wait until you've heard what Deirdre has to say? You haven't been very honest about this, Ken. I've tried to be. Well, you haven't succeeded. Look, I understand if you want to forget all about yesterday. I'm sure you would. No, I said you hadn't been honest. I didn't say that I was stepping out of the picture. Well, look, don't be the coward my husband was, Ken. I want to know, one way or the other. Don't you just love it when a girl knows exactly what you want? Ah, but do you, though? You see, unbeknownst to you, what I'd really like would be a whiskey. Just a little one, you know. Oh, sorry, Jim. No, 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 you're all right. The trouble with me is that uh, I'm no good at having one, so orange juice will do for the moment. Typical. And you haven't said that. You could be my once-a-week girl. Pardon? Well, say I come in here on a regular basis, and then, you know, same day, same time, and I ask you for a whiskey, and you give me one, and then I ask for another, and you say no. I don't think I want the responsibility. Right, I'll uh, stick to my orange juice then, shall I? And what brings you in here? The beer? The barmaid. Betty. One of them here said something to me about uh, Friday night. It was me. So it was. Self-defence classes, right? Right. Thought you were already an expert at that. Now, if I'm in for a load of cheap cracks... You're not. You're not, sorry, but... You've got to admit, you do make it hard for a bloke to get to know you. Yeah, well, most blokes only have one way of getting to know someone. Well, maybe that's where I've been going wrong. Maybe I need someone to re-educate me. Got any vacancies? Might have. Pine? Yeah, if it wouldn't be taking advantage of your role as barmaid. 
It's going to take a little bit of work, though, to make it comfy like, you know. But it could become the sort of place that you could forget that it was once a stocker room, and it's now a... Now what? Well, a convenient little hideaway, where a couple could indulge himself in a little creative spontaneity. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> Another? Mm. What about you? Hi. So, what about the man that we're pestering you, eh? What's happened? They seem to have lost interest. How about you? Have you met anybody? Me? <laughs> no. No, couldn't think I was going to ask you. Couldn't, couldn't introduce me to some of your friends, could you? I mean, it's been 25 years since I asked a wee girl out. I mean, honest to God, what is it they respond to these days, eh? I couldn't tell you. No, I suppose not. See, your boyfriend's moved on. Yeah. I think we'd be better off finding two other people to chat to, don't you? Aye. Right. Hey, Alec. Oh, I just talked to a man about some tickets. What about you, Sam? I've got them right here, Jim. Oh, now that's service for you, isn't it? Right, listen, are you passing or are you take a wee sniffer? Well, seeing as I'm here, I may, may as well. Now you're talking. Sammy, that whiskey I was talking about, your man here will have him. Right. What now? I wanted to try and talk again, not leave things the way we did last night. Are you moving out? No, I'm just going away for a few days. Oh, where? Does it matter? Is that any of your business? I'm going to London. I'll probably spend some time with Tracy. Have you spoken to her? I mean, will you be telling her anything about this? I doubt she needs to hear it. What I did was unforgivable. No, it wasn't, Ken. It was understandable. And then, let's face it, not new. But like I said, I saw it coming a mile off. It was inevitable. I thought we were inevitable. Did you? She and I should never have. No, we should never have. You and me. We drifted back together again because it felt safe. You were right yesterday. Everything you said was right. Maybe before you and Denise and Daniel, maybe before Sam here, but not now. Well, if you're not coming to live with me, where are you going to live? I don't know. Shouldn't that be a priority, finding somewhere? Maybe I'm intending to do just that. In London? Oh, don't go rushing into anything. Can I take you to the station? I've ordered a taxi. Will you call me when you get back? Oh, let me go away first, Ken. Hello there. Oh, hello, uh, Gail, what's about? Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, can I have a quick chat with Roy? Uh, yeah, feel free. You've not changed your mind about selling? No, no. Because I'll be just as happy with that, you and Gail running things again, me doing me hours. However, if you're considering a three-way partnership, I'd like that very much as well. We've, uh, no. I've changed my mind about selling to you, Roy. I, I've made an appointment with my bank. Mr Baldwin, solicitor, phoned me this morning for the name of mine. Well, he shouldn't have done that. I mean, this is my cafe to sell. I mean, he, he's jumped the gun. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, Roy. Did the others make a better offer? Yeah. How much? Look, just forget about it, Roy. What about Gail? I, I can't please everybody. See. But turn me down again. Uh, can I can I have a word with you, please, Gail? Can I have my sandwich, please? Uh, Roy, would you see to Mr. Sugden, please? I took you at your husband's word, Mrs. Baldwin. What's wrong? Yeah. What's wrong? I mean, how did you let him get as far as coming to see us? I mean, I know you're desperate about your share, but I mean, it just isn't fair. He has got the money, Elmer. It's got, it's got nothing to do with money. Well, it has, but I mean, what sort of future has that man got? Who's he got? Well, at least when he got a bit of money tucked away in the bank, he got security for himself. Well, a business gives him that. Not to mention pride. Look, I'm sure you've justified this to yourself. I think it stinks. I mean, we used to giggle about him behind his back, for heaven's sake. 
Are you accusing me of using him? Well, yes, I am. Well, you can take care of yourself, girl, but he can't. I mean, I'm not Mike, you know. I like Roy. And so do I. Do you think I haven't given a thought to him in all of this? Talk to him? Well, if you had, you wouldn't have let him on. So you've decided for him, have you? No discussion. Auntie Alma saves him from himself. No, I'm just trying to stop him being exploited by predators. Like me. Well, thank you for your faith. In both of us. You should read that. Oh, should I? Hmm. It's about the top businesses in Britain and how they got there. It's very interesting. Do you know, I'm surprised you need to read that at all, Mike. Now, you can cut out the sarcasm. We can both learn from this. It tells you what they do. And, you know, funny enough, turning down people's money because you feel sorry for them isn't one of them. Sorry, what was, what was that about sarcasm? Hmm? Hmm? I mean, I've got to live with this, but it's all over, you know. And to live anywhere, you need money. And we're in Stuttgart, I know. Well, you wouldn't think so. I'm out on a Sunday morning in the cold, working me butt off for a few lousy quid. The chance of 35 grand comes along and you turn it down. Look, if Gale and Cropper foul up, it's their problem. Yes, but that's where we're different, you see. I mean, you know as well as I do, he's only half there. He needs protecting from himself. No, I don't think he's a fruitcake he pretends to be. But he can't be, can he? Not with all that money stashed away. Well, that's not what you said yesterday. You said then that Gale had talked him into it. Now, that, 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 where does it mention that in this article? That you can change your tune every day to suit yourself. Hmm? Well, as a matter of fact, it does. It's called flexibility. Oh. Now, he may be the brain of Britain or the missing link, but you can't mix business with sentiment. Well, I disagree. You can't afford to disagree. We have got to be like that, or we sink. Well, I did warn you. About what? These trips we're bold with. Said they'd be every weekend. No, they won't. I've heard of golf widows, so what does that make me? A sweatshirt widower? <laughs> Hey, there must be other people doing it with you. Of course there is. How do you think this stuff gets on to market? Oh, could set up a club. For all I'm stuck at home while their husbands and wives are out selling dodgy gear. It is not dodgy. All right, it's only joking. And it's not every weekend. It's only till he finds his feet. It's the only day we get as a family, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I know. Look, I've been thinking about that, Sal. What time do you think you'll knock off on Sunday? Mm, no, probably around dinner time. It's anything like last week. Well, yeah. why don't me and the girls come out and meet you? You give us a bell about an hour before you finish. Tell us where you are. No, it's all right. Michael will bring me back. Well, we could go on somewhere. Have a bit of dinner in a country pub. Go for a walk, if it's nice. No, I don't think it'd work. Well, why not, Sal? If we come out and meet you, it'd give us an extra hour or so. I mean, by the time you get home, have something to eat, it'll be going dark. No, I'll be getting tired by then. And I won't, Sal. I would have been up since seven o'clock with ease, but what do you expect us to do? Give up on life because we're tired? No, it's just that if it's anything like last week, I, well, I'm not going to know what time I'm going to finish, am I? I don't want you lot hanging round in cold. Look, bald, we must have some idea. Yeah, well, I don't like to ask him. It looks like I'm not keen. <laughs> Forget it then, Sal. If he's more important to you than we are, blame Anyone would think he was having an affair. Don't be ridiculous. Well, why else do you not want us to come out and meet you? Look, I'd rather come home. This is a very difficult time for me right now. The least you could do is be supportive. I thought it was being. If this is him. Hello? Oh, yeah. Uh, just a minute. It's for you. The estate agent. Hello? Oh, yeah, well, thanks for letting me know. I will, yes. Well, what did he want? It's half past eight. He just thought out to know that Buckley was seeing another place this morning. Oh, well, that's great. That's all we need, isn't it? We have two people interested. One you turn away, the other one goes somewhere else. All right. I'm sorry. I've just got to do what I think's best. Well, if this is your best, I'm going out to look for the lifeboats, because we're going to need them. Sorry, boy, I'm sorry. Oh, that, that, that's all right. Yeah. So look where I'm going. No, I'm in a mad rush. Yeah, that's Tiny knock, least of my problems. 
Hey, up. Just the chap, Derek. Hello, Billy. Got some bad news for you, I'm afraid. Why? What happened? Well, I were up the allotment yesterday. You've not been up lately, I take it. No. We keep meaning to. Afraid you've had a break in. What? Ah, uh, they kicked out the door your shed got inside. Oh, no. Did they take much? Well, I don't know, but it's a bit of a mess. They've been scratching around whoever it were. I didn't touch anything. I pushed the door to best I could. Well, thanks for letting me know. It pays to keep your eye on that place in the winter. That's when them vandals strike, you know. When they think there's no one there. I'll save it. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I was getting carried away ogling this centrefold. <laughs> what a beaut. Well, if you like that sort of thing. The things I couldn't do with that. Hey, we'll have less of that sort of talk. This is a family shop. I wish you had a family I could bring in. Well, one day I'm sure you will. Mm. One pound eight, Dylan. Yeah, never mind. Keep trying. Keep the throttle open there, Maeve. <sighs> and in the meantime, I'll thumb through this when Judy's not looking. I like a good drool. <laughs> See you, love. Bye. Right. Right. <laughs> honestly, that man would make a bus timetable sound like filth. Well, they keep trying to get us to use public transport more, so happen they should give him a job. It is sad, though. I mean, if they're trying for a baby and can't have one. Oh, true. Yeah. That's why I'm so interested in those motorbikes. You see, it's um, a surrogate. What? A surrogate, because, well, childless couples, I mean, they find all sorts of things like, um, well, like hobbies and pets and, and cars, and they just get obsessed with them. It's pathetic, really. <laughs> Neighbours. Oh, damn it, what is it? It's the allotment. We've had a break in. Oh, how do you know? Well, Billy Williams just told me. Apparently, they got into the shed. Oh, no. What did they take? Well, he didn't know, but there's all sorts of things up there. There's tools, equipment, and. Oh, no. What? There's my wall chart. I spent weeks making that. Oh, it, it had different colours for all the months and, and all the tasks were laid out in, in neat columns. Uh, if they've taken that... Uh, don't, don't, just check it before you start worrying. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll go up today and investigate. Uh, yeah, well, you be careful, cos they could still be lurking around. I'll be careful, I promise. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Down! No, go on. No, run along. A model just lately, aren't we? Sorry, I uh, I overslept. Um, I I did ring to say the delay. I'm not sure the details of your complicated private life concern me anymore, do they, Ken? Look, I'm, I'm very sorry about yesterday. Jeff Smith's covering your class. I said you shouldn't be long. It's not the end of the world. I suppose not. You'll get over it. Time's a great healer. <laughs> Mother used to say that after father left. You could buy somewhere else. You've got the money. Well, it's like I said last week about moving. It, it, it's the place that you're attached to. It's not that I want to buy a cafe, especially. It's more a feeling that, well, I've come home here. Still look on the bright side. At least I haven't got to tell the hotel I'll be leaving. I wasn't looking forward to letting them down. Not easy to find, you know. Reliable kitchen hands. You know, you care too much about other people. Hmm. Odd that should be seen as a weakness. People can take advantage. Mrs Baldwin certainly thinks so. Oh, it makes me so cross. I'm more puzzled than cross. I mean, what right she got to tell me how to spend my money? Well, you've got caught in the crossfire, I'm afraid. Between me and her. What if I increased my offer? I don't think it would do any good. And anyway, even if it would, I don't think I could allow you to throw your money away. There's only a certain limit to what this place is worth. It's another thing Mother used to say, money can't buy you everything. Although I think it was happiness she meant. Not the local calf. Although in my case, the two aren't that far removed. Have you got any blue thread to spare so I can finish my pockets? There's none in the store, really. Good run out. Hey, an overflow room, Dr Noll. Is it? Why? That's what I was wondering. What well, happened, Baldwin's in there with Madame, doing a bit of uh, overtime. Hey, I tell you, Summer, Michael won't let me go off with him on my own. He knows what he's like with lasses. 
Well, well, Kevin used to work for him, so he must know. Maybe he don't mind. Some fellas are like that, you know. <laughs> Everything all right? Oh, yeah. Fine. You know, with no blue thread, I'm having to borrow some of Anders. Yeah, it's on order. It should have been with us yesterday, like a lot of other stuff. And what's overflow room doing locked? Why do you need to go into overflow room? I've just told you we want some thread. Well, it's not kept in there. Well, you don't know how things get moved around here. Well, it's just bits and bobs in there. So why is it locked, then? Well, I don't know. Mr Baldwin's got a key. And has he not told you why it's locked? No, why should he? Well, you are a supervisor. And you do spend some time with him. I suggest you ask him if it's that important, Ida. On second thoughts, might be more fun not knowing. I'd hate to disappoint that imagination of yours. <laughs> Playing <laughs> again. I'm partly getting covered in raffia and making a flag. What is that? Well, I'm plucking all this raffia and then I'm going to. Can I come in? Well, I'm not sure there's anything to say, is there? I'm not going to let this go, Alma. I think there's a lot to say. For a start, I'd like an apology. What for? You know what? For last night. For saying that I should know better than to exploit Roy's good nature. Well, aren't you? How dare you? Isn't it enough that you sell the cafe to spite me? I did it because we need the money, not because I've got some vendetta against you. Don't, don't flatter yourself. You're not that important. Then why not sell it to Roy? Because you know it'd help me. That's why. That is not the reason. Then why? Mike's all for it. Oh, oh! Well, you should you should hear Mike on Roy. What was it he said yesterday? The good thing about Cropper is you'll be too dim to have a survey done. Oh, Mike's for it, all right. But I don't take advantage of people like that. This was Roy's idea, not mine. I, I didn't take him seriously to begin with. No, until you saw the colour of his money. Until he convinced me that he wanted it. I was as sceptical as you. I asked him over and over. Was he sure? He had to persuade me. Not the other way round. Well, it'll still bail you out. I'd never forgive myself if I thought I'd taken advantage. You don't have the monopoly on concern for others. You'd no right to say what you did. All right. I apologise. Thank you. Doesn't make any difference, though. I still can't sell it to him. Mr Baldwin. Yeah? I've got to warn you. Oh, what about? I've been asking why that spare stock cupboard's locked. We've got all that counterfeit gear in there. I wish you wouldn't use that word. What else is it? Well, I don't know. Uh, replicas, facsimiles, anything but that. Go and tell them to mind their own business. Go on. Well, no, I'll let you do that. I've been told to ask you. Oh, what about? Why are that overflow room's locked? Well, what's it got to do with you? Because we might want to get in there. Not anymore, you won't. That's why I've locked it. Too many light-fingered people about. Like who? I don't know. You tell me. You've done your share in your time. I beg your pardon. Look, stuff's going missing, so I'm keeping it locked, all right? Now get back to your machine and go on with your work. Bet you'll keep their noses out for a while, eh? Don't let them grind you down. Hey! Who's been doing this pilfering then? I've got no idea. Well, it's nobody I know of. In fact, it's first I've heard of it. Look, Ida, if you've got anything to say. Oh, yeah. I know. Say it to Mr. Baldwin. Bye. You'll fit nicely in his pocket, don't you? I wouldn't say that. I remember the first day you came to work here. You sat over there, you were laughing and smiling, talking about your kiddies, and I thought, bye, we've got a right little pearl joining us. <laughs> Look at you now. 
Ida, I've got a different job to do now. Oh, I don't we know it. Like telling tales to boss. What do you mean? I mean, if he thinks there's thieving going on, somebody's told him because it's nobody I know of. I have never said a word to him. Well, he ain't worked it out for himself because he never goes near that storeroom. If you're suggesting... I'm not suggesting nothing. All I'm saying is there's something stinks here and it's not from our side of the fence. Well, you may be convinced he knows what he's doing, but I'm not. What's that to you? What is you that I'm thinking of, actually? Me? Yes, well, if he makes a mess of things, which is likely, because he's got no head for business after all, you're the one who'll get burnt. I'm burnt already, Alma. You're selling the cafe. It puts me out of a job. You won't sell to Roy, which would save me. Yet you say it's to protect me that you won't sell to Roy. Look, I know you think I've got it in for you. I can't think why. But it's cos I feel so bad about selling that I just don't want to make things worse for you. It's my problem if it goes wrong. I'm trying to help you. You're not helping, Alma. You're being arrogant and patronising. You've no right to tell Roy how to spend his money. And if you really want to help me... Which I do. And if you really want to sleep easy when all this is over, sell Gaffy to Roy. If you want to see me go under, then just go on the way you are. I can't fight any longer. You'll soon have your way. Come in. Um, is it a good time? Well, it was. Uh, I think I owe you an apology. Ken, what is going on? Well, um, like you said this morning, it's complicated. It's to do with Deirdre finding us the other day. But why on earth should that matter? I mean, it was a minor embarrassment, surely. I just don't like upsetting her feelings. Her feelings? What about mine? Oh, well, um, well that's why I've come to apologise. Why was she upset? In the past. Now look, Ken. You're either in a relationship with your ex-wife or you're not. And you're either in a relationship with me or you're not. Now, go off and sort yourself out. And please don't come back until you have. <clears throat> you're a very lucky woman, you are. Why? I've just come from the flat. There's a message on the machine. Buckley didn't like the place he went to see, so he's firming up his offer on the cat. Oh. So you can sell it without upsetting your conscience. Enjoy it. Won't happen often. Judy Larchcotch, please. Up. Same again for Alma. Right. Well, you are going to sell it to him, aren't you? Oh, I don't believe this. They only took small things. Secateurs, Swiss Army knife, trowel. Things that slip into the pocket. I mean, clearly, they didn't want to draw attention to themselves. Well, was there much damage? Well, yeah, the lock was broken, the door shattered. It was oh. a complete mess. Oh, and they took the treacle toffees as well. Well, it sounds like children. Yes. My wall chart was intact, though. They clearly didn't realise the importance of that. Well, if they were from that comprehensive, they probably couldn't read. No. D did you call the police, Derek? I didn't see any point. I mean, they're too busy to deal with house break-ins, never mind allotment sheds. Oh, we should have gone up there more often during the winter. To do what? Go there with a shotgun in case somebody comes? There's nothing to do there this time of year. Wasn't there a man in the papers who fired on an intruder? Yes. And what did he get for his pains? Find. There's nothing you can do, Mavis. The law is on their side. So when's it due? Six weeks. Mind you, you wouldn't be that keen to get pregnant if you could feel the weight of this. I've forgotten how heavy they are. Hey, you think you're bad? Imagine what it's like carrying two. Oh, how did you manage? Oh, I felt like a cart horse walking around for the last few weeks. Mind you, it's nothing compared to when they're born. Oh, don't remind me. That's when the fun starts. There you go, Mum. That's uh, 280, please. Cheers. Must feel good, though, having brought them up and got them off your hands. Oh, listen, um, you, you couldn't lend us a tenner, could you, till payday? <laughs> Thanks, Mum. I'll let you know when it happens. 
Are you going to phone the guy tomorrow and say we accept his offer, or are we going to fall out? No, I mean it, Alma. Mrs Baldwin. Oh, hello, Roy. I'm not one to force myself on people, but I do feel perplexed after yesterday. I really cannot understand your reason for not selling me that cafe. Do you know, Roy, I'm, I'm not sure that I can anymore. Because if it was a question of money... No, no, it wasn't. It was, it was me and a model getting distracted. So, what is it you're saying? Uh, what was it that you offered? Uh, 35,000? That's what you said it was worth. Well, we'll go for that then, shall we? So, so it's a deal? But if you still want it. Oh, yeah, yeah I do. Right then. Uh, hang on, hang on. Were you going to up your offer? Well... No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll stay at 35. Well, deal it is. Oh, thanks. Very much. Uh, if we could just get things sorted as soon as possible. Fine by me. Oh, thanks. Again. Happy now? You could have got another two grand out of him. Don't spoil it, Mike. Oh, I don't know, honestly. I know. What would you do without us? Drink less, smoke less, spend less. You see, life would be no fun, would it? <laughs> and it's one that you can have all year round. Yeah. Where have you been? To fix a van. Well, thanks for letting me know. What's the point? Damned if I try and help, damned if I don't. Why bother? Oh, I hope you're not going to be like this all evening. Yeah, well, you won't see me if I am. I'm going straight down the rovers. Oh, Kevin, I've got your dinner in the oven. Well, chuck it in the bin. I'll get some while I'm out. Oh, I've got enough home without all this. So, what do you expect? I'm under pressure too, you know. But I try and suggest something I think might help, and you don't want to know. Only because it was awkward. For who? Me, not you. Anyway, do what you want. Won't make any more offers. Oh, you're not leaving me on my own, eh? I've been waiting for you. Oh, so leave it, eh? I'm not in the mood. <laughs> oh, Kevin, please don't go. I can't stand it any longer. What? <laughs> What about him? This stuff we've been making. Oh, we make it and then he has k -Bet logo sewn on. It tells everybody down the market that it's genuine stuff. He's told me not to tell anybody. That's why I didn't want you coming on Sunday. I didn't want you seeing what I was doing. He's breaking the law and I'm going along with it. Baldwin. I might have known. To make matters worse, I'm the only one who knows. He gets this special night shift in to stitch all these labels on. All the girls at work are against me. He's telling them lies and they think that I'm stirring it. It's just been awful. Hey, come here. Hey. <laughs> you should have told me so. I was scared. Still am. Six months ago, I was just a girl on a machine, and that was great. Now I'm a criminal. Well, not for much longer. Not if I've got anything to do with it. We'll see him put a stop to all this, so. All I'm saying is, if you and Sean Skinner become an item, well, I could have my house back. I've got a lease, Curly. Yes, and he's got a flat, hasn't he, above the bookies? <sighs> Sean and I are just good friends. Mm. Remember, like me and you used to be. Yeah, all right. See you later, sweetheart. Hey, run us to work on your bike. No. Thanks. Curly! Hang on. What? Hang on. Are you getting the bus? Uh, no, Van's picking us up outside. Chippy, drop you off if you like. Oh, yes, please. On one condition. Mend your football boots and playing tomorrow. There's only one Gary Mallet. Morning, lads. Morning. Morning, Dad. Here, Curly. They're raffling a couple of autographed city boards off at the corner shop. One by the players, the other by the managers. Yes, <laughs> very nice, Des, very nice. You've already got me boots, you haven't given back last time you borrowed them, remember? Come on. Hi, Sol. Hi, Des. Morning. Morning. Slice the bread yourself, or are you practising for tonight? That's karate, Des. Tonight's self-defence. Of course it is, yeah. Actually, it might suit you. Or maybe I'm looking at self not worth defending. I can handle it, Kevin. 
I'll just tell Mike that I don't want anything more to do with the dodgy side of his business. Yeah, and what do you think he's going to say, Sal? Oh, sorry about that. It won't happen again, I promise. Not a chance. I know him. Well, what can he say? It's illegal. He's admitted as much. Yeah, we've had illegal things here at the garage. Things are new now about till Baldwin dropped me in it. Look, just watch him, Sal. What's to watch? He can't sack me for being honest, can he? The best, yeah. Half a gross. Sizes straight across the board, dead genuine K-Bank. Look, you and me have done business before. I know you don't let the stuff hang around long enough for anyone to get nosy. <laughs> right. Yeah, now listen, uh, I'll be down Sunday and uh, cash, no checks, all right? Right, see ya. You're sticking your neck out, aren't you? What, with Ruben? No. Wizard of Wandsworth he is. Now you see it, now you don't. Just like that. Oh, oh, oh. What? You're going down to Wandsworth? Yeah, me and Sally, we're managed. Bless her. You know, it's a shame, really. Here am I. I'm doing good work, and I can't tell anyone. Good works? Ripping off K-Bank? Keeping that factory open, those girls in the job. Seven days a week. That's what I'm doing now. I hope they keep their jobs. Hope they appreciate it when the time comes. Oh, they'll love you, Mike. More than Gail will love me. You gave her the part that she wanted. And anyway, you mustn't look back. Always look ahead, like I do. Yeah, it's really turning you on, isn't it, this moonlighting? Moonlighting is too polite a word. It's a scam, and I'm loving every minute of it. What about the Sally? Don't tell me she's enjoying going to Wandsworth on a Sunday. Well, think of the alternative. Sitting at home with Kevin talking gearboxes. She's got a family she never even sees. So? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. No, she's all right, Sally. She moans a bit, but that's being married to him. No, you mustn't be smug, but uh, things are working to plan. Steve and Reed put the boot in, and I'm getting the last laugh. And as a bonus, you've lumbered his kid sister with the missing link. <laughs> Good, isn't it, eh? See ya. Check out with you later. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, it's three weeks, I think, maybe. It's good before. No, it is three, Ken. That's £9.25. Oh, do you still want Sundays, but with you going away? Oh, no, I'll be back by then. Oh. Hello, Rita. Hello, love. Back? Where are you going? Just going to Edinburgh to see Daniel. Yes, yeah, driving down tonight, back late tomorrow. Bit of a drag for you, isn't it? Oh, I don't mean seeing Daniel. Of course I don't. Such a long way. It is, yeah. Awkward, too, I should imagine. It's uh, 75 Ah, uh, thank you, No, it's very straightforward, actually. M6 to Carlisle, and then it's just the M7. I mean, once you get there, cos well, seeing Denise must be bad enough, but now Kelly as well. Yeah, well, that rankles, I admit. It used to be Mr Barlow from Kelly, now it's Ken, and Denise's house is so jolly and informal, you think they're all on holiday. Mm. Kidology, isn't it? Put you on wrong foot. Exactly. Well, if driving up's unpleasant, driving hey, back... Hey, but... Ken didn't come in here get depressed. Had he thought of taking some company? You know, someone oh. to talk to. What are you offering? <laughs> no, I was thinking more of Deirdre. She's away. Oh, yeah, of course she is. Good idea, though, if I could find a volunteer. Failing that, I have to fall back on my tape deck, and the best I can do is the three tenors at the moment. Oh. Bye. Take care, anyway. Bye, bye. 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 Hello, Alec. Oh, what's up with him? Oh, he's on his way to Edinburgh with three tenors. Three. Thirty quid will not get him as far as Lancaster. Oh, everything's down to money with you, isn't it, Mr Gilroy? Eh? Hey, don't you have a go at Alec just because you couldn't wine Ken up? No, but it's a symptom of the times we live in, isn't it? Whatever the topic for discussion, it always reverts back to money. Well, it's been the same since the year dot, Mavis. Take the Garden of Eden. Now, Adam had that apple given to him. Had he been made to pay for it, he might have been more careful. Oh, I'm sorry, that's just rubbish. I know, but you started it. Listen, I've just popped in to check it all right for Sunday, drive out and about to eat somewhere. Oh, yes, thank you very much, Alec. Right. Well, I'll check with you later, finalised details. All right, love. Bye. Bye for now. I drive out with Alec Gilroy. I'd sooner go to Edinburgh with Ken Barlow. Go quietly. Um, crash work. This, um, this Stephanie thing that you call for out of the door. Need to discuss Polly Mason's cover. She's getting married and wants a honeymoon. Yes, yes, well, um, I was wondering if you could manage without me. Only, I'm going to, uh, Please, Ken. I know exactly where you're going. Round and round in ever-decreasing circles. You're excused.
I've paged you twice. Now, where have you been? I was on the phone. Oh, trouble? No, it was personal, the call. It's about these Sundays, Mr Baldwin. Oh, yeah, what about them? Well, I can't do them anymore. You don't need me anywhere. All you do no, is... Hang on, just... Hey, just a minute. Who said I don't need you anymore? Well, you don't. All you do is drop the stuff off and collect the money. No paperwork, though, Sally. It's all in here, or in your head. Well, that's it. I don't want it in my head, Mr Baldwin. I don't want any of this in my head, because it's all wrong. I just want to work for you honestly, like I used to do. Three or four more trips and you will. You just hang on in there, Sally. No, I'm sorry, Mr Baldwin. I mean, if Quebec find out, we're in real trouble, aren't we? They're not going to find out, are they? We're the only two that know. At least, uh, I hope we're the only two that know. Kevin, you've told him. I'm missing every Sunday. It's only fair he knows where I'm going. And you've told him everything? Oh, well. That's it then, isn't it? You're either with me or against me. Pulling the rug out from any future that this place had. Oh, I'll be able to limp along for a month, a couple of weeks, but... Anyway, that's no concern of yours. You won't be here when I hand out the redundancy notices. But uh, we've got to think of a good reason. Well, you know the reason. I don't want us to get caught. No. I'm talking about your resignation. Oh, I know. We say that the family is missing you. Eh? Resign? I'm not resigning. You're going to have to sack me first. And if you do, I shall go and see a solicitor. But you are against me, Sal. I'm desperate. I'm more desperate than you realise. <coughs> Hello, Baldwin Sportswear. Yeah. Sally, it's all over. You go home to your cabin, eh? Oh, hello, Mr Slater. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about the check. It must have got held up in the system somewhere. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, there'll be a check in the post today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your patience. Bye. Mike, what's up with you? And who's Mr Slater? So you're saying it was only we things, Derek, that was taken? Yeah, all things portable. Trowels, secateurs... And what does that tell you, Derek? Tells me I need to buy new ones. And they're not cheap. Tells me it was an inside job. A uh, packet of mints, please, oh, mate. That's ridiculous, Desmond. People on allotments don't go stealing from one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's worth considering, Mavis, let me tell you. I don't think either of you understands the camaraderie that exists between gardeners. Each of us looks out for the other. What do you think, Jim? Too trusting? Absolutely. You see... Willie and I, we have all our gear marked up with my postcode. Mm. UV pen. Mm-hmm. If it does get nicked, it gives the polis a chance to trace it, you know. See, pinch your mower, Derek, and you'd recognise it again, but one trowel looks very much like another, doesn't it? I refuse to allow you to destroy my faith in human nature, particularly the unique variety that exists over that allotment. And we had treacle toffee stolen, so it's obviously yeah. children. Ah, uh -huh. Or made to look like children. What? Not. Get a pen, Derek. Code it for keeps. Bye. Oh, that's just too silly for words. We know everybody on those allotments. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Well, a few tools pinched from the shed's hardly grand larceny, is it? But there's so much of it, Rita. Children these days are brought up not knowing right from wrong. Easy for us to talk, Emily. We haven't got any. Perhaps that's a blessing. Mr. Sugden thinks we should have more prisons. <laughs> oh, well, where would he have them built? We don't want one round here. Oh, we thought of that. Disused oil rigs. He'd put the habitual criminals on those. Ta. Ta. You're not having one? No, I'm staying fit for tonight. Right. Just having the one. I'm pushing you into this, aren't I? You're not that keen at all. I am. Honest. Oh, come on. A self-defence class is not your idea of a romantic night out, is it? But I'm not into romantic nights out, Sean, I told you. Message received and understood. I heard you the first time. So you can back out now if you want, you know. Never judge a bookie by his cover. Ah, uh, a cheese sandwich and, uh, and a small Irish. Ten minutes for the sandwich. The cheese needs to mature. She's a lot of lip, that girl. Love everything. Nice, though, eh? 
Rita. Oh, uh, we'll have that little chat later uh, when you're not in company. Right. Company? What's wrong with Emily? Or even Mrs Bishop? I think he's got a lot on his mind. Oh, I'm sure. And even more on his conscience. We could always put him on one of Percy's oil rigs. <laughs> Usual please, Samantha. Right. Can I get you a drink? Got one. Well, I don't know what it was you said to Sally on the phone this morning, but you upset them. I tried talking around, but I was wasting my time. I've no choice than to put the girls on notice. Why? Just because Sally don't want any more of your dodgy Sundays? It was a dodgy Sundays that were keeping us afloat. And now because of Sal, we're sunk. Correction. Because of you. Hope you feel proud of yourself, Kevin. You just put 27 people on the doll. Tyler, have one yourself. No, oh, it'll be nice to relax on Sunday. I tell you, it's murder in that shop in the morning. Oh, you're lucky. I spend Sundays talking to myself. <laughs> He's lucky and all. Picasso over there. <laughs> He's got a wife to keep him busy. Oh, I've had wives, Rita. I'm not in the market for another one of them. Well, that's good to hear. I thought you might be taking me out to do a Fred Elliot. Titanic trap? What's, what's he got to do with it? Nothing. Just checking you haven't got an ulterior motive, like a proposal. It's loneliness. That's about as ulterior as I can get. Mind you, give us a moment or two and I might think of something. <laughs> get off with the alley. Get back to your brooches. All right, Rita. Yes, sir. Thanks. Chucking his cap in the air, that husband of yours was lunchtime. I saw him in the pub. I don't know, what did he say? Well, he's got what he wanted, hasn't he, eh? Little woman at home looking after kiddies. It's a shame, you know. All this could have been avoided. One, two more trips, we could have called it a draw. I don't know if I can believe you. Cross me heart. Oh, I keep forgetting. You don't make decisions, do you? You leave all those to Kevin. Hiya. Hiya. What's that smell? Oh, lasagna. I've left you some. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, it's your class tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Come if you like. Sean won't mind. Get off. He won't. Anyway, you might need self-defence classes if that evil Anne gets physical. It's been very quiet today, actually. Listen, what time are you due back? I'll uh, make myself scarce. About eight-ish, but you don't have to do that. Sean and I have an understanding. You can kid yourself, Samantha, but you can't kid me. That bloke is mad about you. The question is, how mad is he? Develop that, please, Mr Watts. What? Well, is he mad enough for you? I mean, you keep giving him challenges, don't you? You keep testing his passion. There isn't any passion. Well, that's hardly surprising. You're wearing the poor fella out. What with motorbikes, walking, judo. If I know Sean Skinner, he'll chuck the towel in less than a week. Here, a tennis as he does. Don't you think I'd know if he'd made the girls redundant? He hasn't. This is just Baldwin, isn't it? Lying through his teeth. Two or three more here, then a couple more. The only way is to get out now, Sal. It's just what you want, isn't it? You've never liked me working there. Well, why is this about you and me all of a sudden? This is about you and Baldwin. You said something, Anna. No. I know him, Sal. Only... Well, how pleased you were about him being in a mess. See? It's another lie. Can't you see? He's, he's playing us off each other. I don't want to resign. I don't see why I should. Look, none of this makes sense, Sal. Why does he want you to resign if he's shutting the place anyway? It doesn't make sense. Think about it. Well, suppose I make it clear to him that I just do two more trips and that's it. Sal, it wouldn't work. But if I don't, he's gonna... I know he's got money troubles. Only this morning he had someone ring in for a check. I suppose it is true. I suppose he does shut the factory down and chucks everybody out of work. Sal, stop supposing and call his bluff. You've got to. 
Yeah, but I suppose it isn't a bluff. Yeah. Self defence, main all. Come on. Hang on, I'm just looking at this. What? You've got to be brave to do that. You've got to be an idiot. It's this way, I think. It's interesting, don't you think? that the thieves leapfrog numerous other sheds in order to get to ours. Well, that depends which way they've come in. Curly, shortest distance between two points. A straight line. Correct. Exactly. Whichever way the perpetrators got into the allotment, a straight line would mean they'd have to pass other sheds. So what are you saying? I'm saying it's interesting. No, you're not. You're talking gibberish. Well, maybe they didn't walk in a straight line because they didn't want to damage the plants. Who do that? Gardeners. Give the lady a coconut. You'll be saying next that you think one of our lot pinched your stuff. Did I say that? Because you you can put your UV lamp on any of that gear on that allotment. A what? The ultraviolet lamp. On any of it, and I'll bet you money you won't find your stuff there. That's if you marked it. You did mark it, didn't you? Uh, yeah. No. Well, I have now. Uh, so you shut the door, but the horse is gone. Never mind, lad. Put what's left on your rhubarb. So, do you uh, still see much of this Kelly, then, or what? Yeah, she's used to this woman. Oh, I see. And who's today's, then? Oh, let me guess. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, silfy figure. Silfy? Yeah, oh, what about this? Um, my heart flies to its natural home, that darling girl who curls with comb, and scissors... What? No, wait, let me finish. And uh, scissors clipping to cut my heart from beef and dripping. There you go. That's your Valentine verse for next week, innit? I mean, you are sending the one, aren't you? Shut it. The look on that instructor's face. Well, I um, just got lucky, that's all. No, it was his fault for choosing you to demonstrate with. Now, what did he say that throw was called? Oh, um, some of Japanese. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Done judo before, though, haven't you? The instructor knew. Well, so why didn't you tell me? Well, I've dabbled. You know, it was a long time ago. And what else have you done that you haven't told me about? You're a dark horse, Sean Skinner. Am I? I like a man of action, particularly one who doesn't advertise. Now, where are they? Here we are. I picked these up when you went for the car. Uh, what? Sponsor forms for that parachute jump. Now, don't tell me you've done that and all, jump from a plane. What? No. <laughs> no. Well, shouldn't scare you, should it? Dark horse. Uh, no. Does it say what it is? Yeah, uh, the 9th, next month. That's a Saturday, I think. Oh, dear. Well, that's the busiest day of the book. His week is Saturday. Oh, it's impossible. Sorry. How unlucky can you get, eh? Uh, no, sorry, I'm wrong. It's a Sunday. Sunday, yeah? So we can do it. Can we? Yeah. Cup of tea to celebrate. I'll stick the kettle on. I think you made it clear to both of them. How important it was. Not ripping off Quebec. Will you stop saying that? Keep your voice down. He's the one to watch, you know. Cautious Kevin. Sally's all right. She's more understanding. You've been around the lamp, yeah? Around the block or around the world? We women, you know. If you want advice, Ashley, try your Uncle Fred. No. Have you ever sent a Valentine's card? Of course I have, yeah. Roses are red, violets are blue. I love you, guess who? Hey, that's great, that. Will you write it down for us? Hey, can I have my house back? Be my guest. Thanks very much. Quick, I need you. Who's writing something down for us? Now. Duty calls, Ashley. Hey, what about my poem? I think you can remember that. Read that. 120, please. Uh, pint for Des and uh, one for yourself. Ta. Where'd you get this? Samantha. She picked it up at the class. Are you doing it? Am I L? Does she want you to do it? Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you haven't told her yet that you're not doing it, have you? No. That's where you come in. Don't look now. It's understanding Sally. Hello, Sally. Good news or bad? I tried ringing your flat. Uh, can I get you drinks, Sal? No, I'm fine, thanks. I'm resigning, Mr Baldwin. I've decided whatever happens, my own conscience comes first. I told you what had happened, Sally. You bail out, and it's the end of Baldwin Sportswear. You can manage that, can you? All those girls on the doll? I'm gonna have to, aren't I? I'm sorry, Mr Baldwin. 
I won't tell anybody, I promise. She seems upset. Shall I go after her? No, no, leave her. It's the end for her, anyway. Here, hang on a minute. Ashley, isn't it? Yeah. How would you like to earn yourself a few quid on Sunday? A trip to Wandsworth. How'd that suit you? Yeah, great. Right. So, how was the uh, self-defence class then? So-so. You were wrong about Sean Skinner, though. Why? Only sat the instructor on his backside. Judo expert. Oh, yeah? Well, how come we got beat up then a while back? Outnumbered. Took him by surprise. Don't know. Left early, didn't he? Meaning what? Well, you know. Don't be so coarse. He's a gentleman. Oh. A gentleman and a judo expert. He's probably doing a quick change in a telephone box as we speak. <laughs> Never judge a bookie by his cover. Can't get any sponsors. It's a bit weak, isn't it? Have you got a better idea? She thinks I'm a flaming hero, for God's sake. Rod for your own back, mate. Mind you, you might need a few more rods if that parachute of yours doesn't open. Don't be funny. She wants this displayed in the shop. Now, what you tell her is no one will sponsor me, right? You've said yes. I'm valuable. Punters don't want their bookmaker taking any risks. Tons of reasons why I can't get any names. Very plausible, Sean. You make it plausible, Des. I've said I will. Good. Because I'm not doing it. No way. I'm not doing it. Oh, about time. Hiya, Sean. Where are they all working? You've been knocking for ten minutes. Well, you know it is. Sunday mornings, we have a lie-in. You coming in? No, I've got things to see to. Now, are you right for this dinner time? Uh, this dinner time. Oh, come on, Des, get your act together. I want you in the Rovers, so when I come in all cheesed off and tell Samantha nobody would sponsor me, you chip in. Oh, right, yes, I'm with you now. We went through all this yesterday. I know we did. And Friday night, come to that. Yes, and that's why I'm here again this morning. I want no slip-ups, Des. This is important, because believe me, there's no way I'm making a parachute jump. What? Not even to get in Samantha's, um, good books? Not even to get into Pamela Anderson's. It's just dawned on me. Number five. How long you been living there then? A couple of months. <laughs> you must be a glutton for punishment. Climb in, don't sit on the merchandise. I see. Where are you going? I'm working up markets. With him? You need your head tested. Give it a rest, do your blood pressure a favour and buzz off. Come on in, son John, if you're coming. Upsets you, does it? Seeing me still making a nice fat living. Oh. Ashley, this fella is poison. You best stay him well away. Park, oh, Mr. Successful there. Come on then, sunshine. Let's get going. It's like I'm feeling I'm climbing up to the top of the stairs and then coming back down again. Did you know, I don't remember doing any of this when I was having a terror. Mind you, they told you no in them days. You know, if they'd have said he were coming down my nose, I'd have believed and. It helps you with pain. You take a deep breath at bottom, and then by the time you get to the top, I'm panting more. Vera, where's me? What's going on? She's doing her exercises. You know, for when she has baby. No, not, not in here. What? Oh, give over. Here, Trisha, do some panting for no, me. No, 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 I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't like out like that, you know. <laughs> so you weren't there then with Vera when she had your Terry? Hey, you must be joking. You were out jugging it up him with his mates. Paralytic. No, that, that's, that's because I was worried about you. Look, she's doing these exercises to help her. You know, for when she's in labour. You know, for the pain. Oh, man, they don't know what pain is. We do. Well, I do anyway. You see, that would... I've come in here and I forgot what I've come in here for. Well, it's about 10 to 12. It's time you were opening up. No, no, I, I, I know what it is. This licence Vic do, we're going on Friday night. Do you think, uh, I better go and iron myself a monkey suit. Why? What for? Licence fake do. Friday night, town hall. Supposed to be a bit of a posh do, isn't it? You think I better go and iron myself one of them, uh, them dinner thingies and, and a little bat bow? Oh, what makes you think you're going? Because we've had the invite. 
We've not had the invite. I've had the invite because I'm the licensee of this pub. Right, right, Vera. It said to Mrs. Vera Duckworth and friend. Well, that's me, isn't it? But you're not a friend, are you? You're my husband, <laughs> not my friend. <laughs> It'll do car good to have a proper run, you know. <laughs> I beg a car. I'm hoping it's going to do me some good. Well, I, that's the idea, isn't it? We'll find a nice little country pub and have a wonderful lunch. I mean, you know what I mean about the car. All this town works no good for them, you know. Stop, start, stop, start. They've got to have a proper jaunt now and again. Like us human beings. Yeah, I've washed and polished it, you'll notice. Mm. All in your honour. Very nice. Well, I won't be a minute. I just want a word with Sally. What? What, now? Has it, has it got to be now? It'll only be two minutes. Polish your knobs or summit. It'll do the car good. Morning, Samantha. Morning, Desmond. Have you seen my boss? Sean, no. Why should I have? Well, he's very keen to see you. Can't think why. Vera, 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 you're kidding me, aren't you? Vera, Vera, will you, will you stop? I'm talking to you. You're not going to this license fit do without me, are you? Of course I am. Why shouldn't I? Because if I'm not with you, you'll show yourself up. Oh. oh, yes, you will. You'll have too much to drink, start kicking your legs, showing your knickers, and you'll start feeling randy. Fling yourself on the first fellow that you fancy. Sounds like a brilliant night out. You're definitely not going. Are you trying to wind me up, Vera? No. Because if you are, you are succeeding. What's to do, Jack? She only thinks she's going out Friday night without me. What, this coming Friday? Mm. Valentine's Day, you know. Is it? Well, it is in our house. Mind you, I expect every day's Valentine's Day with you and Vera, eh? Do you realise that this licence Vic do falls on Valentine's Day? Well, what about it? You've never sent me a Valentine card in your life. Yeah, yes, but what I am trying to say, I'll get you, I'll get you one this year. What I am trying to say, my my little swamp duck, is that if you go to this do of all do's without me, you'll be the talk of the wash house. It'll be all round town that me and you are splitting up. Oh yeah, you're right. Of course I'm right. Go on, you can go. <laughs> oh, but I'm forgetting who's going to run this place. Oh, moon of my delight, that is why we have staff. Samantha Love. Yeah? You're all right for Friday night, aren't you? Sorry, I've got something on. Andy, Andy Cott, now you're always looking for money. Your wish has been granted Friday night. Oh, Jack, any other day, yeah, but... Well, I'm going away, aren't I, with the old fella? I did tell you about it. Swine, Nora. Two minutes. She'll have it dark. Uh I beg your pardon, Mr. Uh, Gilder. Oh, hello, Emily. Uh, yeah. No, uh, no, I was, I was just saying it, it's not a bad day, considering, you know, for February, <laughs> apart from the cold. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for Rita, you know, we're off on a bit of a... Oh, yes, oh. Yeah. oh sorry to keep you waiting, Ali. Hello, Emily. Hello. Oh, here what, we are. Look, you sweetie. What, what, what are these, uh, these junior citizens? What, 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 what are they? We're taking them with us. Well, it'll be a bit of fun for him, and it'll give Sally and Kevin a break. Oh, what a nice idea. Well done, Mr Gilroy. Oh. Enjoy yourselves. Okay. Bye. Bye. You're having me on. You're not. I mean, we're really taking these... Mm. Children, Alec. They're called children. I know what they are. Oh, we tell you want the child seats out of our car, so oh, I'll go and get them. Right, love. Yes, I'd forgotten that. And then we can get in Uncle Alex's nice, clean, shiny motor car. Fine. Fine. We can find them some nice treat little toffee. We can run their fingers all over me upholstery. Oh, and Alec, uh, we'll have to find a pub that's got a children's room. Some have swings and slides, you know. Won't that be fun, Alec? Mavis, I cannot work the allotment without tools. Well, I know that, Derek. I'm as much in favour of natural methods as the next man, but I refuse to scrape the soil with a sharpened stick or a fragment of antler. All I said was, once you've replaced the stolen tools, what's to stop somebody coming along and, and stealing the new ones? That's all I said. Well, I'll keep the tools at home and take them to the allotment as and when required. You'll forget something vital every time. <laughs> well, all right, I'll keep them in the car boot. The car boot shall become my garden shed. <laughs> but whatever happens, Mavis, whatever it takes, I'm not giving up that allotment. <clears throat> oh, hello, Sean. What are you drinking? Pint, please, Des. A uh, pint for my boss, please, Samantha, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. You all right? What about the people around here, then, eh? What do you mean? 
Well, a sponsored parachute job we were thinking about, you know, to raise money for the scanner appeal. All yesterday, my busiest day in the betting office, right, Des? Right. I had my sponsor form pinned up right by the counter. That was a good idea. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? And I kept asking the punters to sponsor me, didn't I, Des? Oh, you did, Sean, yes. You know how many I got? Not one. Am I right, Des? Dead right, Sean, yes. Not one bloke could sponsor him too mean, you see. Well, I was disgusted. That's me finished. If they can't fork out a bob or two to sponsor me, I'm begging if I'm going to jump for them. It was an education to me, it was yesterday. Yeah, Sean's right. Yesterday was terrible. However, fortunately, today's been different again. You know, I thought to myself, if my boss has the guts to do a parachute jump for charity, well, the least I can do is sponsor him. So I'm backing you, Sean. 20 quid. Oh, that's great, Des. No, Des, no. It doesn't seem right. I can't take advantage. You know Sean has four betting shops, don't you? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, he's too modest, you see. Hey, so anyway, today I rang everyone who works for him. You know, at home. Des. And every one of those people is right behind you, Sean. They're all going to sponsor you. Minimum a fiver, in admiration of this daring and dangerous jump. Oh, it's not that dangerous, not if you know what you're doing and you don't lose your nerve. Well, it seems dangerous to me, and I admire Sean for doing it. So do all your staff. Like I said, least anyone game for is a fiver. Some of them said they'd double it if you do the jump without a parachute. I expect they just said that in fun, though. <laughs> now, that's brilliant, Sean, isn't it? Brilliant. Oh, hello, love. Hiya. Are you looking for Curly Watts? Because he's not come in yet. Uh, no, he won't be here. It's his thing for the Sunday shift, thanks. Well, you have it to do, love, don't you? It's like us. Oh, been stuck in here all day. Some time for a good night out. Well, some of us do anyway. I'll be at that do if it kills me. I'm going to ask Judy Mallet. She'll be glad of the oh, cash. Hey. You and Jim in Belfast together? You'll be legless permanently. Well, he might be. I won't. I'm skint. It's taken me enough time to scrape the fare together. Yeah, well, I hope you're eating properly. Hey, I'll tell you what, come in wine bar early on and I'll see you get a damn good meal on the house. Right, you're on. I'll see you in the hourglass. OK. Razor! Gary. It was good, I bet. You wouldn't believe it. I've a lot of catching up to do. You want to drive? <sighs> Where is she? Well, half an hour ago, she was at her flat. Do you want to go there? No. First thing I want to do is get the stink of that place off me. OK, boss. Anyway, I happen to know she's going to be working tonight at the Hourglass Wine Bar. Well, that'll do nicely. Make my first night out one to remember, eh? <laughs> Desmond, double-crossing me was a mistake, as you will find out. I was only trying to help you, Sean, that's all. Honest. I've seen the way Samantha looks like you, like you're a real daredevil. You wouldn't want to endanger that now, would you? He's endangering myself, I'm worried about. Uh, excuse me, but I, be I believe you're doing a parachute jump for charity. That's right, Maeve. Oh, well, we'd like to sponsor you, wouldn't we, Derek? Yeah, oh, great. We'll just put your name down there. Uh, How much you want to sponsor uh, it for? Oh, um, five pounds, I think. Uh, yeah, that's for both of us, uh, together. Uh, well, good luck. Let us know how it goes, won't you? Assuming all goes well, of course. Oh. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Five pounds, maybe. If I could spend that on gardening tools. <laughs> Another sponsor, eh? You're doing better than me. Now, while I think of it, keep yourself free for the practice jumps, won't you? I'll be right back. Oh, hell, there's no way out of this, is there? Not now. I'll get you for this, Des, one way or another. You'll thank me in the finish. When you and Samantha have gently floated down to Earth. I mean, how long could it be before the Earth starts moving for the pair of you? Here. Give us your sponsor for our mail back is Sean loves. <laughs> so you what, you know, do it well. Well, you were lucky if you could get a parachute, you know, because they used to make ladies' knickers out of them. <laughs> it's all different now, Vera. It's all been privatised. Make right? parachutes out of ladies' knickers, apparently they come down faster. <laughs> you daft, here. Hiya, Vera. Pipe, please, love. Oh, hiya, Curly. Here, your friend's here. Hey. Oh, hello. Um, you weren't waiting for me, were you? Of course not. For a start, you meant to be managing the store till three o'clock. It's now ten past two. 
Yeah, it went very quiet. So I gave the keys to Janice, you know, for locking up. Janice isn't management. Yes, I know, but she's very competent and she can handle a bit of responsibility. Let's just hope Mr Fermer doesn't find out, shall we? Oh, come on, Anne. Why can't we be friends? You know why. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. Oh, now did you enjoy it? Oh, now yeah. we say thank yeah. you, Uncle Alec. What do you say? Thank you, Uncle Alec. <laughs> and Uncle Alec says, don't mention it. We must do it again sometime yeah. soon. Uncle Alec says, no to sort. Ooh, grumpy Uncle Alec. Now, do you want a drink later? Uh, I want a drink now. Well, I'll treat you then. You've done a good job today. Hey, hey, hey. hi, girl. <laughs> They've been good. Oh, they've been terrific. Good as gold. Right, come on in, girls. Thank go. you, Rita. Oh, it's you too, Mr. Gilroy. It's been a pleasure. Right then, my son. You've earned yourself a nice little drink. Yeah, I could do with one. Come on in. So, may I come in? Uh, well, you, well, you might have phoned to let me know you were coming. Oh, don't just stand there. Come in. I'm oh, sorry, but I uh, on the way down from Edinburgh. And, uh, well, as the front's so close to here, I just came in on impulse. Now then, what was it? We said uh, 20 quid, wasn't it? Uh, you said 25, Mr Barway. <laughs> there you see. Sharpening up already. Yep, you learn a lot of me about people selling, winning. What you mustn't do is listen to losers like Don Brennan. I tell you, there are treasures out there just waiting to be lifted. Now then, Alec, put your money away. I'm getting these. Oh, come on, now, let's uh, put your money away. See, uh, now. Now, see, be a good lad. Samantha, I want a large Irish and a vodka and tea, please. Coming up. Look, I thought you were going to ask Judy, my lady. Well, I tried to tell you, aren't I? I went round to the house and she said she wouldn't entertain it. Something about her and Gary have got something special to do on Valentine's night. Oh, why? What's that, then? Well, not know, do we? No, because you've got, forgotten all, what it's all about, you. Not that you ever did all worth remembering. Are you all right, love? Uh, yeah, can I have a tonic, Walter? I've just got a fancy for you. Yeah, of course, help yourself. Look, why don't you tell Samantha she's got to work on Friday? I'll look after pub for you Friday night, Jack. I'd enjoy it. It'd be something to do. Right, love, fair enough. That, 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 that's it, then. Right. Yeah. Sit heck, you pie can. She can't run the pub on her own. Tell you what, you ask Betty to come in. And if she'll come in, Trisha can help her. Why is it always me that's what's Betty? Because it's you that wants the night out. I thought we were going out for a civilised lunch for proper adult people. Not bits of chicken cut up in shape of teddy bears and about as tasty. Oh, now, come on. We'll go out for the old haute cuisine some other time. Without the kids? Without the kids. Oh, now you're talking. Oh, you must admit, they're well behaved. I mean, Sally's brought them up nice, not been dragged up. Hey, there's Sally now. Can I have a word? Yeah, feel free. I just wanted to ask you, does Ashley know what he's been helping you to sell today? Well, of course he does. The boy's not blind, sportswear, leisure wear... Does he know the fakes? Have you told him that? No, he doesn't. What he doesn't know won't hurt him, will it? If anyone's going to get hurt, it's going to be me. If it ever comes to that, you just keep your nose out. You've got a husband working for you, and most of the girls I pay haven't. So give your conscience a rest, eh? And keep that buttoned, all right? I can see that something's happened. Why don't you just tell me about it? Well, I've been up to Scotland to visit Daniel. I go up every weekend when it's mm. humanly possible. There aren't many men who'd be that conscientious. But it's not just for Daniel's sake. It's for me, sir. It's for me. He means so much to me. He means more than my other children, which shouldn't be so, but it's true. I just don't want to lose him. I don't ever want to become a stranger to him. Is Denise trying to stop you? I think she realises she hardly needs to. I mean, take last weekend. Friday, it's out of school, bag already packed, long journey up to Edinburgh. I'm booked into a little private hotel about a mile from where Daniel lived. Pokey little place. It's probably all right in the summer, but bitterly cold in the winter. Anyway, it's the best I can run to. Oh, these weekends must be costing you a bomb. What with hotel bills and petrol and the rest of it. They do, but that's the least of my problems. Anyway, Saturday morning, I call 
to break downhill up. It's a chilly day, it's sleeting, and there aren't many places to take a child to. Yeah, I can see that must be a problem. Probably mainly due to the cold, but yesterday he started crying. I did my best to jolly him along, but uh, wasn't any use. He wanted to go home, by which he meant back to his mother. So that's where I took him. We must have had about an hour and ten minutes together, about half of which he spent in tears. Oh, Ken. So, back to the Pokey Hotel. And this morning, I go to pick him up again. Denise came to the door, carrying Daniel. Where do you think you've taken him this morning, she said. She didn't wait for an answer because he doesn't want to go. He was clinging to her. Then what was I supposed to do? Drag him off her? So I came away. And here I am burdening you with my personal grief. No. I want to help. Do I go on repeating this painful routine week in, week out? And What's he doing to Daniel? And if I don't go up, if I don't keep seeing him, will he want to? I don't know, Sue. I just, I just feel, I've got this terrible feeling I'm gonna lose him. And I, I just don't know what to do about it. I just can't think what to do about it. Don't be alone tonight, Ken. I mean, don't go home. Stay here with me. Well, that all right? Mm, absolutely. Mm. How much do I owe you? I told you, it's on the house. I'm entitled to a staff meal, aren't I? You've just eaten it. Oh, so that's what you do, is it? Let everybody else have your dinners. That's why you think. Slim, Andy. The word is slim. Right, well, I won't argue. In fact, I'll go. Oh, typical man, eating away. Well, no. You I'm could not... stop and keep me company. You've got plenty of company here, what's wrong with you? Anyway, I'm at a party tonight, aren't I? Down at Robbo's. You know, from college. Okay. Enjoy yourself. I will. Take care. See you, Mum. Bye, Bye, love. Oh, sorry, mate. Surprise, surprise. I've not gone over the wall, by the way, in case that's what you're thinking. I'm out. All nice and legal. Paid my debt to society. What do you want? Champagne. Best you've got. We're celebrating. That's not what I meant. You don't have to explain to me what you meant. And I don't have to tell you what I want. Do I? Three glasses. You, me, and a glass for my man, Jerry, who's been doing a good job for I'll have a lager, boss, if it's uh, all the same to you. Lager for Jerry. Just you and me on the bubbly, Liz. You sure you want this? It's expensive, you know. Allow me. You've been used to seeing me on the wrong side of a big, nasty wall. Wearing rubbish. Forget all that. It's different now. You and me are going to be seeing a lot of each other. Because there's nothing to stop us now, is there? Oh! Um... Hang on! I I've got your milk. I won't be a minute. All right. I thought you'd be back last night. Did you have an awful journey? Well, it was a bit late, so I stopped off on the way. Anyway, thanks for taking the milk in, am I? I wasn't sure what to do, but I didn't think you'd want to advertise your absence in case you decided to go straight on to your conference. Yeah, well, good thinking, Emily. Good thinking. Would you still like me to have the key while you're away? 
Uh, right, yes. Well, when would be convenient? Uh, oh, I don't know, later, whenever it suits you. Ah. Good party, was it? Oh, Mum, please. What? Well, your voice and my head. You don't learn, do you? Oh, thank you very much. And you don't look yourself either. What's up? You all right? Fraser Henderson's out. Oh, come on. Who told you that? He did last night. In person. Well, he certainly looked the part. Used to be my Uncle Rod's, this. Used to collect for the provy. Well, we've a long history of prudence in our family. Or, as he used to say, we've a gift for thrift of us croppers. Well, just as well in the circumstances. A little saving is no sin, were his maxim. He knew every street in Nelson and District. By the time he retired, he'd walked all the way to the moon. Now, can you manage on your own? Well, it won't be the first time. Thing is, I never put my signature to anything I haven't read and thoroughly understood. You do right. Neither do I. Never. Hand on heart. Well, sometimes. If we'd had more time, I'd have done the conveyancing myself, but you have to know what you're doing. So, regrettably, I have to rely on a solicitor. Nevertheless, I shall reread every last word before I commit pen to paper. Er, uh, how do we look? Like the cat's whiskers. Well, er, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be going now. <laughs> and, er, uh, I, I may be gone some time. Did you know, er, uh, they never found his left sock? Captain Oates. One of the great unsolved mysteries. Enjoying your breakfast, egg all right. Don't change the subject. I know what goes on them dues when the ale starts flowing. Well, I won't be having any ale. No, but Bernie Flaming Rogers will. Bernie Rogers from Dog and Spanner. He's all mouth and trousers. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know that, would I? Look, why won't you believe me? I don't want to go on my own. And that Bernie Rogers, I wouldn't want to be within half a mile of him. I want to go with me husband. Then why? Why have you made it impossible for me to go? Well, I haven't. Look, ask Betty. Here she's here. Morning, Jack. Morning, Vera. Ask Betty what? Sit down, have a cup of tea, Betty. What do you want? We were wondering, weren't we, whether you were doing anything Friday night. Why do you want to know? Well, we're a bit short-staffed and mm. we were wondering whether you would take on the evening session. Friday nights. Uh, uh. I wouldn't work Friday nights for a wagon load of custard. <laughs> yeah. Leading to allegations of this nature. Oh, am I interrupting something? <laughs> We're having a meeting. What kind of meeting? For female members of staff. Oh, that kind of meeting. Did you not know about it? Well, I... Uh... Did Mr Furman not tell you? Well, actually, I've not uh, spoken to him this morning. Oh, well, he's somewhere about. I saw him half an hour ago. Uh, did you? Oh, well, um, carry on. Sexual harassment is defined as unwanted conduct of a sexual nature. Orange squash. Right, come, you must have supped some last night. When are you off? Um, tonight, Jack, if I go. That bad? Oh, no, 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 something's cropped up, that's all. Uh, might have changed my plan. Right, well, if you do, uh, will you do Friday night for us? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not, yeah. But like I say, I've not decided yet. Right. There you are. I thought you'd still be packing. How was Steve? The same. He said nobody knew Fraser Anderson were coming out. Didn't know a thing about it. Oh, all the same. I think it's better if I don't go. I'll uh, speak to me dad, eh? No, I don't want him involved. Well, he won't be involved, will he? I'll just make something up. I'll tell him I'm ill or something. That's not even a lie. I'll not believe that. No. The best thing you can do is just stick to your plans. The further away Jim is from here, the better. Hi then, Jack. With you in a minute. Yeah. Hey, what's on list then? What do you mean? Young Ashley working for Baldwin. Well, it's up to him. I don't suppose anybody forced him. He's doing it to get at me, isn't he? What, Ashley? No, Baldwin. Don't tell me it's a coincidence. All them folk down at Job Centre and he gives a job to my lodger. Oh, Don, don't take it out on me. I don't work for him. You do? Not anymore, I don't. Oh, is that right? You had a bust-up, have you? Ah, oh, well, uh, what's all that about, then? I don't 
think it's any of your business. Uh, Jack, mm. uh, about Friday, mate. Oh, right, you can do it then. Uh, no, I can't. I'm sorry. Look, I'll see you next week, all right? See you, Jack. So, hello. So you knew about it? Yes, I discussed it with her. We should have had a company policy on sexual harassment long ago. It might have prevented that unfortunate business with my nephew. So what are you exactly accusing her of? Well, I would have thought that's obvious. She's trying to make me out like some kind of pervert. Come on. Where'd you get that idea? All right, she's told the girls to be on alert. She excluded me from that meeting, put those two factors together, and it's... Well, it's sexism. Men can be victims and all, you know. I was excluded as well. Yes, but you knew all about it, didn't you? And you're not under suspicion. It's me. Tell me, do you object to this policy that I've asked Anne to introduce? Of course not. Because I'd have thought you, of all people, would have been in favour of preventing misunderstandings of that nature, given your reasons for leaving better by I've told you I was set up. Yes, and I believed you. Wouldn't have given you a job, would I? Yes, but now you might believe that I was guilty after all, and that is what she wants you to believe. I don't know what to think, but you don't make things easy for yourself, do you? Right, I've got to be in Wigan in half an hour. Before you go... Yes? Uh, just one more thing about yesterday afternoon, uh, the girl Janice. Not another complaint. No, no, nothing like that. It's just that I think she's responsible and should be considered for promotion. Uh, the tall girl with the scouse accent? Yes. Well, I'm always open to suggestions. Well, I wouldn't have trusted her with the keys otherwise, would I? Even though it was for the last half hour. What was? Well, I'm sure Anne Malone's given you chapter and verse on it. She's never said a word. You better sit down, Mr. Watts. <sighs> yes, I think it will be for the best, didn't you? I mean, otherwise, it's going to be conclusive proof to those members of staff with suspicious minds. Mm. Yeah, yeah, me too. No, no, of course I don't. Oh, uh, look, there's someone at the door. Right, OK. Anyway, I'll, I'll see you when you get back. OK, bye. Oh, Emily, I'm sorry I was on the phone. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I was pestering you this morning. No, no, not at all. I had rather a lot on my mind. Actually, this weekend didn't quite go as planned. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's done now, though I'm not sure whether the situation can be resolved. Oh, well, how was Daniel? Oh, well, he's fine, fine. Though, uh, whether he appreciated my visit, I don't know. So we can hardly blame the wee ban for that, can we? As he's now known. Oh, dear. I'm sorry, Ken. And you had an awful journey and had to stop in some boarding house. Anyway, don't worry about the house while you're away. What about central heating? Oh, no, uh, I'm not going now. It's all off. Oh, has it been cancelled? No, the headmistress is going on her own and going to report back. Oh, might have done you good. How do you mean? Change of scenery, new faces. Where was it? St Anne's. And sea air. I'm not sure I follow your train of thought. Deirdre unburdened herself to me before she went away. I gather you've had a parting of the ways. Oh, I see, so she told you. Yes. Well, under the circumstances, I'm surprised you offered to look after the house. I don't take sides. I count you both as friends, each in your own right. Well, even so, heaven knows what you must think about me. Deirdre didn't lay the blame on you, so why should I? Oh, I see. Uh, she didn't tell you all the details and mention what was the final straw. Oh, no. Uh, not at all. A mutual misunderstanding. That was the impression I got. Oh, a little more than that, I'm afraid. So there's no hope of retrieving the situation. I'm sorry. I honestly don't know. Might be worth one more try. Parachute jump, you've got to be barmy. We're quite looking forward to it, actually, aren't we? Come on, a fiver each. So, what's in it for me? Nothing. It's for the scanner appeal. Well, it's supposed to be a picture in the local rag, wouldn't it? Oh, sure to be. Well, suppose we get some... Big words on the parachutes, you know, big letters, like, you know, on each one of them, like the one saying 
Rovers, one saying return. And then if you two jump hand in hand, now they are, that, that'd be worth a ten. Of course, unless one didn't open and then that'd be a waste of money, wouldn't it? Well. Like I said, what's in it for me? Oh, why does there have to be anything in it? It's for charity. Supposing you were to work Friday night. No, Vera's given us the night off and I'm going out, I told you. Hey, I say, mm. I'll tell you who you could ask. Who? Alec Gilroy. He knows his way around. What up, Pod? Extra gravy? Yeah, thank you. Sponsor right. her for a parachute jump. Oi, I heard that. No strings attached either. Maxine wants me to go to Tenerife with her, but it'd mean I'm to close the shop. Mind you, Alan Francis is safe, shall say again. Who well, doesn't? No, exactly, but I'm not bucking anything with him because I know what'll happen when I go in council. Anyway, it's July, and you don't know what's going to happen by then. So what do you reckon I should do? Should I go on my own, or should I go with Maxine to Tenerife? Mind you, if I went to Tenerife, I wouldn't even see her. Have you got anything planned? Me, oh, no. Mm. Fiona, if I tell you something, will you keep it to yourself? That's all I'll get off. All right, love. I'll see you tomorrow, eh? Hey, listen, Betty, before yeah. you go, you know it's the slice and sweet do. I'm sorry, love. I don't do evenings, especially Fridays, you know. I mean, I am getting on a bit and I do like an early night. I know you do. Listen, look, why should I do him any favours? He never does me any. Yeah, but it'd be me that you'd be doing the favour for. Look, I've got to go, and if I go on my own, it'd be terrible. Well, how's that? Well, I'll be the only one there without an escort. It'd be awful. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was like that. I thought you weren't bothered. Well, I was just winding him up. Of course I want him to go. I see. Well, it doesn't do him any harm, does it? To make him a bit jealous, keeps him on the toes a bit. Does it? <laughs> Glad I remember that. So what do you say, eh? Will you? I'll make it up to you, money-wise. Look, it's not the money, lovey. I don't do night. Oh, well, I just thought I'd ask. I'll tell you what. I'll have a word with my Billy, see what he says. But if it is, if I do a favour to you, it's not to Jack. <laughs> hey, and I won't be the word, Betty. <laughs> right. Make him sweat a bit longer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, they had a great time. Oh. They didn't stop going on about it. <laughs> Auntie Rita this, Uncle Alec that. Hey, I hope they haven't got the wrong idea about us. Heaven forbid. Oh, you spoil sport. <laughs> they met lovely bridesmaids and all that. <laughs> you wash your mouth, Eric. <laughs> hey, evening papers in. Yes, there we go. Just want to see if there's any jobs, but I don't suppose there are. Oh, oh Sally, excuse me. Hey, we I'll leave the money on the counter for you. All right, Cheers. Thank you. Hiya. Hey, all right? Hi. Hey, it was a good laugh yesterday. He's all right, and he might bore you when you get to know him. Oh, you reckon you know him, do you? You said I've got a good aptitude for the job. You know, my driving skills and that, because I'm used to delivering. Oh. More fun than pies away. <sighs> Sportswear, I'll see. We went all over. Bermondsey, London, Acton. It was great. Yeah, well, I hope he paid you. And he said they might be a bonus if I stick at it. Sky's the limit, and not just Sundays either. We're better than working for my Uncle Fred. Hey, if I were you, I wouldn't get too carried away. Between you and me, it's a bit dodgy. We're only taking stuff for out markets wholesale. I know what you were doing. I were doing it last Sunday, the same job. It's dodgy. What do you mean? I'm telling you. Sooner or later, he's gonna get caught. Just stay clear of it. Well, you still haven't said. I haven't even spoken to you. Just take my advice for your own good. Well, I've told him on for next Sunday. I hope he doesn't get any funny ideas. I can't make that fell out. What kind of ideas? Well, changing this into one of them continental cafes. There's enough of them on precinct. Are there? Ten different coffees. Or no ettle cake. I'll make a note of it. Well, here he is. All done and dusted. Contracts will be exchanged within the week. Well, congratulations. And to celebrate, though it does suggest calls Ooh. to Newcastle, I've been to the delicatessen. What is it? Would you care to join us, Mr. Sodden? It's tiramisu. Oh, no, you wouldn't like it. Italian, <laughs> taste of coffee. Well, I just have a little bit to be sociable. Donald, will have some, won't you, Dom? Some what? Tiramisu. Mm. We're, we're celebrating. Roy's my new partner in crime. He's just bought the cafe. Well, good for you. I wish you every success. Thank yeah, you. more success than I ever had, any road. <laughs> so, uh, who's in charge, then? You or him? Well, we both are. We're partners, aren't we? Uh, well, I have the majority holding, technically. It's a 60-40 split, according to the documentation. Well, strictly speaking, 
Uh, but, but we can safely assure all our customers that it will be business as usual, won't it? I'm glad to hear it. Is there any more of it? It's very good of you, this. Look, I've told him that you don't want it to go any further. Oh, I don't. A bit of advice, that's all I want. Look, as far as anyone's concerned, this is just us. I'm a quiet drink in the pub, so go on. Fire away. <laughs> I'm all for it. I think it should be discussed. You're missing the point. So would you be if you were a woman? No, it's the way she organised the meeting. Everyone knew about it apart from me. So I complain to your boss. Do you not think I didn't? And every time I mentioned it, he seemed to take her side. Well, how would he do that? Uh, it's a, a long story, Sam. I, um... I can't explain. You look a worried man, Jack. The licence trade proving to be a bit of a disappointment, eh? Old Mother Robert, I don't know why we keep the old bat on. It's an institution, Jack. You can't get rid of Betty. You managed it. Well, I tried, but she still came back, yeah. no matter how many insults I heaped on her. But you see, fair dues, that's the only approach she understands. I should have thought you'd have known that by now. Ah, this is the lad I was telling you about. Oh, I've seen you in the cafe, haven't I? Very eager is Ashley. Conscientious. Uh, I'm not working for you again. You what? Sunday. I can't make it. Well, why not? I'm busy. Doing what? All sorts. Such as? Tidying my room. Tidying your room? Amongst other things. I don't have to give me reasons. Anyway, my decision's final. Hey, hang on a minute. You haven't been talking to Sally Webster, have you? No. And even if you have, she hasn't said anything. Right. That does it. Hey, where are you going? You stay there. And he said he'd be in touch. Well, yeah, that's what worries me. Did he say anything else? He drank a lot of champagne, but it didn't cause any bother, no? Right, look, I'll tell you what I know. He got 18 months for fraud. Now, the only people with a grudge against him are the Inland Revenue and the Customs and Excise. What, no one else? No. Well, not as far as we know. There are plenty of rumours, but as far as we're concerned, he's got a wide circle of friends, he's got a reputation of being very generous. I can tell you from first-hand experience, he throws fantastic parties at his house. Look, if I were you, I really wouldn't worry. Lots of blokes, they get obsessed when they're inside. Their, their feelings get blown out of all proportion, but as soon as they're back out, they're back amongst the mates. But they've got plenty to occupy their time. Look, if he does get back in touch with you, nobody has ever heard of him hitting anyone or anything like that. It's quite the reverse. He's a bit of a gentleman by all accounts. Is that all right, Pat? Thanks. I'm very grateful. Can I have a word with you? Could you keep your voice down? I've just got the youngest one settled. What's it about? You know darn well what all this is about. You've been talking to Ashley, haven't you? So? What do you mean, so? You gave me your word you wouldn't go around telling any tales. I haven't told him anything. Then why has he cried off Sunday? He was keen as mustard yesterday. All right, yeah. I did give him some advice, but I didn't tell him why. Not specific. Oh, you've really got it in for me, haven't you? I don't understand you. I gave you a job, responsibility. Why are you giving me all this aggro? You know very well. What you're doing, that's illegal. You have no right involving other people. Do you think I'm happy doing it? I've got no choice. You have. You've got a nice little house and a husband with his own business. You've got no need to work. You can afford to be all smug and holy. I think you should go now, Mike. I'm going, but remember one thing. If I'd have done it your way to the letter of the law, I'd be bankrupt by now. I'd have lost the flat, the car, the business, and those girls would be out of work. So you remember that before you go around spreading any more tales. And also remember, you were quite happy to go along when it suited you, weren't you? So don't come all innocent with me, OK? Taxi MacDonald. Hang on, oh, that's me. Right, I'll see you later. See you later on. Uh, thanks very much. Bye. I do. Bye. Hi. I'm looking for Billy Williams giving me seeds. Oh, look, I should have mentioned the other day. Have you got your order in for your seeds? Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, well. Were you not at the last meeting? Oh, well, you've not had your form no, yet. We've been then. very busy. Oh, well, look. Get this form filled in straight away or you'll miss your discount. <laughs> You'll be at next meeting, though. Uh, well, when is it? You mean to say you don't know? You seem to be running all hot and cold, though. You were keen enough at the start. Well, we still are, aren't we, Derek? Aye. They have a very busy social life. Oh, I happen they're too busy to keep up an allotment, then. That's when you get broken into, you know, when you're up there. You can't mount a 24-hour guard, can you? No, but you get me point, don't you? Look, I've got a waiting list. This folk could give their right arm for that plot of yours. Well, when the weather improves. If you wait for that, you'll wait all year. Well, that's to all you two. The bitter's off, Jack. Right, I'll see to it, Lloyd. <clears throat> uh, 
Is Vera about? I'll just get her. OK, love. Had a postcard from Deirdre this morning. Sunset over Hackney Marshes. She's coming back tomorrow morning, isn't she? Is that what she said? I think so. Yeah. Right. Right. Anyway, just this once. Oh, thanks, Betsy. And I won't ask you again. Right, love uh, Jack! <laughs> Would you like to get Betty a drink? <laughs> Betty? That's not Betty. What are you talking about? No, no, no. It must be somebody who looks like Betty. Oh, is that all? No, because I distinctly remember Betty telling me that she never comes in here in an evening, so how can that be Betty? No, she run about when she's working. Working? Just know the meaning of the word. Look, what are you talking like that for? Because it's the only language she understands, isn't that right, Alec? Eh? I don't have to listen to all this, you know. But Jack, it's all fixed. She's agreed to do it. I should flaming hope so. Well, I've changed my mind. I don't have to work here, you know, and listen to all his insults or find somebody else. Well, that's great, that is. You worked a right blinder. Thanks, Alec. Any more good ideas? Thank you for that. I think you put a mind at rest. You seem to have built him up into a right monster. Well, he's no quiet boy. Yeah, but he's not violent, though, is he? No. Well, he's not. What do you mean? He might know people who are if, uh, if he needed to. Shouldn't you have, uh, have said something? Why? There's no point getting her in that twist. Besides, I've got no proof. Uh, he keeps his hands clean. If anything unsavory happens, he's usually having dinner with the chief constable. Right, so he is bad news, then? Yeah, but as far as I know, he doesn't personally knock women about. His wife's never made a complaint. He's married? Alan, she doesn't know that. Why didn't you tell her? Well, I know she said she was terrified of him, but she didn't seem to mind drinking his champagne. And like I said, he's an elusive character, as Fraser Henderson. And if she decides that his advances aren't quite so unpleasant after all, well, then we'll know where he is, won't we? And up there, it's gone past eight. Hey, and if you're late again, I'm not writing you no notes. I <sighs> said, uh, your Jack sorted out Friday yet? Oh, aye. Uh, the great big gumballs come up with a very novel solution, no star. <laughs> oh, look, come on. Is it my fault that Betty Williams can't take a bit of a ticket off? Ticking off? Do you know he practically told her to sling her up? Anyway, it'll be him that'll be stuck here, sulking while I'm there raving it up, and it'll serve him right. I've told you, you can both go. I'll look after it. I'm certainly not expecting any Valentine's dates. Oh, right now, come on, it's only one night she can manage. Look, I don't care if it's for one hour. She's not running this pub on her own. I've done it. Well, I dare say you have. But you didn't happen to be eight months pregnant at the time. Why don't you take yourself off for a nice little pamper, eh? Facial, massage, do the world a good. I thought we weren't spending on non-essentials. This is an essential, if it helps you relax. Oh, it'll take a lot more than that. Oh, I wish you hadn't fallen out with Sally. Oh, the silly little girl. Should have kept her mouth shut. No, she's a lovely girl. And she's been very loyal to you. Oh, it's all my Your fault, fault yeah. Mm. Yes, uh, Second World War, Black Monday, mad cow disease, probably put the whole lot down to you. Give me a chance. Now you're being daft. You're the one that's being danced, sweetheart. Now take yourself off to that beauty salon, and that is an order. Only if you promise to make it up to her. I climbed down for no one. Not even me. Well, I'll think about it. Wish I was around when Baldwin bowled you out. His feet wouldn't have touched. It's not what he said, it's that he might be right. Yeah. What if they do have to shut down because of me and my big mouth? What then? Look, he's on skid, Sally. He's worried. Only all the girls who stand to lose their jobs again. Look, anyone who cuts corners like he does deserves all they get. All I know is that Mike took me on when nobody else was interested in me. And he put me in charge. He had faith in me when he even you thought all I was good enough for was a part-time shop assistant. I don't think I've repaired him very well, do you? He's there! Yeah, don't look. What's he doing? He said I wasn't to look. He was taking pies into the rovers. When are you going to give that to him? Don't give it to him, you divvy. He's not meant to know it's off. You write for us instead. If you like. 
But if I was to spend my dosh in a valentine for Wayne Munro, I'd want him to know who it was from. No danger. Do you think Astro might not guess it's off me, then? <laughs> He'll guess. You're the only one weird enough to think he's cute. Right, anyone wants a lift, speak now or forever hold your peace. Unless you're um, hoping for a better offer. Shall I go and ask him? Shut up. <laughs> you lost someone. Oh, me unreliable fella. I phoned him at half past seven this morning and asked him to pop round before work. Says, have the kettle on, I'll be there in half an hour. Mind you, it's only 40 minutes late, it's quite prompt for him. Working? No, night off. Good, you're coming out with me then. I don't respond to orders. We'll say yes, but we won't have to give it. Yes to what? The dogs. A decent meal, a few bevies, a flutter, all in one. Sold. I like a girl who plays hard to get. I didn't say fishy, I said peculiar. Same thing. No, yeah, but I mean, it is peculiar splitting up after all these years, because Gail and Alma have always got on so well together. We get on well together, largely because I'm so tolerant. But people wouldn't think it were peculiar if we split up. Probably be very surprised we've lasted this long. Yeah, but they're partners and that's an entirely different thing. And then to sell her share to that Roy Cropper individual. What's wrong with him? Well, it's a bit odd, he must admit. Odd or not, he's got the cash in the bank, which from all I hear is the prime consideration right now. Uh, four pound eighty, love. Hope you think she's worth it. Ah, she is. <laughs> Excuse me a tick. I've um, told Mr. Barber I won't be doing markets anymore. Oh yeah, no, he's already had a go at me about it. I wouldn't say it was you that warned me off. Oh, you didn't have to. He's nobody's fool. Don't worry, Ashley. You did the right thing. Do we could try it. So yeah, absolutely really like a shin on a bit, a bit more float with a few curls. Or we could have it down if you want. No, I like it better. Yeah. Softer on the face. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Hang on one sec. If you're here for breakfast, you are two hours late. Oh, I'm sorry. Something came up. Look, I'm here now. No, it's no use now because I can't talk. Is there something wrong? Mm, I hope not. Look, can you uh, can you meet me for lunch? Right, OK, it's going to have to be tonight then. Uh, meet me over the road about six o'clock, yeah? All right. And when I say six, I mean six. I don't mean seven. Or eight. Or nine. <laughs> I wonder if we might uh, pencil in a meeting for later. What sort of meeting? Uh, discuss a few uh, small changes I'd like to propose. Uh, nothing major. Don't want to walk before we can run. Oh, thanks for coming, Chuck. Well, it wasn't easy. She went to know where I was sloping off to. But you didn't tell her? Oh, I said the allotment. Oh. I told her she were welcome to come and help me dig it over if she wanted. You see, the thing is, her and our Jack, they've had this bit of a fallout. Yeah, I know. Jack's been giving her a mouthful. Yeah, well. He's got no finesse. No. Anyway, did she say it about coming back? Yes. She's not. Oh. Well, happen if you were saying that she's doing wrong whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa. Why should I tell her that? Look, I know how Betsy. She'll be dead miserable at home all day. And she'll take out on you, you know. Oh, I should be breathing down your neck. Wanting to know your every move. Uh, would you like the menu? Yeah, I'll have a cup of tea. Uh, yeah, I'll have coffee. All right, and a couple of uh, cinnamon cakes. <laughs> My treat. So, look, will you do it for me, Billy? I have got a mind of her own, I must say, as my wife. I can promise you now. <laughs> Anne, this has got to stop. What has? This bad blood between us. I couldn't agree more. I dislike it as much as you do. Well, why the hell did you start it in the first place? with these ridiculous insinuations, and now this campaign against sexual harassment, which is obviously aimed at me. I don't remember your name being mentioned at the meeting. Not specifically, no. You're far too clever for that. But you left Eric in no doubt who the target was. Mr Furman draws his own conclusions without any assistance from me. <sighs> Anne, what is it with you, eh? We used to be friends, good friends. It was me that encouraged you to go for a, a management post, remember? If I hadn't pushed you, you wouldn't have done it. And I'll always be grateful, truly. So what's changed? You have. How? You've been confused ever since Raquel walked out. Anne. I'm not confused. I'm just unhappy. Is that so hard to understand? 
You'd have a pack then? Like a shot. I'm not going to get the chance, am I? What have I said now? Nothing. It's not your fault. You can't help being the way you are. You might be home. I know it's half term. Right. Um, will you join me? It won't do any second to open. I can't stay. Right. Well, how was London? Big. Still thinking of moving there? I haven't made any decisions about that. But being away did give me a different perspective. Well, I hoped it would. Look, I feel lousy about what happened. I must be insane. Oh, you don't lose control of your emotions that easily, Ken. But I do think we ought to put it behind us. Absolutely. And stay friends. Friends? Well, what else can we be now? Well, like we were. Close, in every sense. I mean, go back to square one and but start again. It wouldn't be square one, would it? It'd be square 2001. Like it says on the T-shirt, been there, done that. How can you be so flippant? The truth is, I... I don't know how to be. This is hurting me, too. Then give it a chance. Give us a chance. It's not too late. That's exactly what it is, Ken. Maybe it always was. Well, is someone going to tell me what's going on? I'm waiting. Nothing, Mr. Furman. It doesn't look like nothing to me when a young woman rushes out of the manager's office in tears. Norman! I've no idea. One minute we're chatting in a friendly fashion. About? Raquel and myself, as it happens. She was asking whether we're going to get back together again. And then out of the blue, she turns on the waterworks. I find that hard to believe. That's what happened. If you don't believe me, ask her. Miss Malone. I'd rather not say. Please don't make me. Eric, nothing happened. I never laid a finger on her, I swear. She's off the trolley. Look, once Betty Williams made a stand, King Dick wouldn't change her mind. Yeah, but listen, she might come back. She won't. Well, say she does. Be nice to her. Oh, like she went nice to me when she told me I get stuck. Yeah, but only because she went down your big useless gov on her. Because she thinks she's the one who's running this flaming place. Oh, forget it. Why is everything always my fault, eh? Mm. Yeah, listen, you two finish off here, eh, love. I'm going for a lie down. <laughs> Never a dull moment, eh? No, oh, but they're nuts about each other underneath. Oh, yeah, a long way underneath. But there is something between them, though, isn't there? Some of me and that low life I married never had. Yeah, I heard he used to beat you up a bit. Oh, and the rest. I'd never let a man do that to me. Hey, it's not that easy to break away when you've got a kid and no brass. I did it in the end, though. Mm, happier for it, I bet. Oh, yeah. Happier than when I was being thumped black and blue, yeah? And Jack and Vera have been great to me. And I love our Jamie to bits. But I could wish I hadn't got myself up spout again. That I'd got a home of my own, decent fella of my own. That I'd made a few different choices along the way. Yeah, I know the feeling. You? If ever there was a girl who got her life sorted, it were you. No one's that in control, Trish. Apart from Raquel Watts, she was a nobody we now. Now she's got a brilliant career, fabulous place. And left a heartbroken husband behind. Peace offering. Talk about Jekyll and Hyde. I know. You do realise your little act earlier on. I'd, uh, Eric convinced that I was going to ravish you at the least. You're right, I did let him think the worst. And it's unfair and rotten of me, but it's only because I care about you so much. Well, some way of showing it, trying to get me the sack. I never wanted that, but you really hurt me and I wanted to hurt you back. Rather hurt you. I never led you on for one minute thinking that there was anything between us. I know that now. It was all in my head, but when Raquel left, I thought there might be a space for me. I was obviously wrong. Yes. Oh, I couldn't bear for you to hate me. 
Ah, and I don't hate you. It's just... I don't understand you. Oh, don't start that. What if Eric comes in here? Here. I just want you to know I'm dead ashamed of myself. I want to buy you a drink tonight to try and make up a meal if you're free. Uh, actually, I'm not, no. Well, I can at least give you a lift in tomorrow. I see you've still not replaced your car. No, I'm leaving that till spring. Let me pick you up at quarter past eight. Curly, thanks for being so sweet. I wouldn't have blamed you if you'd wanted to hit me. Right, she'll do it. But, but, I've got to make it quite clear She's doing it for your sake and not for you know who. Oh, Billy, you're a little star. <laughs> Listen, what are you having to drink? It's on ours. Well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. <laughs> Duckworth. I'll have a double brandy. <laughs> hey, but just one thing. Don't say out to his lordship. I want him to suffer a bit longer. And I'm all in favour of that. <laughs> right, so what you're saying is you won't. No, not won't. Can't. I can't betray a professional confidence, I'm sweetheart. I'm asking you to. I'll speak to her. Oh, come on now, you're splitting hairs. Oh, right, so one of my friends is is getting involved with a very dangerous man and I can't tell her. Not if it makes him back off, no. I want this joker where I can keep an eye on him. Right, so uh, I keep my mouth shut so that you can further your career. Nothing will happen to Liz. I have told you he's obsessed. Yes, but it's not mutual, is it? They're hardly an item. <sighs> She's aware of his past. Not all of it. So what, she keeps turning him down and he decides to break her legs, or at least get one of his pals to anyway? Yeah, but maybe, on the other hand, she won't turn him down. He has got quite a way with the ladies. Oh, that would be worse. Is that a prospect? Come on, you know better than I do. Well, yeah. I suppose he could be attracted to her in a weird sort of way. Go grab it to a snag or something. Alan, please, come on. Just at least let me tell her that he's married. Fee, look, you are a fabulous girl, and I adore you. But in my job, there's inevitably going to be times when I need to trust you to keep your mouth shut. Right, well, if you can't handle that, then as much as I hate it, I think we should quit right now. I just don't understand her. I mean, one minute she's nice as pie, the next minute, poison. I'd plump the poison version myself. Yeah, I think she's genuine, though. I mean, she knows that she's uh, behaved badly. And you want to give her the benefit of the doubt, right? I still have to work with her. Do you want my advice? Yeah. Don't trust her an inch. Yeah, you're right. I'll tell you what. I'll get us a takeaway, crack open a bottle of wine, and we'll talk about something really interesting, like City's chances of promotion. I'd love to, but I'm going out. It'll be him now, probably. Hiya. For me? Oh, this is beginning to get a bit of a bit. That criticism? I mean, uh, I'd hate to be politically incorrect. I'm not that bullshit. You are that bullshit. I never know when to duck. Keeps you interested, though, doesn't it? Be a love, Curly, and stick these in some water for me. Will do. Hello. All right. Going somewhere special? Everywhere is special when I'm with Miss Failsworth. Oh, smarmy devil. Don't wait up. See ya. See ya. Bye. I did have a look at a couple of flats, but you wouldn't believe what they were asking. You'd leave Weatherfield? People do, Mavis. They break out in the dead of night, under the barbed wire, and they're gone. No, but I, I thought you and Ken, well... There is no me and Ken. Oh. Uh, I, uh, I hey, listen, how's your Tracy coping? Oh. You know, married life. She's loving it, Vera. Oh. She's got him right where she wants him. Cooking, ironing, housework. <laughs> she makes him do his share. Well, they've got it taped, haven't they, young women, yeah. today? <laughs> Not like our generation. <laughs> oh, are you, Ken? Um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you. There's nothing more to say. I disagree. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. All right, but you're wasting your time. Oh, dear. I wonder what's gone wrong there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. something yeah. happens. Oh. Hey, oh, does your old man know you're out of the toot? Well, as he's probably surrounded by half a dozen nubile nurses, I shouldn't think he's very much bothered. And my mum's putting the kids to bed, so I have brought my new partner out for a drink. Oh. Right? Oh, we're uh, orange, orange juice, please. And a dry white wine. Dry white wine, coming up. Now, you mentioned some <coughs> changes. Uh, first item on the agenda, flowers. Flowers? 
uh, fresh ones. I've, I've no time for artificial. A little vase on each table, nothing elaborate, but uh, welcoming. It's madness for us to chuck it all away. Oh, yeah, just because five minutes after telling me you love me and asking me to move back in, I find you in bed with another woman. Oh, I've no defence. Except that you just walked out. You were pushing me too hard. Well, if I was, it was because it meant so much to me. Look, I, I thought I'd blown everything away for good, and then, well, Sue turned up and made me feel maybe I wasn't such a complete failure after all. Oh, poor old Sue. Does she know she was used as sexual therapy? Oh, talk like that won't help. Well, I didn't ask to come here. Oh, no, don't go. Don't go. Please. Poor old Posty will probably get himself a hernia shift in your fan mail on Friday. Valentine's Day. All oh, right, yeah. Did her pal say she was sending me one? Well, not exactly, but I'd have said it's on the cards. No pun intended. Only spotted you talking to her this morning. Lauren? Fiona? Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Though I wouldn't build your hopes up too high, mate. It's OK. Won't let on. Why don't you go play a dance show too? Okay. Yeah, good, mate. There you go. Oh, hey, thanks, Vera. Uh, is Trisha around? Uh, no, she's having an early night. You know, she's got back in. Oh, only I've dug out a few baby clothes for her if she wants some time. Oh, hey, but aren't you sure that you won't be needing them yourself? Quite Where sure. Oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> 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 My wife tells me I owe you an apology. Though she wasn't telling me anything I didn't know myself. I was out of order. You're the last person I should have had a go at. No one's been more loyal or hardworking. Yeah, well, you should have thought about that before you'd open your big mouth, shouldn't you? Shut up, Kevin. This is my argument, not yours. Well, the bottom line is, can you forgive and forget? Even if your old man there can't. He's been under a lot of strain lately. There's still no excuse, is it? Kevin. I know he has. We well, both have. So can I buy you a drink? Prove we're still friends? No. Thanks. I'll have a gin and tonic, thank you. Thanks, Sean. I had a lovely time. I made a profit. Can't be bad. <laughs> Three quid, yeah. I'll lie awake all night wondering how to spend that. Light's not on. Does that mean your flatmate's out? Probably in bed. He's not a late night bird. So, how about I come in for a nightcap? Or better still, we uh, go back to my place? Thanks, but no. I'm getting a bit tired of that word. Oh, I'm exhausted. We're just going round in circles here. Look, I can understand you wanting to punish me, but... This don't... isn't about you. It's about me. Yes, I was furious when it happened. But viewed from a couple of hundred miles away, I began to see that maybe she'd done me a favour. I mean, but for her, I could have moved my stuff in by now. Oh, would that be such a bad thing? No, not bad. Just wrong. I don't want to go backwards. I need to move on. We both do. Yeah, move on to what? A lonely old age? Oh, is that why you want me back? Save me from your worst nightmares. No, no, I just happen to believe that we could make it work this time round. I don't want to be a safe haven, Ken. I'm scared of the future, too, but that doesn't mean to say we've got to, to cling to the wreckage of the past. Which Christmas cracker did you get that little homily from? Yeah, well, I never was as bright as you, or as educated. Oh, go back to your headmistress. She's more your type, your intellectual equal, your age group. I don't want her. I want you. Well, you should have tried telling her that before you went to bed with her. Well, it's funny how you keep saying that's not relevant, yet we keep getting back to it. It's my hurt pride. Can't quite let go of it. But you're right, you're right. It isn't relevant. What is important is, I now know what I want from my life. And it's not me. I'm going. Oh. Before we do each other any more oh, no, damage. Look, please. Look, just give me one more chance. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll tuck up my job. I'll, we'll sell the house. Move down south. I'll move anywhere. Back near to Tracy. I can accept being kept at arm's length till a girl gets to know me, but how much longer does it take? give you a date when it feels right when it feels right okay I can live with that provided it's not in six months time or even free thank you had a lovely night
Oh, I'm sorry. Deirdre, isn't it? Could I uh, give you a lift anywhere? Two knockbacks in one night. You're slipping, chum. What are you looking out for? Nothing. Well, it seems you're in luck. Derek! Which way are you going in today? Um, Ashton way to start with. You're not going past the freezer centre by any chance, are you? Uh, stuck for a lift. Yeah, well, I had one organised, but I've been uh, let down. Yeah, OK. Jump in. Oh, you're a good man, get it. Will you shut that flaming door? It's like a knife in here. No, it's uh, Ashton, Altrincham, Sale today. And then uh, Hale, uh, Knutsford, Wilmslow, and, um, oh, uh, Macclesfield tomorrow. <laughs> you see the world in this job, you know. <laughs> now, let's get it a bit warm in here, shall we? This is where you need a garage, you know. Derek! Oh, <coughs> Derek, yes. I have you remembered that you've got the dentist? Today? Uh, yes, well, if you remember, at the time we said, oh, that'll be St Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh. Do you remember the time? Well, no, it just came back to me that it was today. I thought you might have forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> I had. Well, would, would you like me to go and get the appointment card? Oh, could you find it? Uh, yeah, I think it's in the kitchen near the gardening counter. Just fetch it. <laughs> it's just a check-up. <laughs> I expect you're in a bit of a rush, aren't you? Yes. I had a meeting with my boss five minutes ago. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Hello, you. Hiya. Done your own work? Sort of. Writing homework or just learning? Why do you want to know? No, I just want to see what your writing was like. Why? Oh, it's just because I'm well. Like this, is it? I think I'd send Valentine's. It's juvenile. Oh, yeah. Sorry to disappoint you. Shall I make a fresh pot? Not for me, love. I can't sit down doing nothing. I wish I could sometimes. <sighs> You got a Valentine's card, did you? Not who? Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm a licensee and so are you. She's got a fella at the licence fix, you know. Oh, keep guessing then, if that's what you think. I thinks I'm daft. Well, yeah. Mm. If he's not Bernie Rogers. Bernie Rogers? Could be Tommy Harper. He must be dying his hair for summit. I can do better than Tommy Harper. Any day and week. There you are. She's off to the ball. Here's me, Cinderella. That was the best Valentine you could have ever given her. What? Pretending you thought she had a fancy man, she's chuffed. Right, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll call next week. Sorry. Oh, Eric, I'm dreadfully sorry I'm late. I've had dread dreadful trouble getting here. You don't tell me the weather's bad, Norman. No, it's nothing to do with that. I'd lift organised and everything. At 8.30 meeting? There's a meeting at half past eight. I didn't explain it. Yes, I know that, you see. You could have phoned in. I tried, but I've been having these problems. We've all got problems. But it's now to do with the price of fish. This is. Now get on with it. And tell me why this Thursday's not going to be the same mess as last Thursday was. It says you are perfection. That's it. Well, it's enough. Who do you think it's from? It's not from Tony Blair, is it? Who else is going to be sending me a red rose, eh? Well, you never know. Mind you, you didn't get a poem, did you? Yeah. Roses are red, but a cups are yellow. Say the word, and I'm your fella. <laughs> it's not exactly classy, is it? Yeah, it's classy. For Ashley. Oh, he is sweet, though, isn't he? Yeah. If he was just older and very rich and kind of better looking, I might give him some serious consideration. Oh, come on, he is good looking. Uh-oh. Yeah, dead sophisticated. Hello, Fiona. Here. Mm, well, look, I, uh, I think you better know someone sent me a valentine this morning. It can't be you, cos you're mad at me, aren't you? So I wonder who it's from. Norman? Don't talk to me. Excuse down. me, sir. Oh, you broke down. Yeah, I had to call them out to me. Oh, I am sorry. It was something electrical and it just stopped on me right on the slip road. I was just stuck. I couldn't call you oh, or anything. Oh, you couldn't call me, eh? No, I was stuck. But you could call them out to you. Yeah, I had to walk back to an emergency phone. Do me a favour. Norman, I would have. I don't believe you, all right? I'm sorry you don't believe me because... Forget it! it. I don't want to forget it. I'm really upset that you would think that. Why would I lie? I had to drop my mum off at the motorway and it stopped on me coming back. Oh, you're going to drag your mother into this, then? I ought to believe you, then, shouldn't I? Why would I lie? To drop me in it with Eric. And to do that, you need an excuse. I don't know why you think that. Oh, don't you? No! Oh, you've been practically waging war on me. We fell out, that's all. Oh, and I was stupid enough to think you'd call a truce. That's why I wanted to give you a Yes, to drop me in it with Eric from a great height, so I go down and you go up, 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 up. Just, just go away. I wanted to give you a lift and I broke down. Yeah, maybe. Norman, please, you really hurt me when you do this. Will you leave me alone? You don't want me to leave you alone, not really. Yes, I do, because you're mad, bad and dangerous to know. You didn't just make that up. Somebody else said that. Yes, somebody said it. I thought so. It was just something somebody said about somebody else. Stick to talking about us. Us? Us? You're round a twist. Why are you so awful to me? Me? After what you've been saying about me, putting me down with Eric? I don't want to. You just keep seeing everything all wrong. I could do so much for you, Norman. I want to. You know what I could do for you? I could shake your stupid little brains out. You're trying to do for me? You and women. Well, listen, I can be mad and bad, and I can be very, very dangerous to know. Is that what you want? A game, eh? That we both can play, eh? Is that what you want? Is that what you'd like? A little game that we both can play? That's enough! Mr. Watts? Is that enough for me? All right, Dan. I'll take it to the canteen. You finished here? And never mind working your notice. Because I'm not asking women to work with you. And I give you the benefit of the doubt. Pack your traps! Now! No, be honest. Tell me, what do you think? Well, it's a do, isn't it? Go on, knock a few eyes yeah, out. Yeah, well, it'll be a do, all right. You want to be dressed up like dogs' dinners. Hey, I've not seen this before. Where do you get it? Dr Beasley. You know, that has the agency. She does these parties, you know. It costs the earth. They're in a shop. Mm, well, you look a million dollars, Vera. Oh, you look like Diamond Lou, madam from Miami. <laughs> hey, I should have got one of them wonder bras. Yeah, that'd knock a few eyes out. <laughs> wonder bra don't make me smile, Vera. Hey, you. Oh, I mean, come on, you can lift and separate, but dragging up the tights, Annie, that's a different <laughs> job entirely, isn't it? Now, that's it. You're not going. Well, I wasn't going anyway, was I? Evening! What are you doing here? You said you weren't coming in. I like to surprise folk. Yeah, well, you needn't have bothered. Mm. Look, he's got to learn better. It's way he talks to people. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here better. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. I picked it up, like he said. Yeah, we can take it straight back. Oh. Because right. he's not going. Right, well, well, what is it? What is it? 
That is your tuxedo that I got from the ayer shop. But anyway, it's going back. Oh, V, V! It was supposed to be my valentine to you. I don't know why I bothered. V, um... <laughs> oh, sorry, Ashley, you're a bit late. We're just closing up. Oh, it's OK. I was just, uh, well, you know, wondering if everyone was going to be around after. Is anybody going to be around after, Maxie? Be around? What do you mean? Around where? Around anywhere in particular, Ash. Well, you know, it's Friday night. Oh, well, I'm going to be around because my fellas are working. But to be honest, I think uh, I think Maxie might be on a, a bit of a heavy date. Oh. Judging by the Valentine card she got this morning. Oh. We'll be in the Rovers earlier on if you want to buy us a drink. Well, yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. See you there, then. It's just what we'll See you there. Yeah. Yeah. Ciao. Since when did Ashley start speaking Italian? Language of love, didn't you know? Why are you leading him on? Because it's nice, isn't it? It's like having a big puppy around. Yeah, well, you find that they turn into big dogs before you know it. Well, I should have them well trained then. And when you say sit up and beg, they should sit up and beg. I really should report you to someone, Max. Oh, you put your eggs on my shelf. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing. You've had some bad news, haven't you? Well, it's been a while since I've had some good news. Well, if you're just feeling sorry for yourself, I'm not interested. Well, that's a pity. Because I'm going to be around this house quite a bit. Why are you? Because I've got no job. Oh, I've been given the sack. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, it is. Well, they're laying people off now, are they? No. I'm very sorry to hear it, Curly. Well, you might not be if you knew the reason why they'd sack me. Well, why wouldn't I be? Abusing my position in relation to the female members of the staff. Oh, that's terrible. She's not done that to you as well. She has. You've got to have it in for somebody before you do that to them. Indeed. If it's not true. And you think it might be? Of course I don't. Well, there's plenty that will. I've just about shot the lot, haven't I? My wife, my job, my good name. And I've took your house. Mm. Listen, no, sweetheart, I'm glad you're here. Because if I hadn't told you what she's been up to, then no one would know, would they? I bet you feel like you've walked through a trap door, eh? <sighs> Still falling. Come on, tell me the lot. <sighs> oh, here they are. Have a good time. Oh, come on, love. Oh. Hey, well, if you can't have a good time at the licence bit, you don't know how to have a good time. <laughs> well, I'm amazed they're letting them back into town hall after last year's do. Yeah, never mind that. The meat is running. Well, I hope you've ordered a pumpkin for the return journey, love, <laughs> because Cinders is going to the ball. <laughs> oh, enjoy yourselves. <laughs> how did she manage to get him suit? I mean, it fits him and everything, practically. Oh, she's been buying his clothes for years. What, all his clothes? I bet that fella's never bought a pair of underpants in his whole life. <laughs> Hi. Oh, this is an honour. Or if it isn't, it must be a check-up. We don't usually see the boss this early. Everything going all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. How long's that mirror been broken? Oh, yeah, that with the fella who came in on rollerblades. <laughs> Let's get shut of it, eh? Doesn't look good, and it's bad luck. Yeah, I think he was trying to skate round his own reflection, which is pushing your luck a bit on licensed premises. Everything OK? Hmm? Oh, I'm expecting some people. Business. All right, I'll keep your table free, then. Yeah. And uh, make sure everybody's got a smile on their face, would you? <laughs> Something like that. Right. <laughs> Serious business, is it? Who's in the kitchen tonight? Eddie? No, no, he's swapped with Carlo. Then remind me that a club sandwich isn't supposed to look like it was put together with a five iron. OK, a bit of style. Right. There are certain things in life, Samantha, that once you've been accused of, well, that's it. You can't win. She knew that. She knew that I'd been accused before. She knew that Eric knew that I'd been accused before. She knew that... She had you. Even if I went to court, right, and I was found innocent, mm. you know what people will say? He's got off. Which is the same as saying, he's got away with it. Oh, he's done it before, you know, he's been accused before. Oh, has he? He's kept that quiet. You just can't fight it. Yes, you can. Hmm? 
How, Samantha? Tell me. I didn't say you could win. But if you don't fight, you've sure as hell lost. Believe me, I know that. Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Tarts and vicars. Uh, but just remember, please, folks, I don't want any of you plying your trade. No him singing and uh, none of the other stuff either. All right? You look surprised to see me. Do I? I'm sorry. I'm supposed to look welcoming. Part of the job. Find us a table. Oh, I'm sorry. I've only got the one table, but it's reserved for somebody else. We'll stay at the bar and enjoy your company. A small sherry and a half of lager, please. Small sherry, half a lager. Are you sure you should be working behind this bar? Oh, I'm only helping out. And I might as well keep moving, because I've got to the stage where there's no comfort stopping. You know how it is. You call him to say the boss wants you to work late. Does he say, A, no probs, I'll do casserole. Or B, that's OK, I'm working late anyway. Or C, you'd better choose. It's me or the job. Ooh, um, Casserole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'll be two pounds. Betty, yes, can you take for half a lager and a, a small sherry? Yes, sorry. I think I'd better go and have a sit down. Right, right. right. Are you all right? Thanks, uh, right, right, so. Thank you very much. I think you're a bit late today, Miss Elka. Are you coming here? Ah! Well met by moonlight, fair Tatiana. <laughs> Don't go all poetic on me. I'm the lady that sells Valentine's, remember? I'm up to you with it. No, oh, go on, what you want then? I've no soul, have I? I'll have a vodka tonic. <laughs> a vodka tonic, please, when you're ready, Betty. I wonder if Rita's looking for a lodger. She never has done. I think she rather likes individual portions. Oh, I'm not serious. It's time I started getting serious, though. So this means you and Ken... I, uh... I think we both sobered up, Emily. It's not on. Oh! I was thinking about asking Alma about the flat over the cafe. You don't know? Young Roy Cropper's bought her out. He's going to be living there. He's... Roy? So, I uh, hope you weren't sort of banking on it. You're loyal, trusting, faithful and considerate and easily put upon. You'll be everyone's first pick in reserves. Get some fire in your belly and stop being so gullible. What's gullible? <laughs> My mum says, can you come? Oh, hey. Just come on, she says she thinks she's yeah, starting. Yeah. Betty, love, when, you, when you've got a minute. Just a minute. Alec, you've got a job, love. Come behind the bar, will you, and run this shit. Oh, sorry, Betty. I realise you're busy, but things have been said, you know, and after all, it's just Friday night. <laughs> all right, then I'll run the bar. You go in there and help the woman have the baby. Oh. Go and see Trisha. All right. You, you've just hired a barman. Right. Uh, plenty of hot water. Loads oh, and loads. Right. That's my contribution. Is it, she's not, is she? Well, it's weeks before her time. <laughs> Am I neglecting you? See you busy. Oh, well, you should see it later. Gets mad in here on a Friday night. Hey, what just said with you on the kids over there? Uh, are you saying I look like a tart? Not the greatest chat up line. Myself, I'm out of practice, as you know. <laughs> I'll forgive you. So, maybe we could find some slightly more sophisticated company when you finish. Well, I'm usually pretty whacked when I'm finished here. Maybe another time. Yeah. Mr. Henderson, I didn't realise you were here. Please, why don't you tell me? I never got around to mentioning it. We were just taking a drink, watching the world. Well, uh, let's sit down anyway. Sure. Do you know what I could do with something to eat? What's your kitchen like? I'll get you a menu. I'll see you later. Don't forget, remind Carla. All right. 
Now's oh, it now, love? Oh, oh, I don't know. It's not like it was last time. Do you think you are starting? Honest, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh I do. Oh, I do know. Well, who should we call? Well, if it is, it's going to be ours yet, isn't it? And it's probably not, so... Uh... Do you want a doctor? Oh, no, no, a cab oh. more like. We don't want a doctor, do we? We want a midwife. They know what they're doing. Well, look, I'll call anybody, love. Oh, it, it, I've got plenty of time, but I'm still... I think I'd better get a few things ready for the hospital. Right. Bring us a bottle of champagne, would you? The decent stuff? I thought we only had the decent stuff. I'll tell you what, I'll bring you the decent, decent stuff. Can you bring yourself a glass? Oh, uh, thanks very much, but No, I'm no, really... no. You'll have to. You can drink to your new boss. Mr. Henderson buying the place off him. <laughs> oh, no, not in the cab. Oh, not in the cab. Oh, get out. Get out. Oh, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Well, there was no need for you to come home. You can go back if you like. No, come no, home. it's all right. I filled my boots any road here. Oh, you're starting again. Just no, like no, no, you're not going to start throwing up, are you? Will I put the brush round? No, no, no. Leave all that for Joyce. Oh. Oh. Hey, we weren't expecting you back yet. What's going on? Where's Betsy? Oh, she's gone to the hospital. She's always been a bit funny where selfish are concerned, you know. I knew maybe she was getting a bit overexcited. <laughs> hospital? Flaming Nora turned my back with five minutes and he's behind my bar oh. Yes, and get very little thanks for it. Shut up, you. Look, Betty's gone to hospital. No, Betty? No, no, not Betty. Betty has gone to hospital with Trisha and the baby. By God, you know how to break news, Billy. Baby? <laughs> yes, she come on all of a sudden. Yeah, very soon. Uh, yes, I mean, the ambulance didn't get here in time, you see. Uh, uh, apparently it was so quick in the end that he... Well, he was so sharp about it. Uh, yes, Bet Betty did all the lying in. And I, little you Jamie, know. He, he was champion. Scotland about here, there. He knew where everything was about the house. So she's uh, had it. There are your grandmother. <laughs> hey! <laughs> is, it, is it all right? Well, it's a bit premature. Ah, yeah, they, well, they were in a bit of hurry to get it into an incubator. Like yeah. It. <laughs> uh, but she's all right. Uh, yes, yes. <sighs> Oh, well, 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 we'd better get there, then. I suppose that's no, it's gone No, now. you can't be going down to hospital this time of the night. They'll all be in bed, won't they? Yeah. Right, now, first thing tomorrow, first thing tomorrow, love, we'll, we'll go out. Alec, thank, thank you very much. Right. Hey, did you say he? Aye, aye, we're a little lad. Hey? I mean, it is a little lad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could give you a real hug. Won't be long, though, eh? Now, listen, I'll take you to see your mum this afternoon in hospital. I'd like to stay this morning, but we're going to be busy in probe, you know. Well, I can go on my own. No, you can't go all that way. Of course I can. There's no need for an argument. I'll take him in. Oh, I know who's going to be looking after it, Bob. I'll take him in, drop him off and come back here. Oh, well, as long as you think he'll be all right. Have you noticed some of the way that women always make things complicated? Come in, love. I do, don't hey, they? Is that uh, right? Trisha's had a baby. It is, love, in that very room, would you believe her? They didn't even have time to take her to hospital. Oh, are they both all right? Oh, come through. Trisha's all right. I mean, she's up and about already, but the baby's an incubator. I think it's because it's five weeks premature. Yeah, I thought it must be. Yeah, do you know, it's so tiny. Do you know, you could hold it in palm of your hand. But they're not saying it's in any danger, are they? Well, they don't have to do. You've only got to see its special treatment it's getting. I mean, it's got its fingers and toes and everything, you know. It's just, well, you can only see it, you know, through, through glass. Even its own mother can't pick it up. I mean, you're not telling me that's an healthy baby, or else why out for us? Poor Trisha. I tell you what, enough now, I pray, but I said a prayer last night. Not got you out of bed, have I? No, oh, no, no. And in answer to your next question, I am on my own, yes. I wasn't going to ask that. Though he is coming round for dinner tonight. Oh, sorry, he's supposed to be, I believe that when I see it. <laughs> Well, I've just come round to let you know the latest where Fraser's concerned. 
Hey, you'll not believe this. I can hardly believe it myself. Do you want coffee? Uh, no, no time. I've got to get back. Anyway, he turned up at the hourglass, which all right ain't altogether surprising because he knows I work there. So I'm thinking, what now? Anyway, what was surprising, it didn't really bother with me much. I mean, he said hello and stuff, but... Yeah? Turns out he's there to meet my boss, Mr Freeman, the guy who owns the place, or at least did own the place. Because what do you think? Fraser's bought it off him. No. Yeah? So now he's not only, whatever you want to call it, me admirer, he's also me boss. Is that why he bought it? Because you were there. You tell me. I didn't get a chance to ask him because there were loads of other people there, but first chance I get, I'm going to. Well, what if he says, um, it's a present, I bought it for you? <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. I'm not sure I can cope with having him as a boss, but if he says that... Yeah, little thing. Do you know, it's no bigger than a bag of sugar. Oh. There's nothing actually wrong with it, though, is there? Well, it's premature. That means it were born with where it should have been. Yeah, I know what it means. You see, men don't think about these possibilities, do they? They think they come out all nice and cuddly and healthy. Yeah, well, our chat might know, because we've been talking Jamie. Well? Well, what? Well, how is he? Hey, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I've just took Jamie off, pointing him in the right direction. Anyway, you'll find out soon enough for yourself, won't you? You know, he's rubbish. <laughs> in fact, it's worse than rubbish, because... Normally, I hope that's rubbish. You can chuck it away. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya, Judy. Uh, can I have a pint, please? Yeah, sure. Hi, Curly. Hiya. Can I get you one? That's very kind of you, can. Yes, I'll have a pint. So, two pints, then? So, how's life treating you? Terrible. You don't want to know. Oh, not if you don't want to tell me. I've been stabbed in the back, I've been betrayed, I've been let down, and I've been finally dispensed with. But apart from all that, well, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, right. walking today, then? Well, we sure were. Uh, not yet, Tara. I've uh, got some work to do first. But I've uh, picked up another one of them sponsor forms. For the jump? Yeah. Thank you very much. Good for you. I've got to get a move on there. I've hardly got anybody so far. Well, uh, I don't want to be in competition, but um, can I leave this on the bar over lunchtime? Of course you can, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll, uh, I'll just get the ball rolling. Excuse me, gents. What would you rather do, jump out of an aeroplane or sponsor somebody else to jump out of an aeroplane? Sponsor somebody else to jump out of an aeroplane. Definitely. Well, now's your chance. Well, can I go in? No, he's tired. Let him rest. <sighs> he's gonna die, isn't he? What? No, he isn't. What a thing to say. Jamie, you mustn't even think that. Well, I'm not the only one who's thinking it. They all are. Oh, Lou. Well, what are you on about? I'm Vera and that. They're telling you that your baby brother's going to die? No. Well, they've been, like, saying things when they think I can't hear them. Well, you must have heard wrong. He's been born early, that's all. And he's little. A few days in there and... It'd be like any other baby. And how long is it going to be before they bring the baby up? I don't know. But it sounds of it, it's going to need a lot of looking after when they do. 85, sir. Right, oh, Vera. Well. Yes, love. If you want any help when you get Trisha's baby home, just give us a shout. Oh, that's nice, see <laughs> you. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you for an increase in me hours anyway, so it's come at a good time. Beg your pardon? Do you mean you want pain? Well, of course I will. Yeah. And here's me thinking you were offering out. Good to see you out. Well, we managed very well, thank you, without your help. Well, it can't be a bed of roses now, Ken, can it, being a teacher? But at the very, very least, you know you can't get sacked on the spot because someone, well, shall we say, someone's got it in for you. Because it's... I don't believe this. Am I seeing things? What the hell are you doing here? I've come looking for you. I think we need to talk. Need to talk? about what happened at work. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think we should exchange another word for as long as we live. Look, uh, I'll get out of your way. You've obviously got things to discuss. Come on, Norman, don't be like that. And how should I be? Oh, hello, Anne. How are you? Have a drink. After you got me the sack. After you making out that I'm some kind of... some kind of pervert. I didn't do that on purpose. Maybe not. But you didn't exactly go out your way to put things right now, did you? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing now. That's why I've come looking for you. Providing. Providing what? What? 
what? Providing what? What's the condition? Because there's bound to be one, so what is it? That I move back into your little house? That your mum and dad come round every Sunday? Forget it. I don't want to know. And you... You stay away from me. All right? Can I get you something? I suppose you're pleased with that, are you? Me? Yeah, at what you've done to him. I don't think I don't know why he's changed. Since you batted your eyelashes at him and seduced him back into that house. You're getting better at this, you know. What? Turning up when you say you will. You've got a 50% success rate so far this month. Well, <laughs> uh, don't worry, that won't last. Mm. Do you want to uh, shove that to my call? Yes. Lunch will be ready in about an hour, OK? OK. Oh, I'll tell you a call round this morning. You know uh, Liz McDonald, uh, that, that fellow in strange ways? Fraser Anderson. Mm, yes. Well, apparently, now, this is what she came round to tell me. He's only gone and bought the hourglass. You know the hourglass, don't you? No, not unless it's that wine bar where I bought you a bottle of champagne and told you how much I fancied you. Oh! Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot it was there. Yes, I know the hourglass. Right, well, that's where Liz works, yeah? Well, apparently this guy just comes along, straight out of prison, and he buys it. Fraser Henderson. Mm -hmm. So now she's wondering why. What's he playing at? Hi. Hello. I gather Sunday isn't our busiest day. No, we're usually very quiet as a rule. Well, never mind. Gives you the chance to ask me why I bought this place. You're wondering, is it because you work here or could there be another reason? You see, I can read your mind. Then you won't upon me, cos I certainly can't read yours. Now you've got nothing to worry about. I bought this place as a business proposition. Well, business and convenience. I've been out of action for some time, as you know, and now that I'm back, I need somewhere, somewhere that's mine. It's where I can entertain and uh, conduct business. Thank you for leading me to the ideal place. I didn't do it on purpose. Well, even so, I'm grateful. And I won't be interfering. You're still the manager. I'm just the owner. Most of the time, you won't even know I'm around. Excuse me. Hello, the hourglass? Hi, Liz, it's, it's Fiona. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Look, um, I've got Alan here, and I was telling him what you were telling me this morning. Yeah? And he, he says, would it be possible for you to come round and uh, have a word with him about it? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, also, just hang on, hang on a sec. You want her to come here? Yeah, well, she's hardly going to want me to go around there, is she? Um, also, would it be possible for you to come round here? He says you might prefer that to him coming round to you. Uh, I would prefer that, actually, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll bob round after I've shut up here. Sometime after three, would that be all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye. Right, um, that's all fine. I'd better rush this meal lunch. As soon as you like for me. I've suddenly got an appetite. Go on, I'll put myself down for a couple of quid. Have you got a pen? Yep, there we go. Yeah. What happens if you don't manage to land in one piece? Do I still have to pay up? No, but you have to contribute to the reef. Ah, uh, yeah, all right. Well, it would cheap enough, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, then, done, lad. Uh, parachute jumping. Oh, you're doing some, are you? I'm my ankle slag. <laughs> I'm not that daft. <laughs> are you still doing food? <coughs> yeah, just. Oh, because you see, we've been decorating. We forgot the time, didn't oh, we? Oh, decorating where? A flat over the shop. Bill's moving in. Uh -huh. I'm very choosy about my colours. Affects my mood, you know. What's he talking about? <laughs> we just bought what was on special offer, never mind the colours. <laughs> so, what are we having then? Uh, here you are. Hello, I wasn't expecting you back till tonight. Oh, I'd had enough. In fact, I've had enough of conferences altogether. I'm going to start making excuses and sending someone else in my place. Right, well, um, do you want me to get you a drink or should we move next door? It's up to you. 
Uh, <clears throat> move next door, I think. Right. At least there we can be guaranteed a bit of privacy. Oh, you mean Deirdre isn't due for a visit? Don't remind me. Thought I might go and have a look at Trisha and her baby later. Would you like to come in? No. I wouldn't know what to say to her. Well, you don't have to say all that stuff like, isn't he lovely? I think he has a look no, at you. No, I mean, until we know how it's going to turn out. I'm pathetic, I know him. No, you're not. It's different for me. I'm not planning on having any. I'm a delicate child, you know. Your mother always said that never expected me to see my first birthday. M -m Mind you, I mean, the technology today is a different world, isn't it? So how are you feeling yourself, love? Oh, I'm tired. But that's not, is it? I just want to get him home. Yeah, of course you do, love. So, what are we going to call it? Rover, because we're born at the Rovers. <laughs> hey, yo. Joke. Yo, we can do without jokes like that. No, I haven't thought of any names. I suppose that's with him coming early and that. Well, there's no rush, love, is there? Let's just wait and see, yeah? You know, if... Well, the, what she means, love, is, is take your time. Because no matter what name you stick on him, he's, he's going to have it for the rest of his life, isn't he? So you've not been home yet? No. No, I wanted to... I didn't want to come home to an empty house. I wanted to come home to somebody. Yeah, I know the feeling. So I came straight here. I hope you don't mind. No, no, of course not. No regrets, then? No. You? No. I was thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if we walked into tomorrow's assembly holding hands? Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd say, good morning, everybody. Doesn't Mr Barlow look gorgeous? Then I'd give you a kiss and announce the first hymn. Well, that would be the end of the world as we know it. Oh, the honours boards would fall off the walls, the trophy cabinet would shatter into a thousand pieces. The whole school would self-destruct. Yes, I think it would be wiser if we... Um... Yes, kept this our little secret? Yeah. I think it would. So, we're getting back here, we're going to stand here supping all afternoon. We'll get back, he's a terrible slave driver, you know. She loves it, really. Oh. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See ya. Uh, we put me another pint in there, love. Right. Oh, just a minute. Any news? No, no, not fresh. No, I've just brought Jamie home, left her a bit of a uh, little bit of company for Trish, you know. Is there any restrictions on visiting? I just thought I might go down. No, not as an old. No, no, you were down. Delighted to see you. I'm going for the both of us. Thanks. So, you will be back. Two pints, please. I had, I had a proper look at that sponsor form you left. Oh, yeah. And I thought Des might like to. I think he might, yeah. You're going to do this parachute jump, then? Me? Yeah, I said I were. Only after I made it impossible for you not to. Yes, you did, didn't you? Which is why I've been repaying the compliment. Yeah. Name of jumper, Desmond Barnes. Oh, no. And you've managed to uh, collect a few uh, sponsors as well. You're joking, mate. You're not getting me up there. What about all these people? What are they going to say when you back out? They can say what they like. I tell you what, you jump twice. Once for yourself, then once for me. Oh, I don't think the rules allow that, do they? No. <laughs> See, man, it was born five weeks sooner than you thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, you know, that makes me wonder. What? Well, she hadn't given them wrong dates in the first place. Oh, what, made a mistake, like? No, no, on purpose. So that she could make out it was your Terry's, when in fact, she was five weeks up the spout before she even met him. God, what's she want to do that for? Oh, come on, Jack, wake up. So that she could con you and your Vera into giving her board and lodgings. Very successful it's been and all, hasn't it? No, I mean, the, the, the doctors have said it was premature. Well, they've said that to you, They've come up to you and said... Oh, no, no, they haven't said no, it to me, no. no. No, but they told Trisha. Yeah, that's what she's told you. I'll put money on it. That kid isn't premature. What that kid is, is somebody else's. Are you going to be here for a while? You know, I did a course on accountancy when I was inside. I thought it might come in useful. What is it doing? Well, maybe I wasn't in long enough. I think I'm going to have to go back and do part two. Yeah, I'm going to be a little kingdom come. 
I just wondered if it'd be all right if I could slip out for half an hour. I just promised I'd call in on a friend on Coronation Street. Oh, that rang up earlier. Yeah, sure, go on. Hey, no, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a lift. Oh, there's no need. It's not that far. No, I'll need a break. Anyway, didn't you used to live there? Yeah. Well, I'd like to see it. You'd be disappointed. <laughs> No, honest, Fraser, I'd rather walk, thanks. I want some fresh air. Then we'll have the windows open. But no, I'm driving you. It's decided. Oh, it's nice of you to come, love. Isn't it? Yeah. Judy was going to come, but she had to get home. Said she'll come another day, though. Well, she needs a bit of company. I mean, the long days, you know, and just watching and waiting. I don't think he's going to make it, do they? Of course they do. What are you saying things like that for? Why shouldn't I? It's what you've all been saying. Of course they haven't. Nobody said I don't like that, have they? No, not that I've heard. It's no use lying. Our Jamie's heard you. Well, it's never heard me. I've never said such a thing. What do the doctors say, Trish? Oh, they lie to me and all. Oh. Why would they do that? Because... Because they're like you. They think I'm feeble-minded. But if they told me the truth, I'd, I'd go and throw myself out of the nearest window. Which I probably would have done years ago if it hadn't been for Aunt Jamie. Look, this is a load of rubbish, this. I don't know where you're getting it from. Look, do you want me to call somebody? No. But I'll tell you what's not rubbish, shall I? What? When I said I hadn't thought of a name for him, and you said, oh, there's no need. We know why there's no need, don't we? I didn't say there's no need. Did I? Tell her. Oh, well, you weren't there, were you? Because he's not going to live long enough. No. Come on, Trisha, getting yourself into a state. Tell me he's going to be all right, then. Look me in the eye and tell me. You can't, can you? I, I can't, no. I mean, nobody can. And I do want him. I do. Oh. We know. Of course you do. If, if only God let him live, I'll, I'll look after him. I'll do anything for him. <laughs> Which one was it? Number 11. Not exactly palatial, are they? Number what, four of you living in there? Yeah. Must have taken it in turns to breathe out. Your husband's still there. How did you know that? I told you. I can read your mind. I didn't think you'd believe me at the time. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for the lift. Shall I see you back at the hourglass? What do you take me for? I brought you here. I'm not going to abandon you in the middle of this vicious maze of cobbled streets. Oh, vicious maze? Hey, I'm safer here than anywhere else on the planet. Which is not saying much. Now I've brought you here, I'll take you back. So, uh, I'll not say see you tomorrow. Even though you will. Because that's not us. That's Mrs. Jeffers and Mr. Barlow. Those two respectable, upright pillars of society. But then tomorrow night? I shall be coming around for dinner and we can be real people again. Goodbye, Mr. Barlow. Goodbye, Mrs. Jeffers. What, he's here now? Yeah, he insisted on driving me. I couldn't stop him. Hey, don't let him see you. He would. Did you ask him why I bought the hourglass? Yeah, he said it wasn't because of me, but because he needed somewhere as a centre for his business operations. Whatever they are. And you, uh, you believe that? I don't know what I believe. Right, you know when you uh, asked me what I knew about this guy before and I said white-collar crime, uh, nothing to worry about? Yeah. Well, when I said that, no, I'm, I'm being absolutely honest with you now. It's because I thought you'd never set eyes on him again. I thought once he was out in the, in the big wide world, that would be the end of it. But it's not. Well, hardly, no. Not if he's bought the place you work at. Sounds like you're going to be seeing quite a lot of him. I know. <sighs> so? What I said before wasn't the whole truth. Fraser Henderson is a dangerous man. Oh, wonderful. Not necessarily towards you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying think about Steve, your son. Yeah, no, Steve is. Who's still in the nick. Still, you know, vulnerable. So what can I do? Yeah. Just don't go out of your way to antagonise Fraser. And uh, 
keep me up to date about what's going on. Right. Well, I'll try. Right, I better go before he comes knocking on your door. Look, let him know if you have any problems. Yeah. That's one of I will. You can, uh, you can ring me any time. OK, I'll see you later. See you. What's going on? What? There's more to this, and I know there is. You were up to something. Come here, let's have a look at you. Oh, watch it, you flaming choke me. Oh! I Jam I got, on your face. I got your germs now, aren't I? Here, come here. Oh, what was your dinner money here? And we'll go to hospital tonight. You can see your, see your mum again. All right, love. And my brother. <sighs> yeah, and your brother. You know, I hope he doesn't say such a little squirt. I'll have to look out for him at school, get picked on. <laughs> see you, love. See ya. So that's some. Have Why did he have to come so early? It did. <sighs> what are you talking about? Terry didn't want to know Trisha when he was here. Well, he must have wanted to know at least once. Oh, you're convinced of that, are you? Well, you were. It were you that taught me round. Look, Jack, that's our Terry's kid in the hospital. Our grandchild. Why do you have to spoil it for me? You never believed her at first. Well, I do now. I'm only trying to protect you from being hurt later on when she produces a fellow that's been around before now, I tell And then again, if she convinces our Terry that the child's his, anything can happen, as we well know. Yeah, well, we're keeping this one, Jack. Well, that's the trouble when folk find out you got a bit of money tucked away. Still, I don't mind this one, it's not for charity. Oh, don't worry, Roy. You won't have to cough up. I'm not doing that parachute jump for anyone's money, and that's the safest bet you can take this week, mate. Roy? our partnership deal again. I can't help but dwell on some of the accusations people have made. Well, it, it, it was my idea. You, you didn't come to me. Mm, I know, but um, well, it is your life savings, isn't it? And it is the first time you've entered business. And, well, I mean, it, it all happened so quickly, didn't it, that we've hardly had time to discuss the ins and outs. No, no, I, I have been wondering how you felt. Well, I've been thinking that it might be better for the more experienced partner to have the majority share. You know, take all the responsibility for the major decisions. Oh, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> Less argument. Oh, right. Well, that's settled then. <laughs> that's what we'll do. If we can keep communicating like this, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Hey, Gail, there's no use me chasing him out of the arcade if you're going to let him play machines in here. Well, shouldn't you be at school anyway? Don't start! I've got things on my mind. We had a boy. Yeah, I heard. Weren't you going to have a kid once? I was. Still am. No, look, yes, sir. No, not yet. Here, let me give you some advice. If you do have a kid, don't have it in the Rovers. Leads to all kinds of complications. I'll, uh... Try my best. Can I get you coffee or something? No, yeah, you've got enough to do. Don't think I'm standing over you. I'm just enjoying the freedom. My own space. You seem to have got back on your feet pretty quickly. Well, that's the one good thing about being inside. You don't go through your money so fast. It's a terrific saving scheme. Steve's thinking about going into business with his dad when he comes out. Yeah, I remember he mentioned it. He still seems to be getting on all right inside. He does. See? I've not lost interest. Now, don't let me hold you up, Liz. You pretend I'm not here. It's just... Well, I'm not used to having the boss on site so much. Up to now, I've been paid to manage. Not enough. You'll see the difference in your next lot of wages. I had an increase a couple of months ago. Well, you don't want another one? No. I mean, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Look, if getting me a coffee will make you feel better, please. 
Listen, hey. I'll get these. No, no, I'll get them. Ali, let's give the old routine a miss. I'll get the first one in, then you'll be obliged to get the next. I won't be letting you off the hook. Fair enough. Oh. There he is. I'm going to get it over with. Uh, no, ma'am. Don't go humiliate yourself. Alec? Yes? I'd get you a drink, only, um... Yeah. Nothing much has changed there. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, in trying to sort out my finances, I seem to have got myself into uh, an even bigger mess. I was onto a good thing working for you. I made a terrible, terrible mistake. One that I'll never make again. I was just wondering. No. You haven't even heard what I was going to say yet. I know what you want me to say, Joyce. That all is forgiven. The Sunliners is knee deep in dust since you left. Well, all is not forgiven, Joyce. I kept me bargain, kept my mouth shut. It's thanks to me that you've any sort of job left at all. We hired another cleaner. Yes, very nice, trustworthy woman. How can you be sure? Well, that she's trustworthy or a woman. Good point. You seem to be blind to both. Making more friends, Alec? Yeah, can't help myself. Oh, Rita. Hello. I thought maybe this was on early lunch today. Ah, uh, no, we swapped. Oh. Listen, she's over there on her own and she's had her hair done. I'd take advantage if I were you. Oh, no. I'm here now. <laughs> May as well get myself a drink and I'll join you. May as well. Listen, Sean, jokes aside, Claire's gone mad about this parachute jump. It's just not on. Come off it. No, seriously. Her husband died under pretty tragic circumstances. Uh, I promise her I won't go through with it. I'll tell you, he's tragic. He was a pilot, but he died on the ground. She just doesn't want to take any chances of the reverse happening. Look, I've never jumped out of anything higher than a married woman's bedroom window. Save a adrenaline brush, they tell me. Yeah, that's right. Who wore it again? Rosie Webster. Back of my taxi. Hey, they pick the moments out there. Bit of kiddie born here. I mean, it's history. I just wish I hadn't have been out that night. Yeah, well, if Trisha's calculations had been a bit more accurate, I was only saying to Jack yesterday. You were, it... were you? So it's you that's been putting ideas into how Jack said about that baby not being Terry's? It's a lottery, Vera, you've got to admit. Yeah, and we've won it, so keep your trap shut, you, and keep your dirty thoughts to yourself. Vera, not with you? No, dinner time at the pub, love. So he still needs the incubator and whatnot, does he? How long for? I haven't asked. I'm scared they might stay forever. No. I was pregnant once before, you know. Not with Jamie, but with another one. I think I told you. Yeah. Timing were bad. Usually is with me. I ain't got the money, I ain't got the dad. Didn't have it, obviously. Best courage, wasn't it? You probably look at me and think, I'm the sort of girl who gets herself into trouble and gets herself out of it. Well, I know you do, don't I? Tell you the truth, it's what I thought I'd always do. I even rang up about it. Found I couldn't go through with it. No. I didn't get rid of it. It got rid of me. I lost it. Two weeks later. Somebody somewhere decided that I won't fit to be a mum. That that kid didn't deserve such a fate. Maybe they're, they're, they're thinking the same now. Oh, Trisha, I think you need somebody to talk to. You probably got it all wrong. <laughs> Just because you couldn't give a toss if you never saw your son again. Oh. Don't mean to say we all think the same no. about losing our kids. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why is he breathing for?
funny. It's only because he was born early. He'll be fine in a few days. Yes, I'll get him out. <laughs> Glad you come when you did, Martin, lad, because uh, between us, we find it very hard talking to medical staff. Yes. Uh, what do you think I am? We're well, a friend, a neighbour. Hmm. You see, Tricia has lost a baby before. She thinks that this one is in danger because of something she's done wrong. Oh, right. Well, he, he arrived early, didn't he? So she said. You can never be sure, can you? Of course you can, Jack. No. Oh. <laughs> well, do you not think he's a bit of a different colour? Mm -hmm. He's a bit pinker than I thought, sir, and he's a bit hairier. And I should imagine there was a lot more vernix at the time of arrival. Vernix? Vernix, yeah. It's like a gooey cold cream that all babies are covered in, you know, to protect the skin. And right, went... right. You painted the picture. Right. Yes. No, you see, it's down the girls into it. You didn't mm -hmm. come in and they see the... What's this here? Yeah, incubator. Incubator, the monitor, mm -hmm. and the wires. You went to a panic. Yeah, but I mean, after 36 weeks, it was nearly there, wasn't it? I mean, that extra month is just like the fattening up process. Mm. But yes, you're right. He is small. So what we're doing, we're taking extra care, you know, with infection and our temperature and stuff like that. So there's no need for Tricia to be beaten his own foot. In fact, uh, when was he born? Friday. Oh, right, Valentine's. Right, yeah. So you got Saturday, you got Sunday, you got Monday. Right. She's probably got the blues too. In a big way. Right, right. So, Jack, tell me, who was it that wasn't sure about the arithmetic? Uh, was it you, or was it uh, Trisha herself? Ah, uh, Douglas never make very good dads, Martin. Oh, they make very good granddads, though, from what I'm saying. Anyway, as I was saying, can we get a proper medical to have a word with Trisha and tell her and everything that you've told me? Right, yeah, see what I can do, Jack. Right. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I think sister's gone one better. You two just got it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Mummy's got it, You can hardly blame him. I told you so now. Well, I did. Oh, you're so smug. You and your three jobs between you. Oh, you don't do too badly by us. Oh, you didn't do too badly when you lived with me either. Yeah, and I've always been grateful. I always said. You never was. Men never are. You do all the cleaning, all the cooking. You wash all the stinking laundry. Above and beyond the call of duty what I did for that pittance Alec Gilroy paid me. He's forgotten that, though. So... I helped myself to a few pounds. It wasn't anywhere like what I was worth. Can I have my beer? You thieved it off him, ma'am. Not personally, I wouldn't do that. It was Sunliner's money. He was ripping them off. He was charging the cleaning of his flat to them. Yeah, you took you away to that posh hotel in the lakes. That was out of his own pocket. You can I have them crisps a bit nearer? I never asked him to. Oh, you took advantage, ma'am. You do it all the time. Do I? Yes, you do. And there's something else. It's about time Vera wasn't the only grandmother in this street. Oh, that is really relevant to the conversation. I'm going to work. Well, before you do, can I have a remote for telly? Ciao. Zimbabwe is one para has links with other special forces around Rob the good world. Good on. Training standards in a minute. are extremely high, oh. and the men have a passion for physical fitness. It's also well equipped with modern weapons. Where have you been all day? Me and Jamie's been waiting to go see Trisha. Got a little surprise for you. There you are. <laughs> hey, what's all this? I've been at you. Hiya, Vera. Yeah. Aww. Well, there's no wrong with me. <laughs> oh. uh, well, what about little one? And there's no wrong with him either. Oh. It's all right, Vera. Oh. He's still in hospital, but it's going to be all right. <laughs> I had hold of him today. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. So did I. You did? Yeah. They let Trisha on for a bit of a break, didn't they? Yeah, I, I might go back tonight. I'm not sure. See how I feel. Doctor suggested I get away from hospital for a bit. Spend some time with me other son. Aww. <laughs> hey. Hey. Here, you go help out front, love, will you? Hey. Just while I get Trisha settled. Right. Come here. Oh. Give us a love. Oh. <laughs> Have you got a mother? Somewhere, yeah. I wish mine would take herself off somewhere else sometimes. 
Jack, I'm taking a bottle of wine, putting the money in the till, all right? All right, we'll have a good night, will you? Yeah, I yeah, hope so. So did she invite you around for your tea? To cook that chicken for the two of you to eat together? She wasn't there. Oh, you haven't heard from her since? Not a phone call? A word of thanks, Sam? Nope. No. She'd be too busy at home cooking up a storm for some other bloke. Well, we seem to be on the same wavelength. Ooh. He's already said that uh, he'd already thought about me having a 16% share. I think you'll feel a lot happier knowing I'm in charge. Mm, much better for you this time around as well. Well, yeah, that too. Mm. Hey, yeah, Martin, my 254, please. Dang on a minute, Jack. We've not been invited to wet the baby's head. Ah, <laughs> no, we've not done that, have we? We'll, we'll do it properly when he gets a name. Well, what about Baby Armstrong? I've seen it written on his notes. Sounds good enough to me, Jack. <laughs> all right, all right, but don't go shouting about right, it. Right, OK. Right. Uh, baby Armstrong. Baby Armstrong. Yeah, I see. Are we having a oh. toast? Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> I know, Curly always seems to have a bottle of red put by somewhere. I might just have to break into that. You might have to. I barely got a drop out of that one. But if we're going out, I won't bother. We're not? Well, I didn't think we would, you see. Um, Curly's out, so I thought we might just stay in. Fine. OK. You seem to be in a good mood tonight. Do I? I'll uh, just come and sit by you, uh, I think. Do you want to be the man? Maxim, will you stop prodding it? If you're going to cook it, just cook it. Did Ashley leave any instructions with it? No. Hyatt, could you page Alan McKenna for me, please? Yeah, can you just say... Um, I'm sorry, I should have thought about this before I phoned, shouldn't I? Uh, just say, phone Fiona when you can. OK, thanks. Bye. God, sometimes I think those women know more about what's going on than I do. What women? All that take Alan's pager messages. I think so. You get to know that chicken awfully well, aren't you, Max? How can you tell why he's still got his bits inside it? Oh, no, it moved! It's alive! <laughs> Hello, Fiona Middleton. You rang? You may have all switched off a minute ago. Uh, what do you want? Can I talk? No, what about? Well, what do you like to do when you're not with me and you're not working? Cos I know before you met me, you used to go to the clubs and stuff. Look, can uh, can we do this later on? Look, I'll call round if I get done at, at, uh, done at a reasonable time, all right? Right. Chicken might be ready by then. What? Nothing. See you later. Thanks for coming. The wind is forcing you forward, but you push against it, gradually beginning to tip yourself over as gravity begins to take <laughs> over. <laughs> but you can't expect anybody to be there to catch you, because they won't be. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've never kissed me. Uh, well, I'm a coward that way. <laughs> Climb mountains, jump out of planes, yes. Uh, kissing girls. I don't know if I like the risks involved. There's nothing to be frightened of. I'll be here. Let me think about it. I've thought about it. Mm. Mm. <coughs> do you want to go upstairs? What? Do you want to go upstairs? No, I heard the question, but... Well, what's the matter? Well, well, nothing's the matter, but... Uh... Isn't that what you want? Was well, it what you want? I can't avoid it forever, can I? 
When did you plan this? <laughs> I didn't think there'd be so much discussion about it. Well, there isn't normally. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've been drinking a lot more than you usually do tonight. So? So? I see this type of carry-on in the pub every night of the week. Blokes buying girls extra drinks, doubles. It's all designed to make yourselves more appealing. Come close in. It's been known, I suppose. <laughs> but having a girl get herself tanked up in order to go through with it with you is about as insulting as you get. Why? What's the difference? The idea is for you to enjoy it too. Not to simply go along with it to make me happy. That's what's been going wrong for you all along. You've just written me off the same as, you, as your husband and all the other men you think are out to use you. No, I haven't. Sean, I didn't mean to. I thought we had a better understanding than that. We do. I mean, I mean we did. Look, I'll, I'll just... I'll make some coffee and I'll sober up a bit and we'll just have a talk, yeah? We've been doing that for weeks now. I didn't realise you haven't been listening. Don't go. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will. I'm sorry. So am I. I lay awake most of the night thinking about what you'd said, got myself into a complete state. I thought, I can't handle any of this. So I decided I was going to go into work this morning and tell Fraser I'd got a better job offer elsewhere. Have you? I had a better offer. It took me long enough to get this one. But even if I'd carried it off, he went and announced this morning that he's given me a pay rise. Congratulations. I feel trapped, like I can't make a move. But, maybe Steve could. How do you mean? Well, months ago, he said that his case might come up for review and then he'd get transferred to an open prison. Nothing's been mentioned since. You couldn't hurry the system along, could you? Get him out from under Fraser's influence. Me? No. <sighs> maybe if... If what? I don't want to make you any promises I can't keep. Not until I've spoken to my girlfriend. About Steve? About Fraser. And you. What can I do? We know he's planning something. Something major. Now he must be talking to someone. Must be having meetings. Probably at the hourglass. But you see, the trouble with Henderson is that he, he's too generous. He gives people pay rises and healthy perks. And he buys their loyalty, he buys their silence. So you're saying, if I heard something and told you, Steve would get moved? Everybody needs a confidant. Henderson seems very taken with you. Like I said, I can't make any guarantees, but uh, if we get a result... But how'd I go about it? Call me. We'd meet like we have tonight. Though, um, I wouldn't recommend Fiona's flat with the man himself sitting downstairs in the car. Yeah, well, I couldn't help that. He insisted. But, yeah, it was stupid. I was stupid. If I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to have to get smarter than that. And are you going to do this thing? If it's for my son, I don't think I've got much choice. Oh, oh aren't you ready yet? Oh, I've wanted to get my coat on. She's on pins. You'd think she'd never seen a baby. Oh, I'd be no different if it was our Jude's. Oh, still no news on that front. No. Well, maybe she's better off without. I'd not wish this past week on nobody. Oh, it'll all seem real once you get him home. I know it's real, Joyce. I was there when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, feels grand as that. Yeah, it's almost as good as that time I had a neck and shoulder massage from Raquel Watts because I, I pulled a muscle. Yeah. Yeah, did the trick though. Got rid of all my knots. Yeah, well, in here we get rid of knits, not knots. We can't guarantee that. I was just wondering, like, if you got the chicken okay? Yeah, I did, Tor. All right. Uh, I don't suppose you fancy it pictures tonight? Uh, you suppose right. You could fit me in at 5.30. You see, I've been decorating, you know, with Bill over the road and I've got my hair's all splattered with paint. Um, Would it have hurt you to add a night out with, lad? You see, I was wearing a scarf, but it keeps slipping uh, excuse off. Excuse me. It's all right when he's running errands, isn't it? Bringing your presents. 
But when it comes to a night of pictures, it's too much to ask. I don't see any of your flipping business, what I do. You're all the same, you hairdressers. Use men for what you can get and give nothing in return. Denise Osborne was just as bad. What's she got to do with the price of fish? Yeah, stringing fellas along was her speciality and all. What are you doing? I'm going to find a proper barber, which is what I should have done in the first place. Here, that'll cover shampoo. CVs. A total waste of time. I mean, half of them are lies. And say you had a brilliant one, right? If they don't like the look of you when they see you, well, you've had it. That is, of course, if they see you. I mean, half of them don't even bother to reply. I'm glad you're looking on the bright side. I'll get that. Could I come in? Who is it? I thought he'd be at work. He's lost his job. It's Sean for me. Yes? We can't leave things like this. What do you want? A goodbye kiss so you and your ego can go away feeling good about yourselves? Sorry I bothered you. That was short and sweet. Doesn't take long to say goodbye. I thought you two were getting on. Until he got fed up of being knocked back. Oh. But you still go out with him. Staying in with him, that's the problem. Do you know, I wish more women as honest as you were. If you just said, I'm sorry, I don't fancy her, it'd save us all a load of grief, wouldn't it? The problem is, I do fancy him. Just can't do much about it, and it's not just him. Uh, look, Sam, if this is a... A womany problem. I mean, I'm not very. Uh, oh, good. don't worry. It's not gynecological. But there is a problem. I only knew for sure when I got married. And you got what? Oh, I didn't make a big deal of it. I've had dates that lasted longer. Well, <clears throat> what happened? I'd only known him a few months. It took me just a few hours to realise I'd made a huge mistake. <sighs> that sounds familiar. I stuck it out for a couple of days and then I walked. It wasn't him. It wasn't his fault. He was a normal, average sort of guy. It's me that's not normal. I just couldn't stand him touching me. Sam, um, was he... You know, was he, um... The first? No, there'd been a couple of others. The first, because it wasn't cool to be a virgin. The second, because I thought, well, it couldn't be as a big disaster as the first. That was wrong. I kept saying to myself, well, maybe you're not cut out for one night stands, you know. Maybe it'd be different if you were in a proper relationship. I mean, I love all the cuddling and I love all that stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, am I embarrassing you? No. Well, a bit. But it's okay. Listen, now, does, uh, does Sean, does he know about this? Yeah, he's been remarkably understanding about it. Well, I thought you said uh, he was getting fed up with getting the knot back. More with the way I deal with it. The other night, I even tried to get myself drunk, thinking it'd help. Now, why did you do that? Well, I thought he deserved something for putting up with me. But he said he didn't want to have to go with a woman who had to get paralytic before she'd let him near her. I'm going to blame him, eh? Uh, instant facelift for minimal outlay. Mm, yeah, great. Uh, listen, Roy, uh, Gail tells me you've been discussing the uh, present partnership deal. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we thought we'd better crack on, get it sorted. Now, I know it's got nothing to do with me, but if Gail's going to go for a loan, it's best that the bank manager knows that her old fella's behind us, so... Uh, a loan for what? Me buying 20% of your share, Roy. You did say it was a good idea. I've no wish to be rude, but uh, I've no recollection of saying any such thing. I, hang on a minute. Uh, according to Gail, you've agreed it's best that the majority share be in the hands of the most experienced partner. Which, which, which is myself. You've never worked in a cafe till you came here. Uh, but, but, but I have been employed in catering most of my adult life. I mean, anyone versed in the ways of a four-star hotel kitchen could run this place with one hand tied behind the back. 
Unless, of course, he were frying chips, in which case, it might be rather dangerous. <laughs> Do you want coffee? Mm, well, I was hoping for something hot, but uh, it's not coffee. Yes, well, I've got a perm to rinse off in five minutes. I'll make it ten and we're in with a chance. Mm, make it tonight and I might think about it. Uh, well, that would be terrific, but unfortunately, I'm afraid I am working. Working, yes, and uh, they say policemen's lots not very happy, but they don't mention the girlfriends, do they? <laughs> so, uh, have you seen Liz again? Uh, not recently. All right, so you don't know where she's up to with this Fraser guy, then? Still uh, working for him, as far as I know. Is that it? What do you want from me, sweetheart? I told her the score like you asked me to. The rest's up to her. Look, if there's, uh, if there's nothing else on offer, I'll have that coffee. And then I better go, really. Liz, I've been meaning to ask you. That grand I sent you. I trust it came in useful. I didn't spend it. I thought you had a problem with your solicitor's bill. I made other arrangements. Did you honestly think I'd take money from a complete stranger? Hardly a stranger. Like I said at the time, a friend of your son's. But I didn't know you. Like I said to Jerry at the time, I didn't want it. But he said it would be more than his life's worth. Dead right. So where is it? In the building society till I could give it back to you. Fair enough. So you'll take it? On one condition. You let me give you something else in this place. Not cash. I can see now how that would offend you. You've just given me a pay rise, but I'll work to earn it. I don't want any presents. No, no, you can't throw two things back in my face. But I don't want... No buts. The grand or the gift. It's your choice. Only if it's something small. Very small. Trust me. Hi. Deidre, hi. Uh, yeah, I thought slumming it with the yuppies would make a nice change from beans on toast in Jim's calf. Now, judging by the welcome, you must be a regular. Hardly. But I am buying a glass of wine and a sandwich. No, you are not. It's on the house, as you're a friend of Liz's. That's very kind of you, Mr... Um... Henderson from the police. Call me Fraser. I've just bought the bar. So I hope we'll see you in here more often, Deirdre. Fraser? That's not... <laughs> Tasty. Don't suppose it's yours. <laughs> joking, aren't you? Look at running old banger, especially if my partner doesn't shape up. Oh, Torn not pulling his weight. He pulls his weight when he's here, which isn't very often nowadays. Oh, aye, aye. Recognise the face, remind me of the name. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, mate. Late? Should have been here at half eight this morning. It's now dinner time. Well, if you're going to have a rumble, I'll load your coat, so like a good rumble, me. <laughs> Look, I'll stay behind late tonight, OK. Only there was this uh, motor advertised, and I couldn't not go and see it at the price. Oh, I see where Carlisle. Hey, close, Lancaster. Well, the good news is I've managed to knock them down a couple of hundred and she's all mine. It's not quite in the same league as this little beauty, but I don't anticipate any problem pulling the babes. Great. <laughs> so that means we'll see even less of you than we do now, eh? I'll see you. Yeah. Boy! Hiya. Have you changed your mind about tonight? No, but there is something you can do for me. You can tell that creepy landlord of yours to get off me back. Hey? If there was a remote chance I might have gone out with you, you can forget it after the mouthful you just gave me. Why? What's he said? Just tell him to mind his own flaming business in future, right? What was all that about? Just warning the little plonker to keep Don Brennan away from me. Man's a psychopath. Well, I know he's a bit odd, but I won't go that far. Well, if you, uh, if you aren't seeing the little plonker tonight, how about me and you, Grandma, too? What about Alan? Is he working? He's working. Well, yeah. Yeah, we haven't had a girl's night out for ages. Where should we go? Yeah. Ah, oh, thanks, love. I hear your little grandson's doing nicely. Thank God. <laughs> Just wish... What? Go on. Well, none of my grandsons are a proper duck with, you know. You look right, tell me. He's more of an autumn these days. God knows what she's going to bring this one up as. I think Tricia knows which side her bread's buttered, Vera. Yeah, till she fancies pastures and you are another fella. But then where does that leave me in our jack, eh? Sending birthday cards and Christmas presents from a grandma and granddad barely know. At least you've got grandchildren, Vera. More than some of us have. 
Yeah. And this is a longer race. Yeah. Has he got the stamina? That's what I'm telling you. Look, he's in with better odds at three miles. What do you say to him? Say to him. Maxine. But, whoa, hang on. Hang on, cop. Hang on. Well, uh, I don't know. Matt said something about not liking the way she was treating you, but it will no. No, it's all not. You've put the mucks on any chance you had with her. I'll run my own love laugh, thanks very much, and don't need help from you. I hope this won't affect our working relationship. It was my fault, Roy. I misunderstood. I, I just want you to know that, to all intents and purposes, we are on an equal footing. Yeah. Uh, Alma never pulled rank, neither shall I. Fine, Roy. Let let's just forget it, eh? Oh, uh, can I help you? Oh, um, Broadway Bakery. Purveyor of cakes for all occasions. Well, we do have a regular supplier, Mr. Uh, Ramsey, but uh, oh, I'll have a look at your range. But why are you still there? Why didn't you walk out the minute he walked in? Good jobs are hard to find. I don't believe I'm hearing this. You were terrified of him, of the way he was controlling your life. Yeah, well, it's all right now. I can handle it. Oh, till when? They find you unconscious in the gutter. There's no need to be melodramatic. Liz, I couldn't exaggerate here if I tried. This is the man who had his tame thug break into your flat, who had Sean beaten up just for going out with you. Well, tell the police, Liz. They'll know what to do. Deirdre, I do appreciate your concern, but let me deal with it in my own way, OK? I'll be fine, truly. Has he threatened you? No. As a matter of fact, he's been very pleasant. You fancy him. Despite everything you know about him, you fancy him. Don't talk rubbish. What the hell do you take me for? One of them Sally passed on. I know it's daft being superstitious, but I didn't want to mend it, you know, in case. Hey. Little champ's fighting fit now. <laughs> Have you heard our Jamie's latest? No. All he wants to go and call him Eric. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it isn't Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, we're going to have to call him somehow, aren't we? We could hardly keep calling him Little and... I was thinking I might call him Terry. I want him to have some connection with his dad. What for? Not as though he's going to clap eyes on him, is it? Unless a CSA track him down. And I won't hold my breath waiting for that because they're not going to have scores of private eyes scouring the streets for that low life. It's my son's dad. He's my son. He's still a lowlife. Anyway, I wonder who would have called him Terry for, Terence. You know, I mean, 30 years ago, I. But names these days. Jordan, Damien, Liam. <laughs> hey, I bet you don't know most popular lad's name last year. No, go on. Jack. Jack, you know, never. <laughs> yeah, Jack. Mind you, I was a bit of a trendsetter, me. First, you know, I gang to wear winkle pickers. <laughs> I don't think your friend Deirdre approved of me. She hardly knows you. Knows of me, though. I think I might have said something. That's understandable, the way I was putting the pressure on. You go out of your brains in that dump. Still, give her time, she'll change her mind. Like you. What makes you think I am? Right, we'll just see if we can see Liz. Have a drink and then we'll get off, yeah? yeah. Hello, nice to see you. Girls' night, is it? Well, that depends on what talent you got round here, actually. We are not on the pool. Speak for yourself. More friends. Gets better and better. <laughs> uh, Maxine and Fiona, this is Mr. Henderson, my new boss. Call me Fraser. Fiona is in hair by Fiona. I was outside your place the other night, waiting for Liz. If you're also the Fiona that young Steve was always on about, I can quite see why. Oh, you know him? We met in the Nick. Been a bit of a bad lad in my time too, I'm afraid, but that's all in the past. You like champagne, Maxine? Yeah, well, I do. Don't often get the chance. Then this is your lucky night. <laughs> Oh, no, look, finding a job then, Chow. Well, put it this way, Vera, there's not a queue of headhunters at the door. Oh, what I can't fathom is, is why you left the old place. I mean, you were well in there. I left to pursue new challenges, Gary. Oh, well, well you did right, yeah. What new challenges? I felt a right Charlie. Well, don't blame me. I mean, you know what Roy's like, always waffling on. 
using half a dozen words where one will do. How can you get hold of the wrong end of the stick like that? He distinctly gave me the impression... Yeah, but he never actually said, Gail, I want you to be major shareholder, did he? And he took over with the patisserie man. <sighs> what? Alma always left ordering the cakes to me. <laughs> well, what's funny? Nothing. Not what I expected. And what was that? A cross between Al Capone and the Cray Twins? Yeah, well, it just makes him that little bit more dangerous, doesn't it? I don't see how. Come on, Liz. He turned the charm on and you're knocked right off guard. Says who? It's obvious. The way you are with him. Well, I have to put on some sort of act. If he gets the needle with me, he'll take it out on Steve. Steve can look after himself. I thought you were worried about him. Yeah, well, I'm a little bit more worried about you at the moment. Seeing how deep in you're getting, and I doubt even Steve would want you putting yourself in danger for his sake. I'm not in any danger. Liz, Alan has told you what he's capable of. He's keeping his eye on me. Why do I get the feeling that something's going on that you two aren't telling me about? What are you two gossiping about? Tell us. As if I need ask. Here, yeah, this one's dead, Liz. Get another bottle of bubbly for the girls, will you? I've got to make a quick call. Small delivery, I'm expecting. Well, you certainly fell on your feet having a boss like that, didn't you? <laughs> oh, no offence, boss. I thought Fiona might be in. No, hasn't graced us with her lovely presence this evening. Why, she stood you up, son? No, no, well, she wasn't expecting me or anything. I just got off earlier than I thought I would. Never mind, cos, uh, pint now, I'm here. Right, right. Hey, I've decided it's Brad. Oh. Short for Bradley? No, just Brad. But they don't call him Bradley Pitt, do they? And Terry for his middle name. Oh, well, that's a nice thought, isn't it, Jack? Aye. Uh, excuse me, um, may I buy you a drink, you know, to wet the new baby's head? Well, that's very nice of you, Curly. I'll have a large vodka, please. I thought you would have still been on the orange juice. Oh, fear, if I'd ever see an orange again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> you bet aren't you going to be here? Uh... Oh, no. Well, our Jamie came to know arm on a bottle, and Brad will not want his man with saggy boobs. Am I right? I mean, it's probably half the cause of juvenile crime, mams, who let themselves go. It's certainly a theory. <laughs> so that's it then. Finito. Seems to be the way she wants it. And you? I'd give it another shot. Well, me and Claire had to leap a few hurdles to get here. Well, hang on. I'm not saying I want to set up house with her, but... You just don't want to say ta-ta. No. Well, what are you waiting for, then? Go for it, mate. I know you're on your own this time. Miss Nibs is in the pub. I do have other friends. Here? Now? No. Last night, it wasn't you I was angry with. Me. I should have been able to handle it. Not many men would. Sex isn't everything. So you'd settle for a platonic relationship, would you? No, not permanently. But I'd settle for half a loaf meantime if the rest of it works. Does it? It does for me. What about you? Depends how you score on your parachute jump. Yes, I'd settle for that. But then I would, wouldn't I? Because it's on my terms, which are pretty weird, you must admit. As long as you know they're weird. I'm not happy being the way I am, you know. I want to be normal, loving, sexy like everyone else. It's this damn barrier. Maybe I should try counselling. Maybe you've just been with the wrong men. Sean. Well, blokes that won't stick around while you sort yourself out. I didn't mean I'm irresistible. You're not bad. Not bad? Well, that's a start. 
There's no guarantee I will sort myself out, you know. There's no guarantee you won't either. So, do we have another crack at it? Or do I go back and drown my sorrows with that other miserable beggar you share a roof with? Small enough for you? It's in good nick, I've had it checked out. The papers are in your name. I can't accept this. It's either this or take the thousand quid back. It's no big deal, Liz. Save me a fortune in cab fares when you work late. Thank you, kiss will do fine. Not compulsory. I don't know what to make of you. You're not a bit how I thought. Was that good or bad? Confusing. I've broken plenty of rules in my time. Told plenty of lies. But I'm not lying when I say that you are the sexiest woman that I've ever set eyes on. Sexy. Vulnerable. Great legs. A lot. Are you sending me up? Do I sound as if I am? Becky! You've forgotten the money. Why can't you get it? Because I'm busy and you're passing the chemist. I like it. Which one? Do you know, I can't remember what the box looks like. Well, I can either. You'll know it when you see it, though, won't you? Why can't you go back to your original colour? Just do it, Becky. Oh, and get me, uh, get me a couple of those sachet shampoo things. I'll see you at dinner. Oh, Kevin. Hi. Mr. Sugden thinks I need a new exhaust. I don't suppose you'd... Waddle, scrammy street. Do it cheaper and quicker. Yes, but according to Mr. Sugden, I might not need a full system. Well, we'll check it over for you. That's what he's afraid of, you see. That they'll charge me for the complete thing when all I need is... Look, buy a new car, Emily. Kevin! You can't, can you? Neither can I, because I've not got a rich dad who owns a carpet shop. A carpet shop? Yeah, it's Tony. He's messing us about a bit. He's gone off to pick up his new car today, and Kevin's been left on his own. Oh. Maxine, I can't read this. Did you write it with your feet? Hmm. Mrs. Gregson, 2.30. Thank you. Look, blame it on last night. What, all that champagne? Yeah, and Liz's boss. Oh, and don't say you fancy Fraser. Something about older men, isn't there? No, Max, with you, it's with any men, as long as they're wearing trousers. Uh, you I've got... got more taste than you think, actually. Curly Watts. Yeah, well, that was something else. Lack of taste, yeah, I know. You're a mug, Max. Thanks very much. Well, you don't want to go flashing your Google eyes at Fraser, because he might just take you seriously. Think he might? <laughs> you wouldn't want it, believe me. He must be all right if he's Liz's boss. <laughs> Is he dangerous? I like him dangerous. He couldn't cope. Well, he must be loaded, then. Mm. Morning. Hiya. I came looking for you last night, but uh, but you were missing. Mm. It, yes, <clears throat> living dangerously, according to her. Why don't you uh, go back to your customer? Do you want a coffee? Uh, no, I haven't got any time. Living dangerously, where? Oh, you don't know him. A dishy bloke called Fraser Henderson. Too old for you, though, any fee. Well, I think I will have that coffee after all. In private. Bright and early, that's what I like to see. Well, I've no excuse now, have I? I've got wheels. About last night. Any regrets? No. So what did the neighbours say? 
Think you won the lottery? A few twitching curtains. Hey, mostly mine. I kept going to the window to make sure it was still there. Well, it makes you independent and that makes me happy. Steve will be chuffed, I know he will. Oh, I'm not too sure. Let me tell him about it in my own time, eh? Whatever. Let's just keep the lad happy, eh? As happy as he can be in prison. Liz, you mean a lot to me. Your worries are my worries. Let's just look forward to his parole, OK? Yeah. He's got it as cushy as we can make it, so don't worry. Okay. Get your coat off and grab a cup of coffee. I'll have you take a bit more off, only I've got to slip out in a few minutes. <laughs> I do not want you going near Fraser Henderson. I'm telling you this for your own good. Uh, Alan, you don't do anything for my good. You're policeman first and your person second, except we never quite get to second, do we? I just want you out of harm's way. Harm? I thought Liz wasn't in any danger. She's not. But except for the danger she makes for herself. Oh, right, and what's that supposed to mean? Look, I'm telling you what I told Liz, right? Keep your nose clean, stay out of danger, know what you're up against, you'll be OK. Please, try and understand. It's, it's, it's complicated, it's confidential. Can I ask one more question, please, teacher? Did you see Henderson? Yeah. Does he know who you are? Yeah, Fiona. Liz told him. Is that against the law now as well? What does he know about me? Nothing. He disappointed. I'm relieved. Speaking as a copper, I, I think it might be best if, if you and I cooled things for a bit. But being more person than policeman, I, uh, I can't do that. You don't believe me, do you? I really don't know what to believe. Well, I love you. Do you believe that? Anyway, all this sounds like so much rubbish. I better go. Alan. Alan. Say that again. I love you. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm sorry. But no. Please, will you, you promise me you will try and bear? All I want to do is keep you safe. You're precious. No. Don't make it obvious. You know, the boss, the manageress. Gotcha. Sorry. No. Don't apologise, providing it's discreet. Yeah. It's the staff. I don't want them treating me any different. You get the treatment you deserve in this life, Liz. You get the best because you're a lady. Thank you. I mean it. I'll be back early evening. Take yourself off shopping. The boss might not like it. Oh, well, they can go. Yeah. Buy yourself something classy and expensive. Like I say, you get the treatment you deserve. Right, sweetheart, I had better say goodbye. Look, I'll give you a ring later on, all right? Okay. Take care. You are sex mad. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean... Uh, we need to talk. Just give me a time and a place. No, I don't think you can do that. Look, um, something's come up. Here, where are you going? If you want me here for the duration, I'll have to make some arrangements. Yeah, well, there you go, because I'm paying for it. Woman. It concerns someone close to your heart. No where and when. Just, uh, I would rather it was soon. You'd think nobody'd ever had a grandchild before. You haven't. You're not working this afternoon, are you? 
I'm doing this. So what's up with Vera? She wants the place sparkling for when her precious Brad comes out of hospital. Brad? What's the baby's name? She'd probably want me to whitewash the pigeon coop. Oh, well, what are you moaning about? It's extra money in your pocket, isn't it? I suppose so. Right. I want you to go round to my place and whip scamper out this afternoon. I can't get back. Right, of course I will. Uh, thanks. Who's that? Oh, it's probably Vera looking for me. Oh, you're back early. Yeah, of course. Put kettle on, Joyce. I oh, can't. Uh, about two-ish. He needs to cock his leg by then. Hey, and straighten your face, or she'll think you're jealous. Right. What is it you wanted to say to me? It's a bit of a public place, didn't you? How do you know you weren't followed? I can't handle all this cloak and dagger stuff. Look, I want out. Yeah, you heard me. <clears throat> Have you forgotten who we're doing this for? I'm not worried about Steve. He's OK where he is. <laughs> that sounds like your new boss talking. Is he starting to get to you, eh, Liz? Huh? Fraser the fraud? Tell a lie and prove it. What's he been saying to you? Nothing. All right, now rephrase that. What have you been saying to him? Hey, I'm not daft enough to talk about any of this. What about Fiona? What did she learn last night that she didn't know before? Like what I didn't tell her about my little arrangement. Is that what you mean? It's a lousy job, isn't it? Being a go-between. You know, if anyone's putting the screws on, it's my gaffer putting them on me. Yeah, well, you just tell your gaffer it's all over. I don't want Steve moving prisons, OK? I just want him to do his time where he is. Hey, 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 just a minute. His time. Hmm. It could be a long time, Liz. I mean, honestly, if it was up to me, I'd... Go on. Oh, uh, uh parole. You know, he might not get any. We could be talking full term. But, like I say, you know, it's not up to me. That's my gaffer. I could report this conversation, you know. What, to Fraser? To my solicitor. Oh, well, when you do, make sure you quote me correctly, won't you? I said Steve's parole might be affected, that he might do the full two years. You're trying to blackmail me, aren't you? These are just facts, Liz. There's the company he keeps in strange with us, for starters. Has he shown true remorse for his crime? When the parole board read the report, they might, uh, well, I just say I might think him unsuitable for early release. He said it was a lousy job you're doing. It takes a lousy person to do it and all. Well, you'll thank me when Steve's sleeping in his own bed. And I'll have cause to thank you as well. If uh, you and me can continue our little arrangement. And not that any of us can talk about this. You do understand that, don't you, Liz? Just uh, you and me. And my gaffer. Shopping. Who uses this? It's mine. Do you want to lift back to work? No, no, I've still got stuff to do. How did you get it? Well, it uh, sort of goes with the job. Your new job with your new boss? Oh, come on, Deirdre. Wouldn't you grab it if it were offered? Depends who was doing the offering and why. All I'm trying to do is keep him sweet until I Steve's out of prison. As soon as he's the other side of that gate... I asked you how you got it, Liz. Daft question, wasn't it? it? Used to be a golden rule for anyone in business. Never be rude to customers. Ooh, the other golden rule, of course, is never work for yourself. Causes stress. All right, Kev. So, so, pint on the steak and kidney vera, please. Right, no. You can use <coughs> half polish in here. Yeah, a bit. 
Oh, that Joyce Smedley. If it can get up your nose, it'll get babies and all, won't it? Well, I don't know. Very sensitive noses are, Kev. Quite a lot been getting up it lately. Right, Emily? I thank you for your advice, Kevin. I, I went to Wardle's and they can do it this afternoon. Well, I'm sorry about this morning. Well, if you've not better to do than stir it, you can come and give me a lift. Hey, yeah, I'll have one eight to three and I'll warm your time. Thanks, Vera. You and Tony busy then? Oh, no, Tony. He's going to pick his new motor up, hasn't he? Here's your change, love. Oh, thanks, Vera. Why? What's Emily been saying? Uh, only that you bit her head off this morning. If you're in here, who's minding the shop? Sally, sitting by the phone, ain't she? She pulls her weight, does that, Sally? Couldn't see Claire doing that for me. No, oh, she might. If you married her. Yeah, yeah, I'll answer <laughs> my own phone, thank you. Anyway, me and Claire like our own space too much. Oh, and what exactly is your space, Des? Dropping this bar up. Hey, come on, I've been home. Chased me out, didn't she? Mm. Trouble. Yeah, she's getting her hair tinted. Becky's doing it. Funny fair. Claire doesn't peek when I'm tinting mine. <laughs> Right, I've got Mrs Murphy at half past one. Can you do a for us? Because I want to get for my dinner. Isn't that Vinnie Murphy's mum, the footballer? Uh, I have no idea, Maxine. You have got to do something. Stay away, Becky! Go on, keep away from me! Oh, She's left it on too long. Look at it! Tonight. Ooh, Judy. It's too tight. I knew she hadn't taken it to cleaners. Come here. No, Gary. I just want you to pin it. I've got a stamp at the seat. Gary, Come no! Get yes. yeah, off the... No! Yes. The whole point of cleaning, Vera, is so that the place smells scented. Well, as long as it don't get on our Brad's chest, that's all. Babies are sturdier than you think. Not this baby. It's very delicate. Don't worry. The hospital won't discharge him till he's ready. Now, you've cleaned that light shade, haven't you, in his nursery? I see your face in it. Right. Three shades of glass. Did you know that? Of course I did, why? Nothing. I'm just telling you, it's not soot coloured like you might have thought. What are you trying to say, you were? Eh? Look, cleanliness is my middle name, mate. You've been converted, haven't you? Now, just... I'm telling you that I was just sold out, Gary and Judy. Just shut was... your trap, you. Hiya. Oh, hello, Tricia. How's the lad? Oh, uh, hang on. And grandmother here. Have they said when he can come home? No, but they're pleased with him. Oh. And he's taking more notice. Go on, move it, you. We've still got some fettling to do. Yes, of course I have. You never know. I might find four shades of glass if I scrub hard enough. Oh, she's a sick cow. Trouble? She's jealous, that's all. Anyway, come on, tell us about the little and. Oh, Vera, well, he's just so beautiful. <laughs> Did he get a turn up? What do you think? It's a car. You've seen one car, you've seen them all. Now get your overalls on. I've only brought in to show you. Yeah, I've seen your car, Tony. Now come and look at some of mine. I've not come to work, Kev. It's too late now, anyway. I mean, God didn't make half days. Yeah, well, we'll turn it into a full day for you. We've got enough work here to last till 8 o'clock, thanks to you. Now get your overalls on. Can't get rid of her. She won't come out. Where's Becky? Um, back to school. Claire checked. No, I've done my best. That's all I can say. Where is she? She's through here. Are you ready for this? Mm. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Oh, terrific. You look terrific. <laughs> oh, come on. You look great. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Becky's got a future in this business. <laughs> Taxi's here. Gary! I can't find the other shoe. There's a cab outside. Is it yours? Yeah, we're supposed to be going out. Gary! Oh. Well, I won't keep you. I, I just want to know if you fed him. Who? Scamper. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get right. You didn't go. You left him all this time and not gone. You were under bed. I might have known if he comes home early. Well, I said I'm sorry. What else can I do? Cut me throat. What's up? Scamper. 
Poor thing sat there with his legs crossed, thanks to you. I'll have to dash back there now and walk him myself. I'll tell you this, Judy. Next time you want a favour, you can whistle. You drop her off home and camp if you like. Oh, leave her having a flaming dog. Right. I'll go and sort that other business. Yeah. And make sure you tell him my last offer was my last offer. Will do. See ya. Bye, Liz. Bye. Where's it going? Business. New outfit, this, isn't it? Did you get it today? Yeah. Something classy, like you said. Stand up. Go on. Stand up. Turn round. Yeah, it's good, yeah, but... But what? No, it's me. You said it my ways. You don't like it? Well, I do, but... Can I be honest? I like your other gear better. Shorter. Tighter. Less of it. It's my fault, Liz. I'm a working-class lad. It's too classy for me. That's what you're saying, isn't it? It's wonderful. And you fill it a treat. But if you really want to turn me on... I know. Miniskirt and stilettos. Basic instincts. I'm too honest for my own good, aren't I? When it suits you, yeah. You go out, but I don't know where to. Business. Just business. Well, yeah, but suppose I need to contact you in a hurry. You don't even switch your phone on. Like this morning, for instance, you just swanned off. Bolton. I was in Bolton. Doing what? No. None of my business. I'm sorry I shouldn't have asked. I'll go back to work. Liz. You're feeling left out and I apologise. I'll do my best to keep you more informed, OK? Thank you. It would help. Look. Why don't we jack this lot in and go back to my place, eh? What about the bar? All the other ranks can look after that. OK. Do you want me to change out of this? Yeah. Go on. Indulge me. A day in the life of Fiona Middleton, and what a day. What have you been up to? Yeah, I've been stuck in the office all day. I'm sitting in a saw, been doing paperwork. Uh, do you think he was serious when he said he liked it? What does about Claire's hair? Maxine did a good job. Yeah, just meant it. You can tell when a bloke's being sincere. I meant what I said this morning. I know. You never said it back. Will you say it now? Go on, say it. Alan, I love you. <laughs> well, at least somebody's happy. Yeah, I've got my sympathy. Can't love a copper, can you? You certainly embarrassed Derek over that terrible plant. Hello, Kathy. Are things any better? Uh, pint, please. What was that, Mavis? No, it's just what um, Emily was saying, that uh, Tony'd let you down. Oh, she's told you as well, has she? Did she tell you what I had on my sandwiches this morning? No. <laughs> Must be slipping up, eh? Emily was just concerned, Kevin. I mean, well, you and Tony are supposed to be partners, yeah, aren't Yeah, except one partner's doing the grafting while the other one's out enjoying himself.
How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling fine. Good. So am I. <laughs> There's some coffee on. It'll be ready in a few minutes. And if you feel like some breakfast? No. Or... Coffee will be just fine. Then I'll have to get going. Well, there's no rush, is there? No, but I've got to go home and change my clothes. And then I've got to get to the hourglass and open up. No. I phoned Kath at home this morning told her to open up. Said you wouldn't be in till tonight. Oh. Huh? So? Till then, the day's your own. Told you you're going to like working for me, didn't I? <laughs> there you go. Stay in bed all morning if you feel like it. Sounds to me like a good idea. I don't believe this, Sam. They're still not there. Either that or they've gone completely stone deaf. Who? They're mallets. I've been banging on their door, haven't I? Well, maybe they're having a lie-in. Or maybe they think you're the debt collector. Yeah. I'll give them a ring. See if they answer. What's their number now? Oh, yeah. Why is it me, eh? Why do I always get the awkward jobs? Hmm? Why do the police? Why do they come here? Because you're the next door neighbour, and that's what next door neighbours are for. Now, look, I'm off to work. Right. Ah, there's still no answer. They must have gone away. Oh, Curly, stop fretting. They'll be back sooner or later. Anyway, maybe the police have been in touch with them already. I hope so. I mean, I hope it's not down to me to tell them. Ah. Ah. Kevin, lad. There you are. It does my heart good to see you working. I thought you'd be shut today. No such luck. Never stop these days, Alec. Oh, well, that's because you're your own boss, you see. It's a wonderful incentive. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to put money in your pocket. Can you have a look at my car? Where is it? Well, it's, it's in the lock-up. I can't shift the damn thing. It won't start. So if you could just have a walk round there, I'm sure you'd sort it out in no time. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I've got, Alec. No time. See this car here? And that one? And that one? They're all wanting attention, and I'm on my own. Where's my lad? What's his name? Tony? Your guess is as good as mine. He's let me down again, hasn't he? I've got a grip of him. Yeah, well, I mean, he knows how we fixed this wall blind he'd been this morning, but he's not here, so what am I supposed to do? Send out a search party? Right. Ta-da. Betty is poorly. Billy's sent her back to bed. Oh, that's great, that is. Joyce has let me down now, Betty. I mean, what are we going to do for bar food? You don't eat food with ale like this. Of course we do. Morning. Here, Morning. don't you be taking your coat off. Why, what? Because you're going out again. Betty's let me down. We've no food for the bar, so I want you to go down to that freezer place, you know, where Curly works. Thurman's, but he doesn't work there anymore. Well, the shop's still there, isn't it? Now, look, they do them big packets of Cornish pasties. Mm. Get two of them. Uh, and some sausages, you know, a couple of bags of them. And mm. chips, three or four bags. You know, you can do it microwave. Here, Jack, give a £30 out the till. I'm supposed to be working behind the bar, not go running errands. Flower, if it were up to me, you would do knelt. Recline on the bar on the silken cushion, but the wife won't have it, you see. Here, now, here, take these two. Because last time I went to Furman's, I charged me 5p for a carrier bag. Well, can I get a taxi back? Can you act us like? Get the bus. Hey, up, Jack. For you, son, I. Oh, All right, well, yeah. give us a couple of bites, then, eh? Right. Uh, you all look so miserable, Ashley. Well, how are you, right? I used to walk about with a big smile on my face. What's up? Nothing. What is it, women's rule? No, I will be at your age, Cocker. I don't know what to do about Maxine. I just don't be seen getting anywhere. I don't know. Well, she's different from other girls. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard out like different. it? Uh, uh, uh. Different. She's just the same as all the rest. Right. If you want to get anywhere, flash your money about. That'll get her interested. That's what women want. Money spending on them. Come on, Sheila. You should have got this little way by now. I've been helping to unload in the yard. Mr Furman said I don't to... want a load of excuses. Just get on with it. Well, 
didn't expect to see you here today. No. Well, I'm not working till tonight, so... Anyway, you okay? Yeah. Anything happened? Mm, like what? Don't know, really. Nah, it's just like one day after another, innit? I'd, yeah. Uh, well, I just wondered if anybody had said anything to you about being moved somewhere else, that's all. Well, who was saying that to me? I don't know, I'm just asking. Hey, who's that guy talking to Jerry Turner? The horrible looking one. The, uh, they call him Dobbin when he can't hear him. I wouldn't fancy bumping into him on a dark night. Yeah, uh, Fraser used to call him his branch manager. Why? What's it got to do with Fraser Anderson? Well, he does things for him, you know, sorts things out if they need sorting. But, uh, you don't argue with him, you know what I mean? So, have you, uh, have you seen anything of Fraser since he got out? I can't help but see him. He's bought the hourglass, you know, the wine bar where I work. Oh, he has, has he? Well, must be as keen on you as he always made out to be. But his wife won't be happy. Fraser's married? Oh, yeah, of course he is. Has he not mentioned it? Well, thanks for coming, Mum. I appreciate it. Yeah, you look after yourself, Steve. Be careful, eh? Yeah, you too. See ya. See ya. Small world, isn't it? Young Steve looks well, considering. I've got the motor outside. Can I uh, drop you at the hourglass? No, thanks. I've got my own car now. <laughs> oh, that's Fraser for you. He's a real soft touch to work for. Well, you know that, don't you? He's a great bloke. As long as you keep him happy. Thanks a lot. Thank See ya. Bye. Oh, it's you. Uh, just a minute, madam. Have you paid for everything in this trolley? Yes, of course I have. You won't mind if I check then, will you? Yes, I would mind very much. Now, I've got work to do and I've no time to play games, so will you just let me... Oh, uh, this is no game, I can assure you. If you'll follow me to the manager's office, please. Hey. All right, Curly, you should have been with us last night. Junty you? Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Hey, it done you good, just what you need. Yeah, we got smashed. You mean you did? Dancing on kitchen table at his pals, Ewa. It was great. We didn't come home, we slept at his. <laughs> what a night, though, had you? Uh, listen, um, the police were here last night looking for you. Gary, what have you been up to? Well, no, uh, Jude, it was you that they were looking for. And they asked me if I see you. Can you get in touch with them at the police station? Why? What's happened? Well, they were a bit cagey. Oh, come on. They must have said something. Well, yeah. Somebody was uh, knocked down by a car last night on Ashdale Road. A woman. It's my mum, isn't it? Well, they didn't say. Well, not to me, anyway. It's mum. Why else would they want me? Gary, it's my mum. <laughs> it got in my bag, but I certainly didn't put it there. Now, come on. Miss Malone here, she saw you slip the item into your shopping bag. Well, then she's lying. You're not helping yourself. Shall I call the police, Mr Furman? And you're not giving me much choice. Now, if you were to admit your offence, since we've never had occasion to stop you before this... I think we have to prosecute on this one, Mr Furman. I know this woman by sight. She lives with Mr Watts. I knew I'd seen you somewhere. Oh, hold on a minute. I do not live with Mr. Watts. I share a house with him. I pay him rent. I doubt you'll get her to admit the truth, Mr. Furman, but my guess is Mr. Watts put her up to this. Why would he do that? Mr. Furman. Not now, Sheila, later. But, Mr. Furman... I said, not now, Sheila. We're in the middle of something important. I know, Mr. Furman, but that's why I'm here. This lady didn't steal anything. 
Miss Malone put it in her shopping bag. <sighs> Rubbish! Rubbish! I'd better tell you, Mr Furman, I've been having... I've been having lots of problems with Sheila recently, and I was hoping I wouldn't have to complain to you about her, but... Well, I've had to reprimand her several times recently for... for being idle, for... for stop going missing, and this is obviously her way of trying to get back at me. Did Mr Watts put her up to it, I wonder? Well, it's possible, yes. There you are, Rita. Oh, thanks, Alex. <laughs> Now, yeah. cheers, love. Now, this little outing we had in mind for tomorrow, there's a bit of a problem the car's playing up. Now, Kevin Webster's flatly refused to have a look at it. By that, I dare say he meant you'll have to wait your turn. I've just seen him now, beavering away with his head in somebody's engine. Yes, but I'm a neighbour. We took his flaming kids out in it to the week. Should have put himself out for me. Anyway, it looks like we'll have to put it on hold, unless, of course, we go in your car. We're only going to Manchester. There are such things as buses, you know. Oh, I never travel on a bus, me. I'm never going anywhere I want to get to. Well, it'll be an experience for you. We'll bus it. They earn a lot of money, don't they, nowadays, policemen? No idea. Oh, you've not asked it. God, I would. Yes, Maxie, we know you would. Oh, get your wallet out, Alan. Let's see how much you've got. No, you can be more subtle about it. You don't have to be so crude. Mm. Oh, God. Here comes my fan club. Hiya. Hey, Rash. Um, I was thinking, do you fancy coming out tonight? Talking to me? Oh, tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Wish you'd asked me sooner. Well, you've got to take it safe, it's on it, boom. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, she likes them. Oh, it's such a pity that you didn't ask her sooner. Well, actually, I could put them off. Um, yeah, all right, actually, I will. Oh, great. What are you drinking? Nothing. <laughs> Same right. again, please. Right. I'm not really going to go out with him, are you? Well, I've got nothing else to do tonight, have I? Anyway, I like Sonic Boom. Hey, right. up, Jim, lad. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you having? You and our landed pints, is it? Oh, yes, please. Well, there's a welcome. You better bring mine an orange juice. Oh, still on the wagon, eh? Aye. How was Alan? Well, as usual, it was green and wet. Hey, V, what have you got in the menu, love? Nothing. Oh. Betty's Pauline. I've sent Samantha out for some provisions. She's vanished on me. Wait till she gets back. She's in dead trouble. I don't even know why I agreed to come in. You'll be glad you did, Norman. Believe me. Why should I? Last time I was here, you told me I should never set foot on these premises again. The next minute, you're ringing me up, begging me to come in. What is going on? <sighs> Something I very much wanted to be in on. After you. You would never have walked out on me if you'd... Sam, what are you doing it? What is going on? I'll tell you. Miss Malone tried to fit this lady up on a phony shoplifting charge. That's not true, Mr Furman. She tried to slip something into my bag, Curly. You don't seriously believe this woman, surely? I believe it. I know exactly what you're capable of. It doesn't have to be a question of belief or disbelief. Fortunately, we have a witness. Sheila Dixon saw Miss Malone slip the item in question into your friend's shopping bag. But the girl's lying, I told you, for reasons of her own. This is why I've asked you to come here, Norman. I want to apologise to you for believing what Miss Malone told me. And I want you to hear me say, Miss Malone, you're sacked as of right now. I want you out of the store within five minutes. You can't sack me. For one thing, you haven't given me a warning. It's, it's unfair dismissal. I'll... Take you to a tribunal, I'll get compensation, reinstatement, and it won't do Furman's any good, will it? I'll give you a choice. I can fire you right now, and you can take your chance at a tribunal and in a police court, or... What do you mean, a police court? I shall ask Miss Failsworth to make a formal complaint to the police. Sheila Dixon is a witness to what you did, or there is an alternative. What? You can resign right now, I'll write you a glowing reference, and you can go quietly. If Miss Failsworth is willing, of course. Is, uh, is Liz around? Mrs. MacDonald? I don't know. Who wants her? I'm sorry? I said who's asking. Oh, right, well, um, I'm a son. Oh, so you're Andy, eh? I've heard all about you. What, off my mum? Yeah, well, don't you believe any of it, mate? No, not off, uh, off your Steve. 
We shared a party war, me and him, at Strangeways. Next cell down the passage. Fraser Henderson's my name. Right, well, um, if my mum's about. No, not till tonight. I gave her the day off. I bought the place. Hadn't she mentioned it? No, no. Um, I've been away for a while. I've been in Ireland. Oh, well, you've got some catching up to do. What are you drinking on the house? Um, no thanks. I'm a bit pushed for time as it happens. Uh, I'd best be getting off. Some other time. That's the son that's getting the education. But it's not as thorough as Steve's mind. Or as expensive. Tony, it's you. You're not very popular in this house at present. Still, you better come in. Kevin, it's Tony. Oh, I'll say you was a bit late. I've just closed the garage after doing a 12-hour day, thanks to you. Where was you? Playing football, showing off your new car? Well, don't bother telling me, Tony, cos I've had it with you. Just cleared off, OK? I had an accident. Well, I'm not interested. Just cleared off. Kevin, I think we ought to listen. After I finished work yesterday, this woman... A dog ran out, you see, and, and this woman, well... I think she was trying to catch it. It wasn't my fault. What, you've, you've knocked somebody down? No, it, it wasn't my fault. Showing off in your new car. Foot hard down, was it? No, honest, honest. There was nothing I could do. It, it was that. It was, it was Mrs Smedley. What? You mean Judy's mum, Joyce? <gasps> Brilliant. Great public relations. Your local friendly garage. Service your motor. Run your mother over. Don't talk like that. Look, it's him! I've had enough of him. He leaves it all to me. Don't do any work. Now he's knocking over the neighbours. Don't understand she's dead. Oh no. Blame. Tommy, look, you better sit down. No. I wanna go and see him. The mallets. Tell him how it was. To try and explain how, how I couldn't help it. No, Tommy, not tonight. In a day or two, maybe, but not tonight. I suppose we best look through this lot. Check a purse, see if it's gone. Everything's gone, Gary. Everything. I don't give a monkey's about what's in a purse. Hold me, Gary, please. Come here, Lord. Come here. Oh. Why couldn't I just do what she asked? All I had to do was walk the dog. That's what she asked, and I didn't do it. And if I had, she'd still be here. It's not like that, Jude. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't work like that. It happens if it's going to happen, whatever you do or don't do. It wasn't your fault. Take me upstairs, Gary. Blimey, Jude. It doesn't seem right. I don't care what it seems. I need you to love me. I don't know why I just do. Hold me. Love me. I need you, Gary. I need you, please. <laughs> I saw policemen knocking on Mally's door last night. I told you, didn't I, Mrs Bishop? I knew to be trouble. You did, Mr. Sugden. You said, I wonder what those mallets have been up to this time. Aye. Poor old Joyce, eh? Not so old, Jack. I mean, what would she be? Fifty? If that. It seems very unfair. Of course it's unfair. I mean, it's life, isn't it? There's no fair about it. I do know that, Mr. Brennan. My own husband was taken long before his time. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not being personal. I'm just saying uh, it's a lottery, isn't it? No. Somebody wins in a lottery. Nobody gets out of life alive, do they? Oh, please. It's distressing enough when it's somebody you know. You don't have to make it worse, Mr Duck. Right, we, we'll all have a drink, eh? Landlord's bottle, eh? Do you know how I feel terrible? I mean, it were only this morning. Poor woman, I was calling her for not doing me cleaning. Yeah, I know. I mean, I was feeling sorry for myself sat in Furman's office being accused of shoplifting, but something like this really puts it in perspective. Mm. Well, I know how you feeling, love. It's very hurtful. Hurtful being accused of shoplifting. I know, I've had some. Mind you, 
It's true what they say. There's always something. There's always someone else worse off than you, yeah. Yeah, well, you can mock you, but it's true. It might be very well true, Vera, but people don't have to keep saying it. Yeah, but I bet you're happy about today. You know, you got your job back and a pay rise. I deserve that. Ah, but for me, you would never have got it. I hope you're not thinking of a rent reduction. No, I'm thinking I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? Celebrating, are we? Anne, look, I don't know why you're here, but... I think uh... you do. I suppose there's no danger of you saying you're sorry for what you put me through. It's not me that's going to be sorry. No, I didn't think there was. You just can't stand it, can you? A woman being better than you, being brighter than you. That's why you schemed and plotted to get Eric against me. It was me that put you on the ladder. It was me that got you promoted. I don't think you've won, Curly, because you haven't. One day, and I don't care how long it takes me, I'll make you pay for this. Anne! Blimey. Sam, get us a pint. What's wrong, Liz? What's worrying you? I'm just wondering. If I start making myself too comfortable, what are the chances of your wife walking in? Oh, so that's it, the wife. I knew there was something. Why did you let me find out? Why didn't you tell me? I never gave you the thought. Well, the way I look at it, it doesn't matter. Oh, come on! We've all got baggage. You've got your ex... What's his name? Jim? Yeah, but he is my ex, Fraser. I don't go home to him behind your back. I don't keep him a secret. I don't go home to anybody behind your back. I'm still married to her, sure, in law. We're not divorced. The marriage was over years ago. Is that true? I have to know. You're jealous, aren't you? I like that. There's no one else. You're it. Where is she? A wife. Head for Cheshire. You come to a nice big detached house, double garage, three bathrooms, probably about a dozen cats by now. I never see her. And is it over? Really over between you and her? I've told you. See, people who play straight with me, I play straight with them. People I care about, I'll look after. Trust me. OK? Was he drunk, the bloke that killed her? No, no. She ran out in front of him. It can't have been looking where they were going. I want to talk to her, Gary. Uh, talk to me. I never said I was sorry. What for? She was angry at me about the dog. And I took no notice. I couldn't be bothered with her. That doesn't matter. None of that's important now. I didn't mean to shout at her. And I can't take it back now. <laughs> Service with a smile. Thank you. Aren't you used to breakfast in bed? It's not breakfast, it's coffee. Jerry's here. Have a bath, wash your hair. No need to rush. OK. Look, it's not only a wife I had, you know. There have been a few girlfriends as well. Yeah, I'm sure they have. I was married when I was 16. Neither of us is that young or that innocent. Anyway, if it bothers you. No, it doesn't. Good. Make yourself at home. 
Oh, by the way, your son was in the hourglass last night. The other one, Andy. What did he want? He was looking for you. Nice lad. Oh, come in, love. Come in. I expect you've heard about Joyce. Yeah, oh. we are. We're all very, very sorry, Gary. Ah, right, enough. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, how's Judy taking it? Oh, she's... She's upset. She's crying and that. Oh, she's bound to be, isn't she? I mean, mm. it's to be expected. Your mother's your mother when all's said and done. Well, I thought I'd better come in and tell you, just in case you're expecting her in. Mm. Must have been a terrible shock for her, you know. Arriving home to news like that. Yeah. Well, then we had to go and identify her, oh. the body. Oh, well, we've had that, love, haven't we? Aye. But at least didn't linger. No. It killed outright, Curly said. Yeah. Chucked up in there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Is there anything we can do, love? Anything you need? No. No, we're all right. Oh. Yeah, well, I were going to come down, you know, and see her, but I thought I'd better wait till I see you first, you know, because I don't like to intrude. No, I just don't like pushing herself, Vera. Well, you don't, do you? No. Hey, now, listen, do you want me to slip down now and have a word? But could you leave it for a couple of hours? You see, I've got to go and register the death, and I, and I don't want to leave her on her own. No, of course you don't, love. No, but listen, I'll go down. You'll take as long as you like. Look, give her our sympathy, won't you? Tell her we're all thinking of her. I will, Betty. Thanks. Yeah, good. Yeah, love. Hiya. Come on, then. Put me out of my misery. How was Sonic Boom? Oh, they were fabulous. And how was Ashley? Fee, I'm trying to forget about it. All right. Yeah, it looks like you're going to have to try a little bit harder. Maxime! Maxime! That's what I need, Ashley. Monday's not your lucky day, is it? It's about modelling for you. Oh, I don't need any models. Would you want Permier? No. You can share my head if you like. No, thanks. Why not? Well, my boyfriend wanted to prove. What boyfriend? Um, the one who goes away drawing maps. He's been away, you see. Drawing maps? And he wasn't best pleased when I told him he took a gig last night. Wasn't he? So, I think it'd be best if Fee cuts your hair from now on. I mean, she's very good. All right. That's for the best. I suppose so, yeah. Oh, I know traffic part like the back of my hand. There's nothing goes on there that I don't. Hi, Jerry. Hello. What do you want? Uh, I'm just going to make myself some breakfast. Do you two want anything? What happened to your bath? I had it ages ago. No, we're busy. You see for yourself. OK. It's OK, she didn't hear anything. But look, you'll be all right in time. Look, you and Gary will sit here and you talk about your mum and say what a good sort she wore and... She wasn't a good sort, Vera. Of course she wore. Oh, mum's are. She could be a right cow. Judy? She could, Vera. She messed me about something awful. She let us down all the time. She couldn't stop shoving her nose in. Yeah, but Mam's alive, that love. Did she still wait to come to any harm? She couldn't mind her own business. Kept on about having a grandchild and she'd have been bored with it within no time. Oh, she won't. She did know she'd have cherished it. She didn't cherish me. Oh, she did. She did. She's our world here. She wasn't one of those cuddly sorts, you know, the ones that put their arms around you. Well, not every mother's the same, love. I mean, it'd be a funny world if we were, wouldn't it? She embarrassed me, Vera. I was ashamed of her half the time. Yeah, but what about the other half? We had a laugh. Of course you did. I'll miss her, Vera. Oh. I'll never forget her. Oh, of course she won't, love. You'll never forget your mum. Never. For as long as you live. Carrie's not back yet. Do you think we ought to go over there? Well, Vera's still there, isn't she? Yeah. Well, there's no point us all traipsing over together, is there? What? I can't go over by myself. I won't know what to say. Make something up like you did with Ashley. I just said the first thing that came into my head. Yes, I know you always do. I don't. Anyway, there's not a lot you can say. I'm really sorry that your mother's died. It must have been a terrible shock. She'll have been hearing it all day. Who will have been hearing what? 
Oh, condolences, Judy Mallet. Her mother got knocked over by a car. Was that that woman who was uh, killed in Ashdale Road? Yeah. Right, well, you're not in the case, are you? Maxine is CID. He doesn't do traffic. He's come to take me to lunch, haven't he? Um, no, actually, I've come to talk to Liz. Well, she'll be at the hourglass. Yes, I know, but I've had to arrange to meet her here. Can I talk to her upstairs? We're just about to go up for his lunch. It won't take long. Here she is. Hi, Fiona. Hiya, yeah. Maxine. Yeah. Alan. Is that all right? Can I go to the Rovers? It's a bit personal. Be my guest. Good girl. Good girl? I won't let anybody speak to me like that. It's just a phrase. Yeah, my dad used to use it. Mind your own business, Max. I mean, what's he going to do next? Pat you on the head? I said, mind your own business. Thank you. Sorry I spoke. No. I haven't heard anything. I already told you that. This is no time to mess around, Liz. I need information. Well, maybe you should have given me some. Like what? Like you were married for a start. What's that got to do with it? So you knew? I thought she was his ex-wife. She isn't. What's going on? Nothing. Can you... Could you go and wait downstairs? No! Please? Stay. And listen to what a two-faced liar your boyfriend is. There's a lot of things about Henderson I never told you. You didn't exactly ask for his file. I wouldn't have got it. Not for you. I told you what you needed to know. I thought Steve was the one that you were bothered about. Oh, Steve could sit in jail and rot for all you care. I don't know what you're making such a fuss for. You like a nice time. Nothing wrong with a few drinks. Decent meal in a fancy restaurant. Not like I'm asking you to do anything out of the ordinary. Aren't you? No. It's not like you're sleeping with him, is it? Liz? Can't believe you've slept with him. I didn't tell her to. I said I'd try and get Steve move. Yeah, well, don't bother. From now on, the two of us will take our chances. Liz, Fraser's a criminal. Maybe he is. But I'm beginning to have a bit more respect for him than I have for you. Respect? Hey, I don't just go with anybody. And if you're trying to say that, I I'm do. I'm not saying that. Yeah, well, I'm not bothered. I'm really not bothered about people like you because I enjoy being with Fraser and that's enough for me. So what? You can still help me out and you'll be doing Steve some good into the bargain. I haven't heard anything I said. I like the man. And I'm not going to spy on him. And if I go to bed with Fraser, it's because I want to. Wouldn't be spying. I am just asking you to keep your ears open. I'm living in his flat, and you expect me to pass on information? Yes, why not? Because what you want is a copper's knack. And I might be a lot of things, but I'm certainly not that. We had an arrangement. Did we? Well, forget it. All right, then I'll forget my side of the bargain, too, completely. Well, if you ask me, he was going too fast. I mean, that Mrs Hounslow from the back of Rosamond Street said as much. What does she know about it? Well, she was passing when the ambulance arrived. She always is. No, apparently... The driver was a very young man. She said he was a bit of a kid. Well, I'm not quoting her word for word. I should hope not, the language she uses. Whoever was behind that wheel, he has my sympathy. But he's not dead, though, is he? No, but he'll never forget what happened. It'll be with him for the rest of his life. Well, so it should. We've all been guilty of lapses of concentration, Mavis. It, it seems it just came out of nowhere. How would she know? She wasn't there herself until the ambulance arrived. Oh, Rita, I don't know. I'm just repeating what I've heard. I mean, there's all sorts of rumours flying about. And meanwhile, poor Judy's in that house, crying her heart out. I feel very sorry for her. Oh, I think we all do. All right, then, explain it to me again. Right, Liz gives you information, you get Steve moved to an open prison, right? 
Something like that. No, you either do or you don't. Look, the important thing is to get Henderson off the streets. Oh, right, and then once he's back in jail, you won't even bother with Steve. No, I, I will put a word in. Oh! But it's, it's out of my hands. Liz is right, you are such a liar! So what if I am? Are you trying to tell me she's some kind of model citizen? Alan! You are using her! You, you're treating her like... Like the sort of woman she is. She's my friend. She's common as mock. No, she's not! Are you telling me that if things were different, you would sleep with Fraser Henderson? If things were different, would you want me to? Oh, here. The elusive Pimpernel. What? They seek her here, they seek her there. Have you seen Andy? No, has he seen you? Betty, what? has our Andy been in yet? Oh, he's not due on for another hour or so long. All right, I'll come back later. Uh, Liz, he called you last night and again this morning. Did he want me? I couldn't say myself, like, but he was delighted to hear you writing the tiles all night enjoying yourself. I wasn't. Yes, you were. You weren't at home, anyway. I wasn't enjoying myself. Not much, anyway. Was something wrong? Yeah. What? Forget it. What's the point? Liz, look, if you're in trouble, please let me know. I'm not. Tell Andy I'll catch up with him later, OK? Hi, Liz. Beatrice, she's back. Coming in, love. What's up with your wife? I don't have a wife. Ah, she's here. Hiya. Oh, uh... what a love. What are they in the news? Oh, they're really pleased with him. He's putting on weight. He's more stable. <sighs> it's going to be fine. Little lamb. <laughs> Aren't they lovely when they're newly born, eh? No, it's the way they turn out. You have to watch. Brad will turn out fine. Oh. Yeah, of course he will. Take a notice of him. He's depressed. Well, there's no point in coming in here to cheer myself up. Even Betty's got a miserable face on her. Tell us more about baby. Oh, doctor's dead chuffed for them. And he says if he keeps up this progress, he's going to send him home. When? Tomorrow? No, no. End of week. Oh, Jack. We'll have a baby in the house again. What will it be like? <laughs> Can't wait to tell our Jamie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, you uh, found anywhere to live? I may have. Why are you interested? I'm concerned about you. Well, you needn't be. Save your concern for Sue Jeffers. Look, she's just a friend and that's all she ever was. Really? Yes. I've been looking at the flat above Sean Skinner's. What's it like? A bit small. Take it, Deirdre. Why? It's here, back where you belong. Is it? Couldn't be closer to all your old friends. And that's a good thing? Yes. I'll think about it. It might be nice to have him here. You don't like the dog, Gary. You never did. No. Well, I thought it'd remind you of your mum. Guess I forget about her, you mean. No, I didn't mean that. She's been dead a day, Gary. I think I can remember who she is. I know, Jude. I just... I want you to have something of hers. Well, it's better than being in pound. Oh, it's a dog, Gary. That's all. It's not a person. It doesn't know what's going on. It doesn't know that he ran into the road and she followed it and... I'll leave, I'll leave him where he is, all right? I don't care. I just don't care. All right. All right. Yeah, so. So. Only just. Vera. Do you think I could go on? Oh, I still upset. I can't get it out of my mind. I mean, I wasn't close to Joyce. I won't pretend that I was, but... My heart goes out to poor Judy. Yeah. And the thing is, it could happen to any of us. But that's what I mean. I mean, I want to be with my Billy. I mean, I missed him at lunchtime, he'd already gone. I nearly ran round to the allotment myself. Yeah, well, now what's going to happen to him there? How do you know, Vera? I mean, Joyce was only taking her dog for a walk. Yeah, and Alisa were just crossing the road. Oh. No, you go, Betty. Andy's here now, and uh, oh. our Jack can hold for a bit, oh. can't you? What? And of course he can. Now listen, you'll get your coat and get off. And if you don't feel any better tomorrow, don't bother turning in. Oh, thanks, love. What? <laughs> what I tell you, eh? You need your head examining. Go on and get me a drink. That's all. Two pints, please, Jack. Give it up, son. Do you think she has got a boyfriend or is she just saying it? Well, whether she has or whether she hasn't, you'd be better off spending your money on me. 
I really like it, Don. Look, she's an hairdresser. They're all the same. Cheap and nasty. Yeah, she tears you I believe you've been looking for me. Uh, yeah. Come here, Mum. You didn't tell me Fraser Henderson was your new boss. Does it matter? Well, you're willing to take orders from the likes of him, are you? He's bought the wine bar, he hasn't bought me. Yeah, well, it's not safe, Mum. You want to give him your notice? If I jack my job and I'll have nothing to live on. Nobody's going to give me a grant to laze around for three years. I don't laze around. No, I know you don't. I'm sorry. Where were you last night? I stayed at Deirdre's. Hey, get us a drink, will you? I'm parched. What did you stay there for? Why not? Do you go home every night of your life? Uh, no. No, I don't. Please. Neither do I. All right? I've hardly touched it. I'll make us a brew. Yeah. Uh, are you seeing people? Yeah. I can send them away. No, it's all right. Right, Tom. Uh, can I come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Tony, Jude. Hello. Hiya. Thanks for coming, mate. I'm sorry. Thanks. Well, yeah. Sit down. Thanks, yeah. You're the only person who's been through that door, apart from Vera Duckworth. I, I, I would have come over last night, but Kevin and Sally told me not to. Make him a cup of tea, Gareth. No, no, I don't want one. I just want you to know how sorry I am. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate it, don't we, Jude? Yeah. Can't tell you how bad I feel. Well, it ain't your fault, mate. You just came straight out. I didn't see you. There was nothing I could do. I slammed the brakes on, but I'd already hit her. I've gone over. And over it in my mind. The road was clear. She wasn't there, and then she was right there in front of me. It were you. You killed her. Didn't the police tell you? They didn't send out to us. Oh, God. I thought you knew. You were driving the car. She came straight out, Judy. She wasn't there, and then she was there in front of me, and I did it, and I did her. Judy. I'm sorry. Were you going fast? No. You must have been! She was thrown in the air, you broke her neck! You must have been going fast! I wasn't, Judy, I wasn't! You broke her neck! I didn't see her, she wasn't there! She was! You smashed straight into her! I didn't see her! Get him out, girl! I'd do anything to bring her back. Get him out! I'm sorry, Jude. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Get him out! Go on. I'd do anything to bring her back. Yeah, are you listening to this? Now, I thought she was a nice person. I knew she was ambitious, and I quite liked that, but she took it to the extreme. Did you ask her out on that? No, no, cos she was Andy McDonald's girl, wasn't she? I was the one that helped her. I mean, I knew she'd go far. I mean, she was made for freezers. <laughs> and the next thing you knew... That she's telling lies about me and got me sacked. Anyway, now she's got her just desserts. If you want to know about evil women, Ashley, just listen to Curly and me. <clears throat> We've seen enough of them. Yeah, Alec. Like... Ah, so, hey. I say, that lad better watch himself. If he's not careful, he'll finish up like them two. Here. Yeah. Have you heard? Heard what? About Joyce Smedley. Should have told him. Oh, what's she done now? Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm in the rovers. What now? Straight away? OK. Bye. Got your mobile now, has he? 
Well, I'll be on string next. Is me boss, Andy. And you do everything that he tells you to, yeah. If he wants to see me, I have to go. No, you don't have to go, Mum. You don't have to be at anybody's beck and call. Andy, mind your own business. Er, uh, it's 120, that, Mum. Here. Charming. Hey, grow up. Act your age. What, like you? Well, that weren't very nice, were it? No, it wasn't, Vera. Well, give us a minute, will you? Why don't you get dressed and, uh, oh, go into town? What for? Oh, just get out for an hour. I don't want to go to town. Get some food for tomorrow. I can get all I need from Maureen's. I know, but what you could do with a break? <gasps> well, why don't you just give me one and stop pestering? I'm just trying to think of something to take your mind off it. Like buying the funeral tea? She'd never begrudged us out as a kid. She'd starve rather than see me go hungry, and I know that for a fact. Look, when we moved in with her, she gave us best room. Were right. it? You know it well. Yeah. Why, er. Uh, she never had a bad word for anyone. She never hurt a living thing, and I mean that. There were a Jimmy Longlegs in the house. We'd put it outside rather than... I don't remember that. No. Because you didn't know her like I did. You never had a good word to say about her. Oh, be fair, Jude. I know she were your mother, but she weren't Mother Teresa. Hey! Hey! What's going on? Well, your machine's not working. Because it's not switched on. There. See? Oh! Well, I'll have to get the man out. It was working yesterday. Well, I've not done out to it. I never said you did. You're going to be late for school. Your machine's knackered. No, it's not. Yeah, I think it might be. Oh, it's just uh, out of action. Well, that's what I said. Uh, not out of order, out of action. Do you understand him? Because I don't. Here, for your break time. Now, run along. Oh. <sighs> There's your answer. Take the fuses out. Oh. Uh, pending their removal. You're getting shot of them. Uh, you've, you've no strong objections, have you? No, not really. Oh, I didn't think you would have, otherwise I would have consulted you. Yeah, well, I'm not particularly keen on them, but uh, some people like them. And they bring in a lot of money. Oh, I dare say, but whose money? School kids and them has can't afford it. Well, fair enough, if that's how you feel. Well, that's a simple enough decision. I mean, either we're running a cafe or a casino. Anyway, I, uh, I just wanted to convey my condolences. Thanks, Alan. And you can take my word that your mother's little indiscretions uh, will be strictly between the three of us and always will be. Well, that's, that's very good of you, isn't it, Judy? I mean, what's done's done, isn't it? There's no point in speaking ill of the departed. No. It's, it's still sinking in, really. I mean, present company accepted. I suppose I was the one who knew her best in the street. We had that little weekend together, you know. <laughs> Not in the biblical sense, you understand. But we did know each other socially, as it were. Oh, yes. Yes, ours was more than a strictly employer-employee relationship. Till you sacked her. Well, it was unfortunate, yes, but uh, I had no choice. No, of course. never let her forget it. I'm sure I never said anything to her or anyone else. It's not what she said. Oh? She said she asked you for a job back and you turned her down. Well, they had no other choice. You said so yourself. I'd still be alive today if you'd have been prepared to forgive and forget. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't see how you work that out. Well, she'd have been at work, wouldn't she? Instead of taking the dog for a walk. Well, well let's not go down that road, eh? She could just as easy have been run over outside Sunliners. No, she couldn't, because she wouldn't have had the dog with her. 
I know sports that. Hey, um, thanks for coming, Alex. Yes, sir. Thank you. Tony, are you coming in today? Because we're absolutely bombed out. I'll see you later. Answer phone, so where is he? Here's your dinner. Oh, hi. Is your husband here? Yes, he is. Yeah, come on through. Thanks. Um, Kevin, it's um, Tony's mum. Something happened. He asked me to call. Yeah, I was just trying phoning him. Was it the machine? Mm. I switched it on before I came out. He's, uh, he's in bed. Is he not well? He's devastated. You know, it wasn't his fault. So he's not coming in? Well, Kevin understands, don't you? Yeah. Look, tell him to take the rest of the week off and I'll see him on Monday, yeah, first well, thing. That's what I've come to say. He won't. Not ever. Says he'll never come round this way again, never get in a car. But we've got a business to run with partners. He won't change his mind. <sighs> Here. Customer next size. Oh, what does it say? Well, I don't know. It's double dutch to me. I'll, uh, I'll deal with it in a minute, Vera. All right, look. All right. Morning. Uh, afternoon. Just give us a glass of red, will you? Trap phone you last night. Oh, anything important? Uh, no, I forget now. Oh, well, I didn't get that till late. What time were it? It was about half eleven. Oh, no, we're after that. Twelve, then. And half past. And one o'clock. Must be something wrong with the phone. Well, I should have had your mobile number, shouldn't I? Or is that off limits to the likes of me? Andy, you're talking in riddles. Come here a minute. I know this is irrational, Mum, but when I see a woman in a short skirt with a mobile phone, and I only think one thing. Do you? I'd be careful what you say. Well, I said it's irrational. But. When my own mother tells me she can't stick somebody and then the next minute he's got his tongue right down her throat, well, that's not very rational either, is it? Me? I don't know what you think you saw. Oh, I know what I saw, Mum. What I don't know is why. Hence the phone call. And hence nobody being there to pick it up as well, I would imagine. Look, this isn't what you think. No? Well, don't I deserve some sort of an explanation, then? Maybe. But you're not getting one. Why don't you just trust me instead of checking up on me all the time? Otherwise, somebody's going to get hurt, and I mean that. Are you threatening me? Just leave it. He doesn't want to leave you in the lurch, so the partnership can carry on as before. How? How can it? That is, unless you want to buy me out. I'm not with you. Well, although it's in Tony's name at the moment, it's my money. Did he not explain that? Oh, I thought it was his dad's money. Oh, I see. But anyway, it doesn't matter who owns the share. I can't afford to buy it. Well, that needn't be a problem, so long as you want to carry on running the garage. Oh, he does, don't you? Well, yeah. I mean, I'll need time to get my head round it. Yeah, of course. Anyway, Tony will be back next week, once it's all blown over. No, that won't happen. Believe me, that's not an option. So, I'll be in partnership with you, not Tony. I won't interfere. And neither will his father. You'll be making your own decisions. Anyway, we don't know a thing about garages. So, what do you think? Sounds okay. I mean, I need a bit of time to think about it. Oh, that's fine by me. Oh, and the accountant will want to have a look at the books, you know. Is that a problem? No, no, they're all up to date. We've got plenty of work on. Good. But I, uh, won't be able to manage it all on my own. Well, let's start as we mean to go on, shall we? I'll leave that one up to you. You don't mock about, do you? Oh, I have to admit it. It's a weight off my mind. So what's next? The jukebox? Oh, I'm not for change for change's sake, you understand. Besides, as partners, we must discuss these things. Personally, I vote to keep the jukebox. I'm all in favour of popular music. Though I would happily exchange uh, Brian Adams and Christy Berg for the Crystals and the Shangri-Las, but, well, if that's what folk want. Some folk want space invaders and food machines. Yeah, but sometimes we must stick to our beliefs, don't we? Phil, it's given us a bit more room. 
We can put in another table. Yes, yes, yes. Or, 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 or a shelf. What sort of shelf? Uh, it's a little idea. We'll have to discuss it. Uh, you sit down, Mrs Bishop. I'll see to these. Right. Uh, two teas and a tea cake to share, please. I'll bring them over. Right. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the cafe looks larger. We've declared a game-free zone. Good for you. I must say, I always found the noise rather irritating. Not to mention the flashing lights. It was more the addictive aspect that worried us, wasn't it? Oh, well, it gives you a bit more scope for movements, doesn't it? I expect you have another table. Roy fancies a shelf. Oh, what for? Condiments, cutlery and that sort of thing? No, no, a, a selection of newspapers for, for the convenience of our customers. Oh, that's a good idea, isn't it, Gail? Should have thought of it years ago. Well, do you know what they say? A new broom. See him. Put him in the yard and hurry up. Right. You alright, love? What's the matter? Stupid dog. We're always slipping its collar. Wait, you can't blame a dog. Well, I do. No, I don't. It just reminds me. I can't help that, can I? No. No, of course you can't. But it'll pass, love, I promise. I know it won't. I know it won't. I never want to see it again. Switch radio on. What? You're going to have to get rid of it, Gary. Oh, Take it to the vets. What? And have it put down? Yeah. Should have been dog run over instead of her. It's a bit drastic, isn't it? I mean it, Gary. Go on, take it away. And don't ever mention it again. Not ever. You look great. That's not why I'm here. Just as I remember you. Other things? And I do remember you, you know. Everything about you. When I'm, uh, when I'm lying awake. So have you finished with him then? Who? This sad DC friend of yours. My mum's told me all about him. What else has she said? Just that. You got yourself a copper. Nice one. Did you mention Fraser Henderson? Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's bought the hourglass, hasn't he? Interesting, eh? What else? What? Did you mention a deal? What? To get you out. By grassing on him, Fraser. Hey, I'll keep your voice down. He's put you up to this, hasn't he? This copper friend of yours. No. Who's spreading the word that I'm a grass or something. It does happen. It's happened in the past, you know. Listen, Steve, no one is accusing you. No one even knows I'm here. No one. Well, why are you here then? Well, if you listen, I will tell you. No, but I don't even know the woman, Sal. I didn't even know it was her money. I mean, what's to stop her pulling out? Well, why should she? Because before, when Tony was working there, it's a job for her son. Now I don't know. Well, you wanted rid of Tony. Yes, I know I did. Kevin, look at it this way. If you'd had a big row with Tony and you'd told him to sling his hook, he would have taken his money with him. <laughs> her money. All right, the money, the share, you know what I mean. This way, you lose Tony, but you keep his part of the investment. You're your own boss, and it doesn't cost you any more money. Yeah, and what happens if I take a mechanic on sale and it turns out to be worse than useless? Well, why should you? Because it's not that easy. Tony was a good mechanic. Well, at least he was until he became a partner and he thought he could do what he wanted. Yeah, well, that's not going to be a problem anymore, is it? Because there's only going to be one boss, and that's going to be you. Yeah, I suppose so. So, um, did she not mention any of that, then? No. Nope. Well, now you mention it, she did say something about moving to another prison. I just thought you ought to know. Have you any idea what will happen if Fraser finds out? I mean, not only to her, but to me. 
Yeah, you made that quite clear. What kind of a sad freak are you going out with anyway? Well, he's trots right in the firing line. I mean, what's up with him? Is, is, is he sick or something? Or, or, or has my mum joined the police? Because if so, she's never mentioned it to me. He's just doing his job. Oh, come on. They don't operate like that. They might get a WPC to come on a bit strong to him, but not a member of the public. Have you any idea how dangerous this is? Yes, Steve, that's why I'm here. If she puts one foot wrong, that fella will know. And then half an hour later, I'll end up in hospital, if I'm lucky. And God knows what'll happen to her. All I can say is that last time I saw them together, they were all right. <sighs> yeah, but for how long? It's just a liability. You saw what she did to me, old fella. If anyone can hurt a man, it's her. Couple of drinks, one wrong word. It's not Fraser that wants to go to prison. It's your boyfriend, the copper. Yeah, well, whoever told you it wasn't me, OK? Hey, hello. Thanks, dear. You don't mind dog, do you? No, so long as it behaves itself. Can I just use this ice tray? Yeah. What are you doing? Last requests. Taking him to be put down. Oh, you're not, are you? It's not my idea. I've been walking him round wrecked because I can't face it. Here, yeah, scam. Here, yeah. Vet shuts in an hour, so I thought drop a Dutch courage is do us both good before I take him. Next is beer then, does he? Yeah. Hey, well, don't give him too much. He'll be gay, like. Best way to go, Vera. Says it Judy that wants it. It's because of what happened. She's all over the place. She'll get over it in time. Yeah, but too late for dog, though. Hey, you don't fancy having him, do you? Oh, I can't, love. Well, he's a, he's a good watchdog. No, it's not that. It's just, uh, you know, Tricia, she's bringing baby home and, well, why couldn't Jim have it? Yeah, I couldn't bear it at all. Sure, I'm at work all day. So is Andrew. Dog like that needs exercise, so it does. Oh, how about for a couple of weeks? Well, tell you the truth, dogs and me don't get on that well, you know. There you are, you see. Ah. Uh, <sighs> Something to do with being in the army. Come on, then, scamp. We'll just have uh, we'll just have one more and then we'll go for the longest walk, eh? Cheers, thanks. Cheer up. Might never have. How do you mean? I've not seen you smile all day. Then I'll have to try and mm. won't I? That's not what I meant. You're worried I'll frighten the customers away. No, oh, you got me wrong. Stuff the punters, it's you I'm worried about. Come on. Tell me about it. Nothing to tell. Let's have a look at you. You've been crying. It's nothing. Do you want to take a couple of days off? You've been overworking. No, honest, I'll be fine. Well, something's worrying you. Tell me. You never know. I might be able to help. A family problem. A misunderstanding, that's all. Not your ex. Andy. I can't tell you. Hey, come on. What's this? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't apologise. <laughs> Mum, have you got a minute? I need a word. Uh, not really, no. Uh, fine, yeah. He's with you, Fraser. He is, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, it doesn't matter now, but I know what's going on. Have any idea what happens to informers? Look, whatever you do, don't cross him for your sake, for my sake, for everyone's sake. Just, just don't step out of line. Just, just don't. Lovely. OK, thanks for letting me know. Uh, see you, Andy. That was him, Andy. Just rang to clear the air. You sure? It's sorted? Yeah, everything's fine. Good. 
Thanks, love. Here we are. Thank you. Who are we on about now? Roy Cropper's been telling Mr. Sugden the history of the British cafe. Sounds interesting. As a matter of fact, it was. Folk went there to read the newspaper because they couldn't afford to buy one of their own, so it's now gone full circle. What has? You've lost me. Roy's got this idea of providing newspapers in the cafe as a facility. Has he now? Yes, well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Folk won't have to buy one from the shop and they'll sell more cups of tea. Charming. How would you like it if I sold cakes and sandwiches? Well, best be off. It's oh, a shame. Good looking dog, too, eh? What's your. Uh, How are you, mind? He's just taking dog for a walk, aren't you, Gary? So why is that a shame? Are you sure you won't change your mind, Vera? I can't, love. Baby's coming tomorrow. Oh, just for tonight, then? You bet what then? Well, I'll find someone else tomorrow. Our dog's home. I can't put him down. Oh, that's murder, that is. Go on, then. Just for tonight, mind. Here, does he like crisps? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pickled onions. <laughs> What's up? What's happened? Have you been to see Steve? I've just had a phone call from him. He were terrified. Keep on the right side of Fraser, he said. Did you tell him? What are you trying to do to us? It wasn't me. Well, someone has. He were nearly hysterical. Well, prisons are dangerous places, Liz. That's why we have to get him moved. Move him, then! Tonight! Well, it's in your hands. You tell me what I need to know and my boss will do the rest. This is blackmail. You know it is. If anything happens to my Steve, I'm going to hold you responsible. Somebody's opened their big mouth. If this gets back to the station, I am in such trouble. And do you mean if it gets back to the station? Your boss knows all about this. Liz is getting protection, isn't she? We don't always stick to the rule book. You mean no one... No one knows what you're putting her through? You've got to make your mark. Otherwise you're going to get left behind. If it wasn't me, it would be some other DC. If we don't get evidence, we don't get a conviction. I could name you a dozen criminals. They're all as guilty as sin. Drugs, uh, protection, fraud, GBH, it's the lot. But we can't touch them. We know who they are, they know, we know, but we can't even get them to court. And you would risk Liz and Steve's safety. What are these people to you? You're quite happy to have him put in hospital and string Liz along with one lie after another. Do you know who told Steve? That'd be her, wouldn't it? She's just pretending it was somebody else. Liz? Of course it wasn't Liz. You stupid cow! Thank you for the vote of confidence. Why, why would you... What have you done that for, for God's sake? Because although he does deserve to be in prison, he does not deserve a doing over just so that you can get promotion! All right, some friend of yours, is he? Him and his posh missus? He was. She wasn't. We used to live together. Why didn't you tell me? You're the detective. <laughs> oh, but why can't we keep him? Because babies and dogs don't mix. Why? Because they're mucky. Well, babies are mucky. Jack! Right. Where shall I take it? We'll take it back from where it came we from. We can't take it there, you fool. It's the funeral today. Yes, and our little Brad's coming home today. I told him, I said I'd only have it for one night. Now, if Judy can't stand the sight of it, well, it'll just have to be, uh, you know. But... Well, what do you mean? Look, ain't it time you were ready for school? Here, you won't let nobody at that dog, will you, Jack? No, no, I don't. Look, you get off, son. You get off. Jack, do you promise? Look, son, if Gary was going to put the dog down, he'd have had it put down yesterday. But he didn't, because he's as soft as was it, isn't he? That dog is as safe as houses. Go on. Great. See you then. Ta da, yeah, son. Ta ra, love. See Be you good. Then. I hate funerals, me, you know. I've never been one for funerals. And with our little Brad coming home today, Vera, well, Vera, I don't think I'll go. You can't not 
go, Joyce was the pal of yours. Yeah, but there'll be lots of people there. No, no, I think on balance I'll give it a miss. I mean, we're a bit busy this week and nobody's going to be bothered whether I'm there or not. But you and Joyce were close, though, weren't you? Briefly. Well, no, not really. Well, a bit happened, you know. I, I don't know, I don't think I did know her that well, if I'm being honest. Well, I'd go myself, but we're busy here. Yeah. yeah, but, I mean, you didn't really know her, did you? No, I know, but all the same. Mind you, she was forever in buying scratch cards. <laughs> oh, uh, she certainly knew how to get through the brass, did Joyce? <laughs> anyway, I, I'd best be off. Yeah. Bye, Alec. Oh, bye. bye. I wonder how Judy's bearing up. Poor kid. She must feel very on her own. I mean, despite having Gary, you know, because... Well, she's no brothers and sisters, has she? And no father that anyone's ever heard mentioned. Yeah, there, there. Oh, Jack, no! Right, right, sit. Right, no, 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 she wants shut of him before baby comes home. Yeah, well, not this morning. I've got the funeral, then. Oh, she did tell you, lad, didn't she? She wants to get the smell out of the house before the baby comes home. Now, is, is there nowhere here you can tie him up or something? No, he'll only start whining and she'll hear him. She thinks I've had him put down. Um, uh, Give him here. There you are. How is the lass? She's quiet, you know. Uh, Did you be at the funeral, weren't you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a very well, I think. Aye. So I'll, 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 I'll see you later. And, uh... Yeah, lad, eh? What am I going to do with you, eh? What the hell am I going to do with you? I, uh, want to talk to you. I'm busy. Well, you're not that busy, are you? <laughs> Let her deal with it. Her? Maxine. I am busy. All right, well, then I'll wait upstairs until you're not busy, then, shall yeah, I? Yeah, well, you're going to have a long wait. Did you hear? God, ignore him. Don't pander to him. Let him stew in his own juices. You. I uh, hope you'll both make full use of the new facilities, uh, the newspapers. I'm hoping to carry certain magazines as well. It's a matter of deciding which ones. If you have an idea, I'll pop a note in the suggestion box on the counter. Oh, yes. We aim to please, but we can only please if we know what it is folk want. Uh, pen and paper are provided, if you would like to make a suggestion about that. Or, or indeed, about out else. Right. Thank you. Are you going, then, to the funeral? Well, no, I, I wasn't planning to. I don't feel as though I really knew her. I might pop a card through Judy's letterbox this afternoon. So I am sorry uh, that I overreacted. And I, I don't want us to finish, you know, because of it. Okay? Is that it? Yeah. Um, I'll cool things with. Liz, I'll, I'll tell her not to stick her neck out anymore. Yeah, now nah, she's up to her eyeballs, isn't it? Well, it's all right. She's She's been protected, you know. We'll, we'll look after her. And we'll, I told you that. Oh, and that's a lie! You've told me that was a lie. Yeah. God, you even believe your own rubbish. Okay. You are such that's a liar! All right. I'm, I'm sorry. What about Steve? <sighs> He'll be all right. How? He might not be. He won't be. Not if, if Liz finishes bothering with Fraser. Why are you so bothered about Steve, if he's history? I'm not bothered about Steve. I just don't see why anybody should get their head kicked in because of some over-ambitious copper. I can't do anything about Steve. He is in prison. Get him transferred, then. I can't. I, I just said that to persuade Liz. You are disgusting. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I know I've, I've let things go further than I should have done. Go and tell your boss. What? 
go tell your boss that there's this bloke in prison who is in danger of getting tortured or whatever else they're doing there. And it's all your fault. So they can get people moved if they really need to. I can't. I, I can't do that. Why? Will they sack you? No, they'll probably pat you on the back for trying to get at Fraser, I bet. If you were really sorry, you would at least try. I can't believe how nasty you are. Not many here. I'm glad we came now. Are we going to go on to the crematorium after a while? We'll play it by ear. Oh. Well, if that's it, I just hope Samantha remembers to take those steak and kidney puddings out of the oven at half past. Oh, she will. Right. Can I sit with you? Uh, of course you can, though. Yeah. Well, you couldn't make up my mind whether they come or not. One of your father was in the Eighth Army in the desert. Not that I knew him. You did right, love. Are you all right, love? You'd have thought Alec would have bothered, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. I mean, they went away for that lucky weekend. That's you remember right. that weekend they went? That's right. Cracked on that what happened. Mm. Mm. I bet your bottom dollar it did. <laughs> yeah. Can I join you? Oh, hello, Ali. Of course you can, though. I was in two minds whether to come because we've a lot on, you know, this week. Well, you did the right thing. Are you alright, love? Mind you. I don't know what she saw in him. <laughs> Me neither. Hey, up. Looks like it's kick off. What about? Don't fall out with me. What do you want to talk about? Uh, not here. Well, I was just on my way in the Rovers. I'm on my dinner break. Oh, no, not in the Rovers either. I don't want to see our Andy. I've only got 50 minutes. Well, could we go round to the cafe? It'll only take us two minutes. What, what's that? Oh, um, Gary's asked me to look after it for him till tea time. Jesus. We're not keeping it, Sal. No, I know we're not. Tony. Went to the funeral today. Weren't many people there. You mustn't have known a lot of folk. How are you feeling? The doctor's give me some pills. Yeah, your mum said this. She's, she's okay, my mum. Yeah. I came to say to Tar. <laughs> oh, Tony. I'm taking Car to the records. Well, my dad is. He's he's taking it for me. In a few days, I might feel different, mate. But I shan't. Sooner or later, mate. You, you want to keep yourself occupied. I mean, it's the, it's the best way to deal with something like this, mate. Yeah. Well, maybe. 
I'm not down this street. But Monsi, okay? You might be better off with her than with me, you know? So I've got a fork out to take someone else on, and yeah. Look, Tony, I didn't want a sleeping partner. It's rubbish, this, you know. Feeling like this. I used to be so happy, and I didn't even know it. I'm sorry. Yeah, well. You were petrified. You should have heard him. Well, I don't know what to suggest. Somebody's got to him on the inside and told him that I'm informing on Fraser. Well, are you? No. But, I mean, they want me to. Look, I don't know I can trust anymore. I mean, the only people who knew, the only people who could have said anything are the police themselves. And why would they do that? Well, to put pressure on me to get on with it, to find something on Fraser. So, if you get something on Fraser, they'll move Steve? I don't know if I believe a word to say anymore. But surely Fraser would only get upset if you did do something like inform on him. Look, to be honest, Fraser isn't the problem anymore. It's them, the police, this Alan McKenna. He has this way of implying things. Like last night. Prisons are dangerous places. People can get hurt. All of this. Now, if I don't get something on Fraser, they might start putting the boot in. Hey, we don't know half of what goes on in these places, you know. Look, I'm sorry. I don't know what to think. I wish I could tell Fraser, because he would understand. He'd know what to do. But of course I can't, can I? Because I'd have to start off by saying, yeah, I'd agreed to spy on him for this stupid copper in the first place. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends how much you think you can trust him. Oh, I trust him more than I trust this policeman. So tell him. No. You know what I ought to do? What? <laughs> well, I ought to do what they want. Yeah. Look for things. And then when I tell them I've found nothing, I can genuinely say I've tried. I mean, I can't find something that isn't there, can I? And what if you do? He's a businessman. Not a crook, not like they make out. Yes. You met him in prison. He had Sean Skinner duffed up and then he had someone else break into your flat to leave presents. Don't tell me he isn't a crook. Look, I know him. And it wasn't necessarily in that business with Sean Skinner. You were petrified. You had all your locks changed. That was before. But if I have a little look for things, well, then I can prove to myself there ain't anything there, can't I? Never mind them. He's asked me to move in with him. Um, I've, uh, I've spoken to him. Who? My boss. Yeah, and? He says he'll do what he can to get MacDonald moved. Is that it? That's the best I can do. When? I don't know, in the next few days. You must think I was born yesterday. What do you mean? Well, we'll see, won't we, in the next few days. Look, I have got a really good dressing down for this. Yeah, well, like I said, we will see, won't we? Are you going to go and tell Liz? I'll ring her. Why don't I go and tell her? If you like. Tell her she can cool it with Fraser? If you like. There weren't many there. Oh, well. Still. She won't have wanted a load of folk blubbering over her. No, no. She never knew how to keep friends. She'd always cock it up. Borrowing money and not giving it back. Taking things without asking. There always something to fall out over. Only ever me and her and... What? No. 
Ja, ja. Ja. Judy, I need to go to Lou. Go then. You all right for a couple of minutes? Yeah. Judy, I'm sorry about your mum. I don't know what you're going through. I've never been through it myself. Oh, I just wish I could think of something useful to say. It's the dog. You what? My mum's dog. I made Gary take it and have it put down. Because I were angry with it. I thought it were all dog's fault and it wasn't. Not really. Dog thought the world of me, Mum. She thought the world of it. And I can't tell Gary because I made him have it seen to, and he liked it as well. She doted on that dog. And now I've gone and had it murdered. We're home, he's here! Oh, oh, Betsy, they're here! Oh, oh. Hey, hey. Look at him. What are you going through, Ralph? Are you creating? Well, we thought everybody might have one to look at him. Oh, see. let me have a little look at you. Oh, oh, oh look, Betsy. bless it. This is oh, our little grandson, our little, little brad. Oh. Here, come on, let's get him through. Yeah. yeah. Hey, no, hang on a minute. Let's show him to Judy. How was the last? <laughs> well, this has put a smile on her face. Here, yeah. Judy. Yeah, oh. Oh. yeah look. This is our little brad. Isn't it gorgeous, eh? Oh, you see, you'll have one of these, one of these days. What if you get trying? You know what they say is one passes over, makes room for another. It's very nice. Do you want to hold him? No, my Can, can she hold him? Oh, yeah, yeah, if she wants <clears throat> to. Yeah. No. Don't be nervous. Ah. Oh. Gary. Hello. Can I have a word about that dog? No. You haven't told her, have you? No. Oh, hello there. Hey, uh, um, I was looking for Liz. Looking for Liz? Ah, oh, you've missed her, love. It's her afternoon off. Right, um... Isn't that a coat? A coat, yeah. She forgot it. Right. I'll be seeing her in a bit. She's over at my place. Moving in. Moving in? Shall I give her a message? Um... No, it's all right. It's nothing important, really. Well, shall I get her to give you a buzz? Yeah, when well, she's got five minutes. I've got to get off, thanks, anyway. See you later. Tell her. You? You want? Oh, yeah. Listen, I better get moving myself. I've got a few faces to see before I head off home. Tell her you dropped this. You what? Yeah, fill out the pocket. Lizzie's pocket. Who's Alan? Alan? Someone who comes in here? No idea. Do you recognise that number? No. Don't like surprises. Well, you'll like this one. That's what I'm told. You know I don't like surprises. idealistic as the next man. Yeah. Yeah. But when you see the way things work, you just get wrapped up in them. You've got to play it their way or you won't get ahead. And I do want to get ahead and I, I'm not apologising for that. It's, it's just sometimes... It's easy to lose your perspective when you work with the people that I work with. But that's why it's so nice seeing someone like you. You help me keep things in perspective. And that's refreshing. She's moved in with him. What? Who? Liz. 
into Fraser's flat. Why? I don't know. He told me when I went round this afternoon. She's moved. What? But I'm trying to get her out. She's getting herself in Diva now. How will I know if Steve gets moved or not? Oh, it's so beautiful, Ken. I mean, I know everybody thinks their own's lovely, but... Yes. Hey, do you want to come and have a look at him before he goes to bed? Uh, uh yeah, I can do. Come on, then. Is there is a time in this? So fresh. <laughs> oh, look at this door. <laughs> come in. Oh, where she puts it? Who? Oh, the baby. They're very understanding pigeons. Not like women. What are you doing, you nitwits? Oh! Get that baby back in here. Get it away from mucky pigeons! Oh, dear, but all this should come, lad. Oh! Come on. So what do you think you're up to?